How did your friend completely fuck their life up? Okay this is a story. I knew an exceptional mind in middle and high school, a smart dude, and a good guy, had an ego, but I would to if I was him with his grades and accomplishments, but he was pirating a ton of music and movies while in college, don't get me wrong I was into torrents too, but not into terabytes of sheet, and this 10 years ago, he gets sued by the MPAA, drops out of college and starts working at a pizza joint telling his parents he is going to the local college chapter when he wasn't. I guess the depression and the settlement and the amount of money the MPAA took him for was getting to him, so he decides to drive to West Virginia and try to live in the woods, gets most of the way there, and decides it's a bad idea point now he has to explain why he was not at work or home. So he figured out a plan to fake a carjacking, parks his car at the Walmart, and throws himself in the trunk for 16 hours and bangs on the trunk until some ladies let him out point the problem is that Walmart has cameras in their parking lot, so he was found to be a liar and does time for faking the crime. Last I heard he was out working at Denny's. Edit. Headline from the news. Guy in high school started dating a 25 year old woman. Of course a grown woman doesn't want to date a guy with a curfew and limited free time, so he rebels. Decides he doesn't want a dull middle class, happy family life, so he runs off with his girlfriend on his 18th birthday. Dropped out of school and throws away his fully funded college plans in order to be a man and support my woman. Which he does by working two part-time all food court jobs. His girlfriend worked a low paying but full time job for a while but they decided that she should quit and be a housewife. Which, you know, may work in rural bumpfack nowhere but is a very bad idea in coastal California unless you've got a very very good job. Which this dude does not. His parents almost convinced him to move him and his girlfriend back home so that he could get his jed and go to college which they were still willing to pay for. His girlfriend. 30 at this point and still unemployed, threw a fit and told him that his parents were still trying to run his life and convinced him to cut off contact with them. His next idea was the military. Nope, his girlfriend couldn't be away from him for that long and told him she'd kill himself if he joined. So he scrapped that idea too, all to keep his girlfriend happy. Okay, so maybe he should try entry level warehouse jobs, something with growth potential. Nope, warehouse jobs don't come with free or discounted food to bring home, because his girlfriend, the housewife, didn't want to have to go grocery shopping or cook often. Too much for her fibromyalgia, you know point he's 36 now. He finally got a section 8 apartment in a not so nice area, but he's thrilled, because it's a one bedroom instead of a roach infested studio, or the garage belonging to one of her family members. His now wife is the love child of the Pillsbury Dough Boy and the demon from the grudge. She still doesn't work. His biggest accomplishment is his full time job as assistant manager of a knockoff subway. His parents disowned him, and he never got to say goodbye to his brother when he died. Point, but hey, at least he avoided that boring middle class lifestyle. I have a friend that tried to hide a very long time the fact that he's gay, despite every single person that knew him suspect he was. This clearly caused him a lot of pain and frustration, and, despite all his friends and family hinting to him that it was okay to be gay, and that everyone would still love him the same, he insisted on hitting on girls, altering his personality, etc. Point when he graduated high school he decided to move to Buenos Aires, where he finally felt like he could be himself, away from anyone who knew him. The problem is he went completely overboard, acquiring a drug addiction flunking out of college, and disconnecting from all his friends and most of his family point he now lives with his parents, and has since developed a sickness that has put him on dialysis. He doesn't speak to any of us anymore point at it, just wanted to clear out a couple of things, he is gay. The moment he moved to Argentina he started sharing photos of him with other men, in romantic positions. He also was tagged as in a relationship with a guy for over a year, and they sent each other hearts and poems all the time, it was sweet. My writing isn't good and my comment sounds like we were pushing him to come out. That's not what happened. We just wanted him to know we accepted him for who he was. He kept asking us to introduce him girls and we never stopped point I read some really sad replies to this comment and I just wanted to say it's horrible that human beings have to hide who they are. 
I also understand how frustrating it must be to be treated as someone you're not for small things like the way you dress or the things you're into. She was my best friend from the time we were 12 years old until about 16 we spent a ridiculous amount of time together. She even called my parents mom and dad. When we got older we drifted a bit, she liked to party, and I wanted to settle, but we still talked weekly, and hung out from time to time, and she was a bridesmaid in my wedding. Shortly after having my first son she went missing for about 48 hours, her parents and boyfriend called asking if I had seen her, the police got involved, and we had absolutely no idea what had happened. She finally came back, and gave no explanation, broke up with her boyfriend to stay in a motel with some random guy and totally cut off contact with me. Where I'm from there's a pretty bad meth problem and as strange as she acted I just assumed that she had probably gotten huked. As much as I wanted to reach out to her, I decided to keep my distance for the safety of my son. However, it is a small town, so I would occasionally see her around from time to time. She had lost so much weight and would avoid eye contact as if she hadn't seen me. That's been almost two years ago, and I had finally accepted that I would probably never know exactly what happened. But earlier this week she called me, and she told me everything. She has been addicted to meth for the last three years, and in a pretty abusive relationship. Some of the things she told me we are pretty horrible, but she went on to tell me that she's finally out of that relationship, and she's sober. She's still in the baby stages, but she's trying to cut out all of the toxic people in her life and reconnect with the people she had cut off. I don't know if our relationship will ever be as close as it used to be, but I'm proud of her for trying, and I'm going to do what I can to try to help her stay sober. He is not completely faked up yet, but I'm sure it will be that way soon, if he doesn't stop his ways has been smoking weed since he was 15 or 16, daily is now 24, still living with his parents, doing ket slash coke every day. Monday Sunday we went to an amusement park with him, he took coke with him, to enjoy the rides more. He got caught from security and now has to do a drug test, if he doesn't pass, his license is gone dude is beyond lucky, every time he got stopped by the police, he never had to do an alcohol slash drug test. Even though he is either on drugs or alcohol 24 over 7. Has gotten caught three times dealing drugs, never had to do prison time started injecting care to get more high, takes pain medicine to fall asleep, said he can't be sober, being high is too much fun his girlfriend left him two years ago, he is still angry about it, and tries to get all his friends to hate her too, gets pissed if you tell him to let it go doesn't have to pay rent at home. Or buy food, gets all the money from his parents, they even know about his drug consume, and support it in a way. He spends all the money he has on takeaway and drugs insulted me and ended friendship with me because I was not on his side when I told him that it is normal the police will want a drug test from him after he got caught with coke at the amusement park. Tbh I'm glad this friendship ended because sooner or later he will end up dead or in prison. Plus edit, since a lot of people have read this, just to add to the story, one night he texted me asking me if I would be a lookout for him, I asked him for what. He wanted to buy 1k of speed, and wasn't sure if he could trust the dudes, told him I'm there for him, if he needs me in hard situations, but not for a drug deal writes me again a few weeks later, asking if I could be a lookout for when him, and another guy would rob cigarette machines told me it would be a quick and easy job, all I would do is look for people around. Told him I won't do it point I'm sure he will do some stupid shit soon. Computer duster is super scary stuff. After college one of my best friends and I decided to get a seasonal traveling sales job and look for jobs back home from the road. We were driving a truck across the continental US and one day we stopped by a Staples to get some office supplies for work. He picks up a six pack of duster cans, and at the register I was like what do we need those for? He just says, don't worry I'll buy them, proceeds. To have that sheet in the passenger seat non-stop, whenever I was driving truck. Hallucinating, talking to people who aren't there, whatever. I'm generally okay with some light drug use, and it was even entertaining at first, but after a couple days his six pack runs out, and he's scouring our route for the next office supply store. 
he's begging me to take random exits for 60 mile beaters so he can get more dust of that was when I said dude this sheet is clearly not good for you and you have to stop. He tried to rationalize it up and down, saying stuff like it's just CO2, there's nothing bad in it. I pulled an empty can out of the back seat and pointed out where it says tetrafluorothane or whatever. He just kind of sat there for a minute sputtering half formed well, but, HRM. I don't. Until finally, wow, this is really stupid, I should stop. Thankfully the guy had some intelligence and self-awareness, but it was terrifying. How fast he went from A I'm bored I think I'll try this to dude it's just one state over. It's only an extra hour or two of driving. I need it. Edit. Yes, inhaling pure CO2 is also bad. In a situation like this, I find it is better to simply provide superior, more accurate reasoning, rather than to attack the flawed reasoning of the other person. They are trying to rationalize something they want to be true. Of course their facts aren't straight. Not my friend, but a guy my classmate was dating. He was enlisted in the Dutch military. I don't know what he did there exactly, only that it had something to do with driving the military trucks and teaching new recruits how to drive so they could get their special military driver's license point anyways. One night, the guy decides to get extremely drunk with his friends at a bar downtown. He had apparently forgotten that he had driven there with his own car. So the night comes to an end and the idiot decides to drive home. He crashed into the first street light that he encounters and totaled his car. Of course the police gets involved, and it's quite obvious that the guy had too much to drink, so they take him to the station point he was charged with driving under influence and destroying that poor street light. His driver's license got suspended, and he had to pay a fine, as well as taking a course about the dangers of drunk driving. But of course his work found out as well, and they had no choice but to fire him. If you drive cars for a living, you would suspect the person to be more considerate. And he also lost his military license point all that because the guy decided that it was too much trouble to call a cab point edit. I forgot to add that my classmate also broke up with him when she found out. Don't drink and drive kids. My friend was by all measures a goody good when he first moved into our neighborhood. I remember he started hanging with our friend group and he was afraid to say cuss words. This was like 7th or 8th grade so, you'd think saying sheet wasn't a big deal. Anyway we were all kind of little hellions, but not terrible or anything. We'd sneak out and egg houses, sneak alcohol from our parents, smoke a bit, etc. Stuff I would consider a lot of 15 year old boys do. Well where the rest of the friends group never really went past alcohol or pot, he got into pills and coke. He stopped hanging out with us and got in with the wrong crowd, but was still not a bad guy. He ended up going to a regional campus of the big state university. Well there he became a complete bartard. By that I mean he got into Xenox bars to the point of being an artard all the time, because he was so high. One night he was out partying and fell down a huge flight of concrete stairs while on some ungodly amount of Xenox that would probably kill a normal person. Boom. He's in the IQ fighting for his life because he just got a traumatic brain injury while on a sheet ton of sedatives he recovered somehow but is kind of slow now. Like, he's just not the same person when you talk to him. Despite the injury he got huked back on pills and has done a few stints in rehab. His parents moved him across the country to cut off his supply but then he became an alcoholic. I still see him sometimes when I visit my parents. He's just chilling in his folks driveway, pounding Bud Light and smoking cigarettes. Oh did I mention he has a sheet job stacking boxes in a warehouse and has developed some sort of epilepsy after the accident. Seriously, do not fuck with pills. I'm all for pot and psychedelics, but when they're told the kids that drugs put holes in your brain they were talking about pills. If you know someone who is addicted, please tell them to get help before it's too late. At 18 was hit by a car going 50 miles per hour as a pedestrian. Wound up in a wheelchair for several months. Began popping one too many painkillers. Became addicted to painkillers. Dropped out of university. Switched to heroin after legs recovered. Arrested X amount of times. Homeless for several years now. Unable to keep a job. Diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Refused medication. 
lost basically all family and friends, except me and maybe one or two others. Now prostituting to pay for the drugs, mental health has severely declined, suffers from intense delusions and hallucinations on a daily basis, is involved in an abusive relationship. My own mother didn't recognize this friend when I brought her home last year. Our family have known each other for 21 years before all of this. My friend was a very successful, popular, and beautiful leader of the community. She had been heading down a dark path before the accident, but the accident slash painkillers is really what tipped her over the edge. Not a day goes by that I worry I'm going to get that phone call. I've tried to get her help throughout the years, but I've learned that you can't force someone to make the decision of recovery slash sobriety. Despite everything that has happened, I love her unconditionally, and I will support her, no matter where she is in life. Sadly this is a story of my sister, not my friend. I like to think she still has a chance in the world since she's young. For starters, she has been smoking weed and drinking since close to 8th grade. Around Christmas, she was 16, when she was longboarding down a massive hill at night. Mind you she does not skate, so she wasn't doing so well. Once she reached full speed she stood up and immediately fell directly on her forehead. She came in the house later complaining about her head hurting. Go to the hospital. Three skull fractures. She was in the hospital for months, barely made it, the whole nine yards. I say this so casually, because you'd think she would change after this. Nope. Harder drugs, Xanax, meth, and pot constantly. When she was 19 her car rolled on the highway, when she was on a copious amount of Xanax. This was the bad parts for broken vertebrae, something like 17 faking skull fractures, broken parts of her neck. Her pelvis also snapped in half. She was a vegetable for a little over a year, and in a wheelchair for 9 months after the hospital. She had clear signs of brain damage once she recovered, but nothing major or anything a regular person couldn't deal with. Mostly memory issues. Of course, she got back into drugs. Not so surprisingly, her constant drug abuse being continued made her brain damage seemingly much much worse. According to her ex-boyfriend, she'd been given meth in the hospital even. During this time this caused my parents an unbelievable amount of stress, causing my mom to walk out on us. This led to my dad becoming my consistently aggressive, so she really faked up an entire family in the span of roughly a year. Sorry about the length of the post, but I've been waiting to get this off my chest since it started. This wasn't even her last near-death experience, but I won't get into it. She still goes back and forth between my mom and dad's house, never really going any further in her life. For some reason she has some sort of specific issue in her brain that she has hated me ever since her last hospital visit. Me and my dad suspect she could have very very early dementia due to her brain issues. I miss her, and I wish I could talk to her without her hating me. TLDR. Don't do drugs. Sorry about the amount of typos probably in this. Oh, I have one for this. So, my junior year of high school, I was best friends with what you may call a troubled kid. My family sucks, but compared to his, I was being raised by the faking Brad. Is he was doing well though? Had a job, was going to my school district's Votech school as his high school option, and that's where he met her. His psycho perfect Harley Quinn he was into DC Comics way before Suicide Squad hit. Theaters, this was like 09. Anyway, this girl was a faking lunatic, kept her nails filed to a razor edge, so she could just randomly slash people. But he was a moron, and she seemed perfect to him. They started dating. His mother was such an idiot that, as long as he was helping pay the bills then he was an adult, at 16, and was allowed to stay over at this girl's house unsupervised for full weekends, so we get to junior prom. That night they decide they are truly in love, and what better way to express that than a baby? So he does it, gets her pregnant, and for the first two months we all tell him he's an idiot, but we will do what we can. Then, the bombshell. She leaves him for her ex. Turns out she wanted a baby, but her ex didn't, unless he didn't have to pay for it, so what better way to make this happen than to have a baby that comes with child support point, but we aren't done here, it gets so much better. She invites my friend to see her and spend Christmas, still pregnant of course, invites him into her bed and begs him to play out her, well, simply put, it was a rap fantasy. 
Next day she kicks a very confused high schooler out of her house and says that he's lucky she wants a child to have a father or she'd have him put away for life for rap. Luckily he got one break in all this in that she had been planning that to make him unable to have custody and one of her friends saved all the texts she had sent planning it and used them to clear his name. Had a buddy back in high school was was fairly sharp but always kinda goofy. Most people have multiple cliques they hang out with, and his two main ones were my main group. Mostly nerds and headbangers who played poker and halo all the time. Sometimes busted out a net, and played hockey in the street or something. And a second group who I can really only remember as as holes. Like, I don't remember at all what they did together. Don't think it was sports, or video games or anything like that. They just hung out, and were as holes together said buddy used to have LAN parties and such at his house all the time, and was generally a very welcoming and smiley guy, but the main influence the other group had on him was that they introduced him to the world of illicit substances. I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty positive it never progressed past pot while he was in high school, so ultimately nothing harmful, but around that time he did start acting weird. It's hard to explain, but one incident that stands out was that we were playing poker once, and the flop came out to be 3 6. He got physically uncomfortable about it, and on the next hand he drew pocket 6. Instead of yelling at the dealer for shuffling like sheet, he made everybody stop, and very gravely announced that if the burn card before the flop was a 6, we were all in serious danger. Sure enough, because the dealer apparently forgot how to shuffle that day, he checked the burn card, and it was indeed another 6. Buddy announced that this deck was cursed, snatched all the cards, and ran outside, and proceeded to light the deck on fire in my friend's driveway point around that time we all sort of decided he was acting unstable, and hanging out more with the other group anyway, so we just kinda stopped inviting him to things. In hindsight we really could have just said yo, is everything okay? But when you're 17 you just want to not deal with that sort of thing, so we cut him out. Flash forward a few years, we've all graduated, some of us are still in town, others are off in college, but we all still keep contact and hang out as often as possible. I get a text from one of the guys asking if I knew some girl. The name sounded vaguely familiar, but I couldn't pin it. He tells me apparently she died, and, buddy, is responsible in some way, the Story eventually comes out that sometime, after we stopped hanging out with him, Buddy went further and further down the rabbit hole and wound up with a smack addiction. He, the girl, and two other dudes were all shooting up one night. She was still inexperienced, but not a first timer, and apparently entrusted the guys to measure out her dose and inject her. They miscalculated and gave her way too much and she odd. They assumed she just passed out initially and didn't notice she was dead until the next morning. Buddy was tasked with dumping her body in a dumpster behind a gas station the next morning, but guilt got the better of him and he wound up calling the police and turning himself in before he could go through with it. If memory serves, he was initially charged with drug-induced homicide or something to that effect, but he was in good standing with the girl's family they dated on and off for years, so they vouched for his character, saying he just made a mistake and would never do it on purpose. So it got knocked down to some lesser felony and he wound up sentenced to 7 years. The other two guys supplied the heroin and directed him to dump the body, so they wound up with something closer to 20 years. He got out after 4 years on good behavior, and from what I pick up via osmosis he's living a fairly quiet life now with his parents and sister, but obviously struggles to get and hold down a job, since he's a felon and the crime involved a death. He seems to be clean now too so that's good. None of us talk to him still but all told it seems like he's doing the best he can, but any future he could have had previously is obviously a distant memory, and he's going to have to scrape by for the rest of his life. For added trivia, the girl that wound up dying was a year younger than I and seemed to have something of a crush on me in school. She hosted a Halloween party and made especially sure to invite me and stress how much she wanted me to be there. I was 16 and infatuated with somebody else at the time, so I blew off her party. It was at that party that she met my buddy that eventually wound up killing her and he was only there as some third string hanger on because a friend of a friend was going and he had nothing better to do that night. I went through a phase of blaming myself for her death 
but luckily I have friends who are smart enough to tell me that that whole thing was so many ripples away from being any significant butterfly effect that I was essentially just making it about myself, so that snapped me out of it pretty quick. Bit of a tough one for me this. I've been at my company for nearly 20 years now, from age 18 straight out of college, UK, into this role. Not a year after I started this kid turns up, working the same job as me, database admin stuff essentially. We became good friends over the years, we moved to different departments for a few years, and ended up working with each other regularly later on. Every day it was me and him working in a broadcaster, doing edits on entertainment shows, stuff like putting ad breaks in shows, compliance edits etc. One day he comes round my house and announces he's got his troublesome girlfriend pregnant. I go to his wedding. She isn't a bad person, but she's hard work, ick now. I could tell from the moment I met her, which was at the wedding reception. I didn't go to the ceremony which was just for family. Anyway fast forward a few years and he's now three kids in. He has to balance his work which wasn't well paid, with his wife's demands, and the demands of three kids. His work is suffering and he's supporting the whole family, renting a tiny flat, and living on a ridiculously small amount of income point a year or two later. She's pregnant with kid number four. He admits to me he drinks a lot. His only outlet is playing this text-based game on his phone, which he seems to get a kick out of. His household can't afford a computer or laptop or anything point another year or so passes and she's pregnant with kid number five. Friend's work is now suffering so badly, and management seemed to have it in for him. Absolutely no sympathy for his situation. They basically tell him to buck up his ideas or he'll get the sack. Warning after warning and these were relatively minor infractions, easily fixable administrative mistakes, really. He tells me the doctor has put him on antidepressants a few months later he stops coming to work completely. Didn't call in, no one hears from him. Word is, he's doing okay ish Not great. Eventually the company lets him go. A week later I get a call from another friend, who tells me he passed away in his sleep. His wife was still pregnant with kid number 5. She woke up one morning to find my friend dead in their bed. Cause of death was apparently natural causes but this is what his family said. I'm not 100% sure on any of that point at his funeral. After the curtains close around his coffin, his kid screams I want my daddy. That absolutely broke me. One of the worst things I've ever heard. Fast forward a few years, his wife is struggling but coping with help from family and friends. My friend's brother however, has fallen into a deep pit of depression. He kills himself. I only met his brother once, seemed like a nice kid too. I think he was in his early 20s point currently his ex-wife is now in a committed relationship with a guy. I've only kept up with updates on Facebook though. She seems much better off. As for his wider family, I don't know. His Facebook memory page is still active with people mourning his death. I think it was about 8 years ago now point horrible was friends with this dude, who wasn't always the nicest to me. One day I confronted him about it, and we were okay. We were slowly rebuilding our friendship and actual becoming friends for a while until one of our other friends, this girl who he'd been trying to date for a long time now, finally rejected him. After playing with his heart for months she would call him her best friend, and have him go out of his way, to buy expensive stuff for her. His parents were kind of loaded, and it was just a mess. I tried to tell him how toxic she was, but he didn't listen to me. After she rejected him, one day he just spiraled point a day or two after. He was so heartbroken and desperate that he called up this other girl that he'd talked to for a while online. She didn't live too far from him, so he drove to the next county for a quickie. Well, long story short, the quickie was rather quick point the girl's mom came home and caught them in the act. Not only was that bad enough, but it turns out the girl was only 14. My friend had just turned 19, and we live in the south by the way. The mom called the police, and he was arrested. Couldn't get a job for a while due to him being under house arrest. Everyone he knew called him a bedo and stupid for not realizing how old the girl was or asking. I felt bad for him for a while and even reached out to him because the situation was so unbelievable and the dude made a mistake, but after he came out and said after the whole thing that she 14 year old girl had quite the ass on her though, I cut ties and haven't talked to him since. 
Even the toxic girl that caused him to spiral found another boy toy to play with. My ex-boyfriend aspirated his vomit while sleeping point he was a brilliant eccentric type. He read voraciously and tried on different ideas like they were hats. He left our midwestern suburb and lived homeless for two years. Traveled with crust punk hipster hobo types exploring the southwest. He wrote amazing prose. He introduced me to some of the most influential work I'd ever read. This was the type of guy who changed people's hearts, who challenged his ideals, who sought adventure. I loved him in a way I've never loved anyone. He'd been addicted for a while, we all were, but he'd been mixed methadone, heroin and alcohol. Some say it was suicide, but I don't think so. I think, like a lot of brilliant people, he needed to escape his mind. After being addicted for a while, you fear not feeling numb and your instinct is to amplify point his girlfriend found him the next morning. I had once left two doses of Narcan for them. She pulled him with one, called 911, plugged him with another, and sobbed point emergency vehicles. I coo. I came to meet her at the hospital, and when she hugged me, I thought she'd never let me go. It's all my fault, she said. It's not your fault, I said. How could I convince her? I felt responsible as well. We were damned. She's never been the same point and he, when he emerged, he was alive, but a completely different person. The damage to his brain from lack of oxygen left him unable to speak, walk or care for himself. Point a year later he fell out of bed and broke his neck. I've always wondered if someone who loved him mercy snuffed him. The man he used to be would never have wanted to live that way. One of my best friends growing up was was very smart and very cocky. He started selling drugs in high school, mostly provided by his college-aged older brother, who was also very smart and very cocky, and they started a little business venture transporting slash selling drugs across state lines between our home city and his bother's college town point eventually his parents' home was raided by police, and all of his drugs and cash, tens of thousands of dollars, were seized. He went to jail for a few days. Without cash he couldn't pay court fees. Since nobody would hire him due to his record he went back to selling drugs and developed a strong addiction to tramadol, which he was also selling. This started a vicious circle of sell drugs, get, caught lose all assets sell drugs, and it went on for years, until he started coming down with serious health issues due to his habit of self-medication, and was looking at serious decade-long jail time if he was caught again. By this point we had all been out of high school for nearly a decade. The rest of our friend group had finished college, started careers, were in serious relationships slash getting married, and buying homes. He was still living at his parents home exactly where he was after high school graduation point last I heard he was shacking up with a girl he met through his friend he met in rehab. I think he's out of the drug trade now and is taking care of her kid, but I rarely ever hear from him outside of the occasional pocket dial and a text afterwards apologizing for the call and telling me we should totally hang out at some point. I know a few stories, a friend of mine in junior high got knocked up by an older dude who slimmed his way into her panties with promises of marriage. She kept the baby, he ghosted her around month 6 of the pregnancy when she wasn't able to put out. Her parents were legal immigrants with full-time jobs and couldn't help her take care of her baby, so she had to give it up for adoption. She went into a downward spiral of depression, leading to a drug addiction, prostitution, and three years later she was found dead in a homeless tent camp in one of the nearby parks. Another school friend of mine had a dream to join a gang, frequently got A's in class and our teachers did everything they could talk him out of his enthrallment with thuggery. As he was larger than your average preteen and built like a brick sheet house he was recruited by a gang fairly quickly and dropped out of school. A year later he was shot dead in drug selling territory skirmish with a rival gang point had another friend in high school who was bright, talented, and funny, but had a fascination with joining a Chinese tong in his neighborhood. Similar story as above, only he just vanished. No one knows where he went or what happened to him. He was an only child of a single mom who loved him very much. I get a sense that his lack of a father figure may have drawn him to the gangs. Another high school friendship of mine ended when a girl who I was close with started hanging out with rich kids who had access to and regularly experimented with a cornucopia of drugs. 
Shortly thereafter all of her conversations were about all the faked up shit and experiences she had while high, hallucinations, doing risky things, etc. Her life revolved around the excitement of the next anticipated high. While I tried to be a shoulder to her, when the behavior was starting to affect her life, school performance, relationship with parents deteriorating, and nudge her in the right direction, she was so far down the road of addiction it was like talking to a brick wall. She started sleeping with one of the rich boys who fed her cocaine, routinely overdoing it, and she sort of turned into a vegetable. She would attend school, but when talking with her she would space out, not engage, look off into space, almost as if she couldn't hear you. This became her new permanent state. Her parents removed her from school to go into a rehab program, and on completing it, she was transferred into another school. Ran into her older brother years later who sadly informed me that they lost her, she kept relapsing, and eventually oded point once I transitioned to college sheet like this wasn't the norm. A few friends dropped out and became chronic underachievers, but nothing near totally ruining their lives. They had housing, food, transportation, jobs, sucky jobs, but jobs nevertheless, etc. I was friends with the Penn State hub lawn shooter, Jillian Robbins. We weren't close friends, but we hung out occasionally and worked at the same uni mart. She was brilliant, funny, a wonderful artist, and crazy. Genuinely, medically diagnosed crazy, mainly bipolar and schizophrenia. She had joined the army reserves and was an expert marksman, winning multiple awards, but was discharged when she didn't complete high school point when the shooting happened I hadn't actually seen her for a few weeks, but other friends had. She'd lost her job, her apartment, her boyfriend slash husband, supposedly they had gotten JP married and broke up a few weeks later and was discharged from the reserves. She snapped point she was planning on killing herself but started shooting at pedestrians instead. She fired 6 shots and hit 4 people, killing one and wounding another. The other two were hit in their backpacks. One was saved by his textbooks and the other's bag was grazed. One of the other two rounds was found in the windowsill of an apartment. Oddly, my close friend's brother lived in that room. When another student tackled her as she was reloading, she tried to stab him and hit herself in the leg. He bandaged it for her using the belt from his coat point she still doesn't know why she did it. She was never a violent person and was extremely intelligent. Her demons overwhelmed her. Have a friend who was a bit of musical prodigy. One of those can pick up any instrument and play it kinds of guys. Great family, who were all well off and educated, pretty sure they all had master's degrees or better from Nyu. He had a rich aunt who was willing to pay his entire tuition at full sale and buy him whatever production equipment he would need. Got too into the gangster rap persona and started selling drugs so he could fit the lifestyle he was going to rap about. After several minor drug charges, he started dating one of the women he had been selling pain pills to a few months into their sheet show of a relationship, they tried to break into a house to get some quick drug money and of course, got caught. My friend shot through the front door on the way out and clipped one of the residents. Got hit with several charges, including breaking and entering and assault with a deadly weapon. Was just convicted last week to 60 months minimum and will serve 3 years probation when he is eventually let out of prison. This has actually been weighing on my heart heavily. One of the saddest situations I've ever been a part of. Wish I could have done something to help him edit. Typo. Had a roommate in college. We met freshman year. He was real into fitness. Extremely smart kid. Talented coder. Took anti-anxiety medication his entire life. Towards the end of freshman year he had a real bad panic attack and went to the doctors to get his dosage upped. Instead the doctor gave him a medical marriage and a card. He'd never smoked weed before point starts off okay, but soon becomes dependent on the high, quickly goes from bud to doing, dabs of shatter almost hourly. Eventually he stopped working out, his favorite thing before this, and skipping class. Moved to padding his loans, and using the reimbursement to buy weed. This turned into him completely skipping class altogether, so he could get a part time job to pay for his addiction point few weeks go by and we notice he quit his job and now almost exclusively gets out of bed to roll joints and eat. The only time he leaves the dorm is to go to the dispensary. 
At this point he's becoming a hazard to the rest of us. This is a college dorm. Even though medical marijuana is legal in my state, since the school receives federal funds it's illegal on campus. We learned that there's going to be a room inspection on a specific date, and that we needed to prepare. We had a really understanding rap. We all let our troublesome rumored know of this inspection, and that he needs to take his sheet elsewhere by 4 p.m. At 3.45 I find him in a bathrobe rolling a joint. I cleaned him up and told him to go to be just before the road came in for inspection point we passed the inspection, but that was the last straw of us covering for him. We told him he either needs to clean himself up or take it elsewhere because none of us were risking our degrees for him. Last I heard he dropped out, went to community college for a bit but never finished and ultimately became a full-blown alcoholic. Handsome, lovable, charming guy in the friend group. He always seemed to have a slot of back quote bad luck, though. He had health issues, car slash driving issues, job issues, etc. He just couldn't catch a break point one day, his beautiful and successful wife kicks him out and files for divorce. Then, a month later, he ends up in the hospital for an allergic reaction to medication. What should have been a two days stay, turned into a two week IQ stay. We're all shocked at this run of back quote bad luck apostrophe turns out, the guy was a raging alcoholic. He hid it from everyone, except the ex. He also neglected to inform the hospital about the amount of vodka he drank every day, and went into severe alcohol withdrawal, complete with seizures and delirium. The allergic reaction was legit, but it took the hospital staff a while to figure out it was withdrawal, and not a reaction to the allergy treatment. Pretty much all of his back quote bad luck was either caused or compounded by the drinking. Turns out he was verbally abusing and cheating on his wife until she had enough and dumped him. He was in denial and refused to get a lawyer, so he lost his shirt in the divorce. He got a felony DUI, lost his job, his wife, and his home point his parents spent thousands on sending him to rehab, only to get out and start drinking again. He huked up with an addict with narcissistic personality disorder, and last I heard, they're bouncing around various family slash friends basements after getting evicted from their apartment and having their utilities cut off point addict girlfriend is keeping him drunk and isolated from everyone, although he's managed to burn tons of bridges himself. Our friend group is fully expecting to get a phone call saying he's died any time now. A girl who I was friends with in high school was given everything to her on a silver platter, her parents were a chaff, and she was just too lazy to do anything about her appearance and her education. She was clinically obese and her parents were paying for a nutritionist, gym membership, personal trainer, etc. And she refused to listen, or to use any of it. We'd go for lunch in the brand new car she was given, and she'd end up drinking those 900 calorie extra large drinks from Starbucks. She'd have 2 to 3 a day, and then a 1000 calorie mac and cheese from Panera Bread, plus snacks she got from home. Her parents also completely paid for her college and dorm room, but she dropped out after a year of not going to class and putting any effort in. Last I heard she moved to a small town with a guy she met on an app and lives with his parents, while they both work minimum wage and not even full time hours yet still spend all their money on weed. I've been on my own since 16, working, finding a place to live, kept my grades up to get honors, getting into business school, and just to see her throw out every opportunity given to her pissed me off beyond belief. Everyone tried to push her to success, and she still faked up. Friend from the old neighborhood, was injured at his last full time job, went on disability for a while, and moved back in with his parents. He got better, but rather than get another full-time job he becomes his parents' carriage either in their old age, does part-time work for spending money, after many years they die, and he ends up inheriting the bulk of their estate, the house in upscale Orange County and a significant stock portfolio. Sells the house and ends up with half a million in cash points so far so good. I tell him that he should move to a cheap low-tax state buy some acreage with a decent cheap house and just do whatever. No, he decides to rent an apartment in a gated community in Ock and burns through his inheritance in 10 years. Never went back and got a job so now he has a 25 year unemployment history point he's now lived on the streets in his truck for over a year. Only healthcare is the VAP. Gets online at the local library and rails about how everyone is against him. 
frequently gets banned on Facebook. He's still three years short of getting SS and Medicare. If he survives that long he might be able to get a bed at a crappy rest home. A friend of mine was a Catholic priest with a master's degree in theology. Really great, stand up guy. Very well respected in the community point then a couple people he had known in his high school years sought him out to use him for some kind of prank or scheme they were pulling where they needed a priest to make a public blessing. They used one of their sisters who he had a major crush on for some reason. I think she's gangly and ugly f as baits to lure him in. Well, it works. Except he decides to leave the church in order to be with her instead of just help them with their plan point well obviously this girl has no interest in him and turns him down as soon as he leaves the church. After that his degree became completely useless and he had nowhere to turn because obviously the church isn't going to let you back in after you leave it to chase some bird. Time and again this girl lures him back into her life to use him for her own benefit, constantly leading him on, getting him huked on drugs she was selling, etc. And then just throwing him out to the streets, when she's done utilizing his pathetic life point after years of being a homeless street urchin the man was virtually unrecognizable because of his long greasy hair, but mostly due to a large burn scar he got when this girl and her brother's friends locked him inside a burning apartment building. Still don't know how no charges were brought against them. He probably didn't press charges because he's still hopelessly in love with her now he wanders the streets getting high, singing songs from a musical he wrote during a coke induced stupor and getting involved in dog orgies. He had a small stint as a professional painter but ultimately it fell through when it was discovered that he wasn't the one actually painting the pieces. He lives a rickety life and no one, not even his father or brother want anything to do with him. It'll be buried I'm most likely too late to the party point there was a guy that was new to the high school that semi joined my friend group. He made good friends with one of my best friends but something about him I didn't like, which is rare I like most everybody. The guy was moderately intelligent and got a job managing a battery store making enough to live in an apartment by himself at 18. This was impressive to me because I lived with 4 roommates at the time and struggled paying. My best friend went to his app to hang out and he showed him a fat pile of cash under his bed claiming he just doesn't trust banks, then showed him his giant pistol. My buddy essentially told him he's ridiculous for having that. Anyways that night this kid telling my friend, in joking or passing about robbing banks, they were both huge movie buffs and loved films such as Boondock Saints, Goodfellas ECT. Again my buddy blew him off thinking nothing of it. Fast forward a few months the day after St. Patrick's Day. Everyone is posting RIP for this kid on Facebook. Turns out he was robbing banks dressed as Santa and a leprechaun. He apparently got away with the first one. Went to a second bank and was chased down. Shot at a cop stalling the vehicle. They were ran down into a field his driver, a really quiet kid, very smart was on his way to finishing college. Was shot and killed. He turned the gun on himself. A good friend of my husband's is going to be 29 this year and still lives in his parents' basement. He doesn't do drugs or party or anything, but he didn't go to college and has basically no work experience. He works at a flower shop seasonally for minimum wage. All he does in his vast amount of free time is watch anime and play video games. He also gets upset when my husband can't or won't devote his limited free time to playing games with him. I know this is very stereotypical, but I'm genuinely concerned for him. His parents are older and have talked about retiring in the Midwest. We live on the East Coast US. If something happens or they move away, he won't have any way to support himself or his hobbies. I'm worried he is going to end up homeless or couch surfing for the rest of his life. He has no ambition, but is very artistically talented and very intelligent. He could easily do well if he put in the effort, but I'm worried he's limited on time because his youth is pretty much gone. My husband and I try to encourage him to go to college or look for better jobs, but we also try not to push him too hard because we know he hears the same thing from everyone else. This is a story I tell my students who love to skateboard without helmets I had a friend in high school who went to Oregon to stay with his dad for the summer. This dude was one of the most down-to-earth, chill people you ever met. 
he was a good skateboarder and was skating without a helmet when he got hit by a car. The damage was pretty minimal, other than the fact that he smacked his head and damaged the part of his brain that controls impulse control. When he got back from Oregon he had terrible anger issues and some of his memory had changed. Like it didn't disappear, but he saw people and had new weird memories of them. He was constantly trying to fight people and was always irritable point because of his impulse control. He began driving erratically and looking for the police to stop him. He got multiple tickets and was on the verge of losing his license. Fast forward to a couple of months into the school year and he was driving home after school. The police lit him up and he decided to turn it into a high speed chase. He was heading toward a school zone, so the police backed off, but he kept up the high speed. He rolled his truck into two girls who were walking home from school, killing both of them point he ended up getting life in prison for killing both of the girls. The thing I remember most was when it was on the news and his dad was basically calling for them to go lenient on him because he was mentally unstable. Thinking to myself, I was upset that his dad, knowing he was mentally unstable, would allow him to keep his license or operate a motor vehicle. He ended up getting 34 years to life in prison for killing the two girls. Here is a news article TLDR. Friend skateboarded without helmet, got hit by a car, got brain damage, had no impulse control, ran from the cops in his truck, killed two young girls when he lost control, went to prison for life. Downloaded hentai on Kaza using the university internet in his freshman year, which should give you a nice time frame. Had it set to download to his network shared folder, which I think was Kaza's default. Kaza was an early form of file sharing software, it would automatically share any file in its folder, and you could search the files of anyone connected and download them, which you would then continue to share with other users, until you moved or deleted it. Point Japan also has slash had a lower rage of consent than the US. I know there was some debate over it, haven't looked into the results. So he downloaded a bunch of hentai, because that's what horny, nerdy college students do. Someone found his shared folder on the network, and he eventually got convicted of distributing childborn and expelled from school, fired, evicted, etc. Over fictional teenagers in Japanese erotic comic books. At no point were actual, living children, or teenagers, involved, much less harmed, and he was only a year or two past being a minor himself. Point he eventually got off probation, but he still probably stuck with the label of being a such offender for life. Over comic books. I had a friend in elementary school, we'll call him Tom, who I was really close with. We played the same sports, hung out after school, and played lots of RuneScape together. However, Tom was also that friend who exposed me to my first cigarette, thought it was cool back then, and loved causing mischief in his neighborhood. For example, I remember one time we were walking by another public school in his neighborhood during their recess and he would randomly walk up to a group of kids and start a fight with them. Anyways, I end up transferring to a different school as our family decided to buy a house in a different part of the city and we naturally stopped talking. Fast forward 10 years later, I reached out to him on Facebook, because why the fuck not, and we agreed to get a coffee. When I met Tom for a coffee at a nearby Tim Hortons, I noticed something was very off about him. He ended up inviting me over to his house, I knew his parents well, and I find out from them that he got into a fight over a drug deal, got punched really hard in the temple resulting in brain damage. He was on meds to behave and function normally. Point two years later, I leave work, and as I was waiting for the train to commute home, I see on one of the television screens at the station with a breaking news headline. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Tom's name and his mugshot appear on the screen as the caption stated that he was charged for first degree murder for stabbing his own mother multiple times while his father was at home as well. What's even more scary was that I was in that very same house, talking to that very same woman two years ago. Apparently, he didn't take his meds that day and just flipped out. Point TLDR, childhood friend suffered brain damage, wasn't the same anymore, forgets to take meds one day, kills his own mother. The time he got charged for taking a hostage, so for the purposes of my story, let's call this friend Nick point some backstory on Nick. At the time of this story he lived with his grandmother. 
This is during high school, and I had to walk by his grandmother's house every day to get to school point all right. So on this November morning, my girlfriend at the time and myself were walking to school, talking about music and video games, when we noticed the police were at his grandmother's house three cruisers, two marked subs, and two unmarked subs. So, what he told me was, him and his grandmother got into a fight, which isn't unusual, they have words sometimes. But this time he was getting a bit more angry, and when he went to remove himself and calm down she kept yelling. She told him she felt scared. So he shouts you're scared? I'll give you something to be scared about. So he goes to the basement and grabs a pipe and he goes to the kitchen and grabs a knives. He begins beating at the walls, slashing at the pictures and couch point at this point the grandmother calls the police and the police show up point. So the police come up, armed to the teeth and shout open up, or we're coming in. Nick, no, it's fine, leave us alone, I'm calming down police, we are coming in. Nick, sheet, fine, wait, don't kick the door in, I'll come out, so. He drops the pipe and knife and walks out. He sees a squad of cops, and one guy with a smile. Nick describes getting shot in the chest with silly string from the smiling guy, and as he looked down at his chest, he realized that it wasn't silly string. But by then it was too late point so, he was apprehended and taken away. Since he didn't open the door the first time he was charged with taking a hostage point this is just one of the very many Nick stories I have. Best friend since third grade was married to a teacher and had a daughter. They were home ER winners, he owned his own business. Life was good. Out of the blue he confides in me that his wife will have a three way with him and her best friend, but only if she gets two dudes first. I cringe at where this is going. He asks me. No contact between him and I he promises. Nope. No way. Furthermore, I tell him he's playing with fire. It's not like she's some girlfriend and he's looking at an opportunity. He's married with a kid point he doesn't listen. Gets another guy, tag teams his old lady. She reneges on a full three way with her friend, but they do mess around together. He decides he's falling in love with the friend, and said friend was also married. All his thoughts and hopes of running away with her and her leaving her husband eventually came crashing down when everyone was back to reality point he had a messy divorce, got jammed with a fact ton of child support, only gets to see his daughter occasionally, business falls apart and had to give her the house. He's very codependent hucks up with a trashy chick working at a bar who already had a couple kids. He has another with her and they get married. Another year two goes by she gets arrested on her second or third DUI and is addicted to painkillers. He is now divorced from her and sharing custody of that child now, along with more child support point he hits me up one day telling me how embarrassed he is to ask but needs some money quick. I didn't ask any questions, I went to the store and wired him several hundred dollars. He promised to pay it back in a week or two. He knew that my wife and I were paying for IVF. So we were strapped. That was the last I ever heard from him. It has been 4 years now. Last I heard he was selling cars. The IVF was successful and we have 2 kids of our own now and not so much as a call or text to see how things are. I had told him not to worry about paying me back I just wanted to hear from him. It's amazing how fast people can change. I miss my friend. I became really good friends with this girl in middle school. She was super smart and always in the gifted classes. When we were 16, she enrolled in college as a dual enrollment student. She ended up meeting this 24-year-old marine on Omegle and they start dating. He lived 3 hours away and she couldn't drive. So she gets a waitressing job 40 hours slash week and lies to her parents to take the bus every weekend to go see him. She ends up failing out of college and never graduating high school. He cheats on her, big surprise, fast forward a bit, and she decides she doesn't want the typical, boring, middle class life. So she moves to New York. She starts having sex with every guy she meets, using coke and heavily drinking. She even joked about having the shakes when she goes a couple hours without. Last time I saw her, her hair was completely matted, and she looked like she hadn't showered in weeks. She's working three jobs, lives in a show box, and spends every cent on her habits. She just had an abortion last year at 19. Her parents are fairly well off and constantly try to convince her to move back home. 
she's convinced that her life is awesome and sees no reason to change point it's just scary to think that her whole life was derailed by an omegle interaction. Back in college I was friends with this guy named Richard. Rich had it figured out, according to a mutual friend of ours. He was studying finance, was already a rising star at a local bank. I expected he'd be a VP at some big financial company by the time he was 30, making us all jealous. Oh, and he also had an incredibly hot Asian girlfriend we all secretly drooled over whenever we saw them together a year after graduation. Rich marries his girlfriend and decides he wants to be a high school math teacher for a while. That goes reasonably well for a few years, but then ends abruptly when he's fired for carrying on an affair with a 15-year-old female student. Point Richard's beautiful wife divorces him. He gets dragged through the court system for a few years by the girl's parents who finally agree to reduce charges in exchange for restitution, which wipes out all of Rich's savings. Shockingly, he still decides to marry the high school girl the day she turns 18, and they move in together to support his new wife's schooling. Rich takes a job as a manager at a local dump, which requires him to commute more than an hour by car every morning and evening. This all happened about a dozen years ago, he's quite a bit worse for wear now. Point his wife basically loathe him. She stays with him because he's slavishly devoted to supporting her financially, willing to bankroll her traveling, and her hopeless attempts at making it as an actress in Hollywood. Richard is overweight, depressed and miserable, but he has no realistic way out point so hard to reconcile what he's become with the guy I admired back in college. An acquaintance of mine, I'll call him Gordon, has been in and out of jail slash legal trouble for years due to his heroin addiction. We pretty much only communicated through likes and comments on FB. He seemed like a nice enough dude, just got caught up with the wrong people and acquired a bad habit along the way. He was able to maintain a house that he inherited and scrounged up enough money to take care of himself and his dog. Like I said, seemed like a nice dude. I wouldn't hang out with him, but I didn't condemn the guy for his past mistakes. So he hucks up with another nearby heroin addict. Let's call her Shanna, she's an 18 year old stripper with a 2 year old. I actually watched this girl grow up, and it was so incredibly sad to see which path she chose. So she eventually moves in. One day she leaves on some sort of retreat for the strip club she worked at. She was expected to be gone for at least a week. Anyway while she was gone, she left her baby with Gordon. Shanna's sister drops by to get the baby, since she had a day planned, and she notices Gordon sitting ominously in the dark living room, not saying a word. The baby is in another room in his playpen, so as Shanna's sister walks toward the kid, Gordon said the baby fell while he was playing and scratched up his cheek. She picks up the baby and his entire face is bruised. His only she was soaked in liquor and his breath smelled like it also. Apparently Gordon was trying to get the baby drunk when the baby knocked the bottle out of his hand. Gordon became furious and punched this helpless baby multiple times in the face, then locked him in another room by himself to suffer alone in the cold with a soaked onishi. Custody was taken away from Shanna and now the baby is being taken care of by her mother, who isn't the greatest person either. Gordon is still sitting in county, but is expected to spend many years in prison. Oh and apparently he beat his dog too. I have a link to his arrest, but I'm not sure if that's allowed. One of my good friends in high school was a bit of a stoner and slacker, but a good kid. Got into cocaine and got a DUI but straightened out. He was 24 and training for a new job shot up heroin and died in his hotel room. Point my friend's sister in college was insanely smart but had immensely poor judgment. She frequently smoked weed and did hard drugs occasionally and got a DUI her senior year. She paid her fine and got off only to six months later while out with friends blow her face off while tripping on the 4th of July when an M80 exploded in her face. Criminal record now and can't pass background check and 10,000 in medical debt. Point third story was in high school my senior year. My friend threw a kegger and this kid who graduated 3 years ahead of me shows up beyond wasted. Said kid's dad comes home and throws the kids out of the house. Drunk kid who is on drugs and with 3 kids in his car bolts out onto the rainy slicked roads at 110 miles per hour. Rex and kills 3 kids kid ran off into the woods and was found 9 hours later at his parents house. 
wound up serving six years in jail, but killed three kids at age 18. This happened in Maryland in 2011. I knew a girl who literally ate herself to death point she was a fat kid in grade school and got bullied for it. I was a fat kid in grade school and got bullied as well. So, while we didn't have much in common, we got lumped together in lots of crummy ways. We were the last two picked for sports. Whenever there were treats for the class, there was the inevitable joke about making sure we were last, so we didn't eat them all. We were a fixture in the Christmas program as Santa and Mrs. Claus for the obvious reasons when puberty hit, I got interested in girls as well as physical fitness and lost a bunch of weight. She just kept getting bigger and bigger. Both her mom and dad were overweight, so she didn't have the greatest role models at home. Also, she was always eating candy or chewing sugary gum. By the time we graduated high school, she was diabetic and had to manage it with shots fast forward 10 years. I was home visiting my parents over the holidays and I ran into her in the grocery store. Not only was she bigger than ever, she had lost part of her leg to complications from diabetes. And, from the looks of her grocery cart, she hadn't made any dietary changes she died before she was 40. My sister, insanely, freakishly intelligent, taught herself to read when she was 2, speaking in full, nuanced sentences by 3, that sort of thing, has never had a lick of common sense about anything in her whole life point in high school she started dating a guy 10 years her senior, he was a musician, yeah, to support his music career, he drank. You could never tell my sister anything she didn't want to hear so of course no one could tell her an unemployed drunk with at least one ex-wife that we knew of and two kids that he didn't support wasn't a great catch. She graduates, he follows her to college and a year later they are married, she's pregnant, drops out of college and starts working minimum wage jobs to support them. He's still working on his music career and drinking away every penny they have point 10 years and another kid later she finally divorces him but immediately hucks up with another unemployed as whole who proceeds to molest her daughter she's now 40 years old on loser hash 3 and has zero prospects for her life. All that intelligence is slowly going to waste, she never did anything with it. She's currently living in a house owned by our grandmother because it was the only way the family could keep a roof over her kids heads. I honestly don't know what she's doing for work these days at 40 she still has a chance, she's still scary brilliant, and I have faith she could do something with her life if she would just pull her head out of her ass and for god's sake stop dating useless, unemployed people who do nothing but suck up her money and energy and molest her kids I love her, but it's so hard watching her piss her life away knowing could do so much. More if she would just stop setting the bar so damn low for herself. Copying my answer from a previous thread point one of my best friends in high school slash late teens slash early 20s was epileptic. He would have seizures occasionally, even while on his meds. They usually happened after a weekend of binging video games, Halo LAN party days, and smoking pot slash drinking, so he usually had them around our group of friends. We knew the routine, don't stick anything in his mouth. Put him in the recovery position, make sure he didn't hit his head on anything, etc. They were pretty scary to witness, and we tried our best to get him to not smoke or drink at least, but being 20 years old you feel invincible, and we didn't want to treat him like he was a child. Source of guilt hash won their point, while he was living with his parents things were relatively under control as far as him taking his meds, but as soon as he moved out on his own he would stop taking them for periods of time. He would then proceed to have a car accident caused by a seizure. In the span of 6 years he totaled 5 cars, never enough to seriously hurt himself or anyone else, but the cars would be faked. He had some issues stemming from his relationship with his asshole dad, we were all video game playing, jeek potheads. His dad was a redneck construction worker in Alabama. Long story short he went from being a college student on a full academic scholarship, to being a server at Cracker Barrel. He got kicked out of his parents, so I let him come live with me and my girlfriend at the time, who had just became pregnant. My friend would be kind of unreliable when it came to paying his part of the rent and bills, 
but it was never anything I couldn't handle until he got the money together but once I found out I had a child on the way I knew I needed stability and after 3 months of flaking out on the rent I kicked him out point a few weeks later I got a call from his brother that I needed to come to the hospital. This was New Year's Day. He had a seizure the previous night on the way home from a party, flipped his car a few times, and had a fence post puncture his brain. He was 22. He lived in a persistent vegetative state for another 11 years until his feeding tube port became infected, and he got sepsis. That was earlier this year. I still think, if I hadn't kicked him out he'd still be alive. TLDR, genius best friend dropped out of college on a full ride, stopped taking his epilepsy meds, wrecked his car, and lived as a vegetable for 11 years, until he died of an infection this year. NSFL, we were 17. Twin bro and I went to a friend's party and having a great time. We were expecting Tib, everyone called him by his initials, and Mike Mike to show up at some point, but hadn't heard from him yet. This was pre-cell phone days, so you basically didn't have that 100% always on contact with folks. They eventually show up, and they're wild. Too wild. Party is great though. Noticed they parked their car on top of Star's kid's bike fact she's going to be mad. Some time passes, and my twin comes up and says hey, I just to bang Mike Mike snorting a line in the bathroom. Keep in mind this was a stoner crowd, hard drugs were unusual. Maybe that explained the wild behavior. I brushed it off as you do whatever stupid shit you wanna do. Continued having fun. Really, no one else wanted anything to do with that stuff. Point twin disappears for a long while. I don't really know where he went, maybe he went outside with Buddha to smoke a blunt. Sudden crashing through every entrance of the house, it's the police. We're ultra faked, everyone is under 21 drinking, and enough weed to make El Chapo jealous. Cops are rounding us up. Point cop says, who drove the white Cadillac here? We're all a little stunned. Uh, I think it's Tib's mom's car, someone spoke. Who is that? And people start pointing at him. Fire truck and ambulance arrive soon after. Turns out that wasn't Star's kid's bike we saw point apparently. Tip and Mike Mike were so coked out of their skulls, they didn't realize they hid two kids. I'll spare you the details, but the cops found it morbidly easy to track where the car went next by following the trail left from dragging two kids and two teenagers lives ended because of carelessness and drugs edit. Reason I couldn't find twin when he disappeared. He walked outside, just as the cops were about to no-knock. They snatched him and pulled him away, so he couldn't warn anyone. At the end of the day, no one was charged for drugs slash alcohol. The cops were so genuinely distraught from the manslaughter, they just seized and ordered us out. One of my best friends from college. Incredibly smart, very kind person, but just slightly off his rocker. He always drank a lot, even for college. We were all in engineering, and our group was kind of the druggy slash party group of the engineering college. Weird I know. But he always drank more, and did more hard drugs than the rest of us. He graduates, gets a good job, and calms down enough, so that he is functional for the job. Point he was still kind of a hard partier compared to rest of us in our mid-twenties. But he met an amazing woman, got married. Around 29 to 30 years old, something happened and he went off the deep end. Drinking and doing drugs to the point that it was obviously affecting his work. Had some health issues that just exacerbated everything point we all tried to get him the help he needed. Multiple interventions, supporting him while he was in rehab, encouraging him when he got out. So many people gave him so much support, but he decided that we were all against him. He got diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which honestly explains a lot. However, instead of being grateful for finally getting a diagnosis, and therefore as some sort of path to recovery, he used it as an excuse for everything. Nothing is his fault, he can't help it, it's because he's bipolar. He was so excited that he could blame everything on it point he started refusing to go to therapy or take any medication. Cut out all the people who actually cared about him in his life. Started texting trying to hang out and party with some old friends, but those friends are all functioning adults now with families and jobs, with no desire for weekend long benders we all really tried to give him the support he needed. A few months ago, his wife finally left him, and I'm super happy for her. 
It was so bad that all of his former friends, myself included, were gently encouraging her to leave him because it had become horribly manipulative emotionally abusive to her. She's an amazing woman and doesn't deserve that crap. She deserves another chance to be happy point now he has no job while being bitterly angry at his former employer for firing him because he was faked up at work all the time. He's living on disability and is in the middle of a divorce. Cut everyone who was supportive of him out of his life. He lives three blocks from me and we don't talk at all. I'm kind of scared that him or his shady friends will break in my house one day looking for stuff for drug money. Couldn't resist the siren call of meth point I met him at a place I used to work at. Intelligent, charismatic, driven, quite possibly the best salesman I have ever met in my life. He and his girlfriend were having a kid, and he was completely and utterly dedicated to the both of them. I have never met someone who had so much potential at a young age like that point he'd take things upon himself that weren't his duty, just to make it a better place to work. If he saw the bathroom needed he wouldn't wait for someone else to do it, he'd take a few minutes and clean it himself, even though it wasn't his job point one day he made a comment that caused me concern. Ten minutes earlier he was all smiles, and when I saw him again his mood had changed, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. He takes me aside and says man, have you ever used scrubbing bubbles? Yeah. Have you ever smoked meth? No. Well, don't. But I gotta tell you, the scrubbing bubbles smell just like a perfect hit of meth. Are you going to be alright? Yeah man, it'll pass. I just need a few minutes. He started to busy himself with something else, and I went to get him a cup of coffee. He seemed fine a little, while later at this point I should probably add that my good friend is our manager and we both knew about this guy's history with hard drugs. Over drinks later I quietly mention that we shouldn't keep weird chemical cleansers around and explain what happened point life continues. This guy is excelling at everything you want an employee to excel at. Higher ups take notice and they make him a manager. Not long after that they put him in the training program for middle management. Everything coming up Millhouse and his life is going awesome point at some point he and his girlfriend have a falling out. She moves out with the kid and he spirals into depression. He drops out of the training program, isn't doing well at work, starts talking about hanging out with old friends. My buddy, who was the original manager, is now in middle management and is as concerned as I'm point dude goes off the radar. Manager buddy finds him a week later high off his ass with a bunch of other people in some squatter house. I have no idea what happened to him after that, but the next thing I learn he's in jail. The next time I see him. He's graduating from some faith-based get-out-of-jail program giving the most convincing performance of his life. You'd think he'd found Jesus himself. I could tell this was him the way I knew him from before. Sick of being in jail and going through the motions to get out through the state-sponsored Jesus cult. Point last time I talked to him he was sober, working in a shop putting trailer hitches on cars and trying to start his life over. I've lost track of him since, but I really hope he's doing okay. I'm that friend who faked his life while watching friends move on to college, marry, kids, whatever. At the time you have to tell yourself that today's enjoyment trumps tomorrow's plans. It's kind of incredible what drug addicts can convince themselves of. Started drink and smoking at 15. Selling pounds and zips of coke by 22. Friends were getting busted for robbing banks and 100s of X pills. I used to tell myself that my experiences are my choice and I've lived a life many never will see outside of a movie, but the funny thing is the older I got the more I just wanted to be like everyone else. I'm now 30, single, no kids, never had my license and live with my father I haven't had a job in 2 years since I got clean. I don't look back and miss it anymore, I don't regret it either though. I like who I am, just not where I'm at. But I wouldn't be who I am without going through everything I did. At one point I was douchebag, womanizer selfish prick who honestly believed he was a sociopath. It's just the drugs had not let me experience my own feelings in so long I forgot I had them. Now at the very least, I'm who I want to be. These stories actually make me feel better. I didn't die, don't have brain damage, no felonies and only a few grand in debt. So I guess I made it out alright. 
Meth point he went from ambitious and promising, not exactly the full ride to Harvard type, but he had plans, and an acceptance letter, to attend a very respectable state university, to a dropout addict over the course of our senior year of high school point I take at least slight responsibility for it, even though it was by no means intentional. His normal circle of friends were all focused on part time work, I was working 40 hours slash week to save up for college, and extracurricular activities to include on our college applications, but he didn't feel the need to worry about any of that, so he had a lot of free time on his hands, but no friends to spend it with. Because of that, he found new friends, and they were heavily into drugs. Starting with pills and weed, he eventually moved up to meth, and it permanently changed him. Within a few months, he went from a pleasant happy-go-lucky guy who just wanted to have a good time, to a guy selling pills at school, to afford his new habit, always focused on his next fix point surprise, surprise, he got caught selling by a teacher, and was kicked out of school. Some people would take that as a wake up call to get his life back in order, but he doubled down on his meth habit, and became even more strung out. I understand he was on a 3 day bender, awake for 60 plus hours, when he was driving from one place to another in the middle of the night, fell asleep at the wheel, and crashed into a stoplight pole at an intersection. This still didn't wake him up, and police officers eventually found him asleep in the driver's seat, where he was arrested for possession of a felony quantity of methamphetamine. He was sentenced to 5 years, and got out right around the time I graduated from the same university he originally planned to attend. He at least finally got his life back on track, dating and later marrying a girl from school, having a kid, and working a respectable job in our hometown point about 4 years later, November 2012, as the sole breadwinner in his home, with a wife and 3 year old son to care for, he didn't wake up one morning. Brain aneurysm. Everyone suspected his history of drug use contributed to it, but there was no way of saying one way or the other. Either way, he's gone now, and I really miss my friend. My friend Tony. Tony was an immigrant to the US where he was half Korean and half Japanese, and if you don't know the relation between those two countries they hate each other. This created it where in high school he was always an outcast, where he didn't get along with Koreans or Japanese. After a while we became very close, and he told me all about how hard it was growing up with a single mom, where he didn't even know what his dad was up to, all he knew was that his dad was in Japan, and was an alcoholic. His only memories of his dad were, that his dad was abusive towards him. After a while though he came to me, and said hey man I think my dad is dead it turns out his grandparents, his dad's parents, went to go check on him, but he wasn't answering, and when they knocked on his door repeatedly he never answered, and when they opened the door to his house, and looked around he wasn't anywhere to be seen. I offered my condolences, and really heard him out, but after a while we started hanging out less and less. Than the last time I saw him, he told me about how he had started drinking, and he even showed off to me a switchblade saying how he could use it to defend himself. My future brother-in-law, who was also my friend. Initially a good looking kid, very kind and popular with everybody, decent prospects in life point meets a woman 8 years older working at T-Mobile, she's divorced with two pretty kids. She's the most socially awkward person I know, won't look anyone in the eye, mumbles answers to questions, follows Bill like a mindless zombie, glares daggers at anyone daring to talk to Bill. Soon it's impossible to talk to Bill alone. His phone is never in use, anyone wanting to contact him has to go through her. He starts disappearing, nobody sees him at family gatherings anymore. We look up the woman, has a long rap sheet, arrests for crack cocaine, etc. Bill gets fired from his job, keeps getting evicted from the places they rent together. She doesn't work, and he supports her, and her two kids. She gets pregnant. He starts looking like a hobo long and camped beard, really ugly dad clothes full of holes and stuff. Nobody says anything, so I finally end up blurting out, why do you look homeless? He blushes and says it's because she wants him to look that way. So no girl hits on him point she gave birth to their baby girl. Beautiful kid. She's pregnant with another kid. Never worked since they got together. He was only 25. Edit. Skipped a word. I got three stories. 
Two about friends. One about me. Point first friend. Let's call her Mary. In elementary school and early middle school, she and I were somewhat friends. She was pretty popular, kind, and smart, and everyone loved her. Why wouldn't they? Then she got into partying hard. She eventually wound up doing drugs. She couldn't even finish high school. She had to go to rehab. Fortunately her parents forced her to go. She became pretty trashy, and it makes me very sad to think about point another friend was John let's say. Against Martin funny, he and I knew each other from kindergarten to 7th grade. I don't remember why, but his sister and I had a fight, and I overheard his mom say he couldn't hang out with me anymore. Years later, he was living in an apartment with friends while still in high school. Turns out they were selling drugs, and the police raided his friends. Lucky for him, he wasn't actually there and got away. Same story, he wound up in rehab. Fortunately he is doing better than Mary and getting his life together now. Mine is more tame. I had a good scholarship to a pretty solid college. Then it all went to sheet because I didn't want to take my ADHD medications anymore. I hated their side effects and quit cold turkey. Didn't tell my parents or my doctor and wound up losing all motivation at the school. My GPA suffered heavily and I wound up flunking out badly. Took 3 years of dead end jobs to motivate me, but I'm back at school and getting my life back on track. Had a friend who was a bit of a manipulative train, got ridden a lot. She bounced around from guy to guy when she was younger, 15, 18 ish, and then settled for another friend in a separate friend group of ours that got mixed together. He, 20, was freely banging her, unprotected, 17, at the time. It was a malicious and hateful relationship because she was and became even harder involved into drugs. She was a pothead most of her life and then moved on to smoking arcs to continue using any money she could. She got pregnant with her first kid six months into the relationship with him and they are still together. He doesn't do anything aside from work until 4, come home and sit in their room in the girl's parents house and play video games all night until 3 a. She had a second kid by him at 19, and it's still the same old story. She watches the kids all day, which means she sits at home and smokes weed and dark sick and tin, just to numb her pain of it all and get through the day. She leaves her kids unattended and messy aff for her mother to take care of while she gets blasted. He ignores her and only plays video games and doesn't even care about the kids. Still together to this day and still as dysfunctional as ever. They both could have been so much more had they just wrapped it up, yet they faked everything up, and she got hard into drugs. No longer friends with either of them or anyone else from that group. Bad crowd to be around altogether. Just became a total dick point young guy. Was fun. I used to have a blast talking to him about whatever whenever. He was a great friend. Was being the operative word point in the short span of a few months he just flipped. Became almost depressed. I wouldn't say depressed, because he doesn't suffer depression. Every conversation turned into an argument about the pettiest sheet. He started swearing at me, calling me names, talking about me behind my back to other friends, things that the other friends promptly told me about. In the end I warned him a number of times, if he carried on I'd cut off contact, and he just carried on. So I cut him off point in the meantime he's almost turned into a stalker, going round a number of friends trying to get back in contact with me, said friends have promptly told him to fuck off. He burned me then went to another close friend, and burned them in a similar way by being shitty as well. They blocked him too after trying to help, we all tried to be helpful to him. But he turned into this mean as whole. The last thing a few days ago was he tried apologizing yet again, and I asked one simple thing which he ignored, and after he did I said I was never going to speak to him again as he's incapable of following simple instruction. After that he very begrudgingly agreed. I honestly don't see much hope for any future friendship point all of this happened online in a small community over a number of months. I say he faked up his life because this was everything to him and he's now pretty much shunned by a large portion of the community for being shitty to them all. Not exactly friends, former roommates. We'll call them L, R, and TTLDR. Beach facts up roommates and own daughters lives R has faked up the lives of two people. Point R was about 28, a heavy drinker, used to do hard drugs like meth. 
she had a three-year-old daughter, TT's father was in prison, drugs if I'm not mistaken, and it seemed like R absolutely hated her daughter. R would tell her to fuck off if T wanted attention, and she was busy. She cursed her daughter out on a daily basis, and only ever showed positive emotion. While she was drunk point R began dating, and her daughter was involved. She snorted coke in our shared bath, and went on to have sex with veritable strangers next to her sleeping child. Point one morning, after we all heard her having sex, T comes out to me in the kitchen, I made her breakfast on weekends, and says apple smoked gouda. Look at me, she begins spanking herself, and shouting things like ooh yeah, oh, in my butthole, oh, my asshole, ah, comes out, and laughs I tried to be a positive point in T's life for as long as I could. I debated for a long time as to calling child protective services, and did, after we moved. It breaks my heart to see that beautiful smart girl stuck with someone who sees her as an accessory on the best of days now. The story of L. L and I plan to move into an apartment together. A two bedroom. I heard of our plans, and decided she needed to move too. L and R were dating from one week, before we signed the lease till one week, after we moved in. R kicked L out of the master bed and onto the couch, where he remained for the three years we lived there. L was attacked coming home from work one night and was in a coma for 23 days. He has a complicated relationship with his family, so R stepped in. She made one of those crowdfunding pages in his name, and when it grew to over dollar sign 25k, she never left his side point she stayed with him for about 6 months post incident. Just long enough to realize she wasn't going to get a dime, other than the expensive gifts he bought her auntie. R manipulated Ellen to raising a child that isn't his, and cleaning up after the two of them, for free. I don't think R even did the dishes once in that year, because, according to L, she has a baby. She doesn't have to, according to L. She threatened people, tried to start fights, and tried to shove him into fights, while they were out. Not exactly what someone who just was attacked needs also she never paid for the internet or the electricity and I'm still pretty salty about that point edit for clarity to keep people from calling me a terrible person. Friends since elementary school. He graduates with his B slash S in physics at 19, at 22 gets his masters in theoretical physics, accepted into a PhD program for theoretical physics at 23 goes to a bar and picks up a chick who's there drinking. They go back to his place and do the deed. She leaves no biggie. Next week she calls him up and says she wants to see him. They meet up and start fooling around in his car. Cops show up. They get arrested for public indecency. When they book them, he finds out he is also being charged with corruption of minor and unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. Turns out the girl was 14. He loses his sheet, gets kicked out of his PhD program, dumped by his long-term girlfriend, disowned by his family, and then tries to take his own life by jumping off an overpass onto a freeway. The police talk him down before he jumps, and then he gets charged for doing that. He serves something like 18 months and 4 to 5 years probation, lifetime membership on the Satch Offender Registry, in addition to being barred from the use of social media, apparently he threatened his girlfriend on social media when she dumped him, dude is now an MRA and waiting tables. While reading some of these has made me realize I'm the friend to some of my close friends. I didn't have the best upbringing parents didn't have much money and pretty much let me do what I wanted. Pretty much quit school at 17, even though I had teachers telling me I was wasting my potential. Then fell into a deep depression. A few years later I met some new friends, and even though there was a lot of drinking, and very little productivity they were helping me come out of my depression. I get a job, and start to consider going back to school then met a girl, and fell in love two years later she cheats on me, and we break up. The depression sets in again, but my friends are there, and I start to pull myself together, and get my life on track. Then the ex comes back in my life, and despite warnings to the contrary I take her back. The first two years or so are great we have a beautiful baby boy and I start back to school. The then comes a roller coaster of ups, and down with two more kids who are both autistic and some possible and some definite cheating. All the while I do everything I can for her working nights and watching the kids in the day when she decided to go back to school. Then out if nowhere she ends it. 
Turns out she had been telling her classmates about some of our problems without mentioning the infidelity on her part that caused the problems. Flash forward a year and I'm with a wonderful woman who I may lose because I'm an idiot who still comes running when the ex calls needing help. There was this kid that was part of my friend group for a while, but he was already going downhill fast when we met him. It's not really his fault, he has severe mental illness problems like bipolar, and we suspect he has schizophrenia as well. He dated my friend for a while, but he became possessive and would break into her house and leave notes and sheet. Fast forward a few months and now he thinks he's on a mission to kill all drug dealers, despite being one himself. He's told multiple people that he's in the Illuminati. He doesn't have a license because he has seizures and could kill someone, but that didn't stop him from driving. He used to live across the street from one of my friends, and he told her that next time she changes clothes, she should close her blinds. Then the next day he showed up at her house, on drugs, having seizures on her couch, then completely flipped his sheet. When we took him to the hospital point there are so many stories of the stuff he's done. Once he threw a dog out of a moving car. His ex is pregnant with his twins. He threatened to kill my boyfriend. I could go on and on. He's been in and out of jail for the last few months. His family doesn't talk to him, but we convinced them to help us get him help, but it's a slow process. The poor guy's probably going to spend the rest of his life in and out of jail or mental institutions. My best friend from 3rd grade till our early 20s got really bad into meth before he got clean. But it was readily apparent that there was some lasting damage done to his brain. He ended up moving from Kansas, a home state, to Texas and then to Oregon Point cut to mid-2007. My dad calls me and says don't look up anything on the internet about him, so naturally I do. He had committed suicide by self-immolation. He tried to burn down a fur clothing store by lighting himself on fire and trying to break in point two weeks later I have an FBI agent sitting in my living room interviewing us about him and ties to any eco-terrorist organizations probably the most heartbreaking thing of it all was that, like I said above, he was never quite right after getting clean and I truly believe he was manipulated by some people to do this. I don't think he ever fully realized that he would die, let alone not for 8 hours. After he committed the act point it's been about 11 years, I rent a house from his parents and I see his younger brother all the time. His brother is the spitting image of him. It hurts to this day point so, does that count as faking a life up? Because I'm of the mindset that you can't get much more faked up than that point sidebar. His funeral was one of the funniest things I've ever witnessed. Everything from an evangelical preacher speaking in tongues to a song leader who dressed and sounded like a 1970s low-end Vegas lounge singer, leisure suit and all. My friend was kicked out of a party for trying to steal people's stuff from the house. In the process of being kicked out, everyone there laughed at him and the three other kids who were also caught. Well, they came back to the house later that night with a shotgun and beat the sheet out of everyone that was still there. At least one kid ended up in the IQ and stole what they could. While they were there, a neighbor called the police who promptly showed up, considering the station was only a few hundred yards down the road. They tried to flee in their car, but crashed into a fence and took off on foot. They were taste and arrested. After a few months in jail, the three other kids took a 5-7 to seven year plea deal. My friend got out on bond after his parents put up their house. Rather than take a 5-7 to seven year plea like the other kids, he decided to take it to court, under that assumption that he had an unbeatable case. He argued, alongside his court-appointed attorney, that he was asleep during the robbery and never left the car. Jury didn't buy it and convicted him after a three-day trial and 30 minutes of deliberation. Judge was disgusted with him and his arrogance. Sentenced him to 13 to 18 years. He still has about six more years left to serve, assuming he gets out on his minimum. He's a piece of sheet, always was, and I don't feel bad for him. The only thing I feel bad for was being friends with him in the first place. Got into heroin bad point he used it for years, but always seemed to be able to keep himself from overdosing. He even got a wake up call once when one of his buddies died in his faking house from the sheet but it still did not motivate him to stop. He eventually resorted to theft to fund his habits and stole from his stepmother. 
She got him arrested after that, but long story short it took them two separate stints before he ended up in a program. The program was successful, he stopped using, lived with a bunch of recovering addicts, and ended up doing good enough he was allowed to move out of the halfway house and get a job. He stayed clean for over a year. He ended up getting promoted as a manager due to his past experiences shortly six months into the job. Unfortunately, he got involved with a piece of sheet girl that did pretty much every drug known to mankind and was generally garbage. He first introduced me to her when she was pregnant and she was standing there chain smoking and she eventually got him into the crap again. Now mind, as I said, before he used the sheet for years, but always had some degree of control, if that's what you want to call it and not odding but one night she pushed him too far and he did. Nearly died that night. He didn't even get sent back to prison because pretty much everyone gave up on him after how many chances he has already got. Now the guy can barely walk, he talks like a GPS due to the seizures and lives as a shut-in due to his problems. Jake was my friend since middle school, we are 25 now. Jake and I sort of discovered weed and alcohol together senior year of high school and it was a good time. We go off to college and obviously we continue doing as much drinking and drugs as any average college kids, though we're at different schools. I notice each successive summer back from college that he's more and more of a fiend for getting faked up. I figure it's just because his college was more of a party school and it'll stop when he graduates. I even mention it to him a couple times like dude why do you wanna get so obliterated that you throw up and ruin the night. You know, a very casual comment like that here and there. We graduate college and get steady jobs and he finally chills on the substance, abused you mostly to the fact that his job demands about 60 hours a week on average. Or so I thought. What he actually begins doing is just going harder than ever when he goes on vacations or has breaks from work. Like, zero to a thousand. Two of our best friends from a long term friend group end up getting engaged to each other and we go to a bachelor slash bachelorette weekend at the beach. When I show up to the beach, house for the first night, Jake and another friend of mine have already finished nearly a handle of rum and hit a gravity bong several times. It's around 10pm. My car group is just arriving so we've still got a night ahead of us and we advise Jake to take it easy, to which he responds aggressively. Jake had been being a huge asshole the last few times we had seen him, and so I decide, since he's being an asshole now, I'm just going to clear the air and tell him he's our friend and we all care about him, and he needs to stop being an asshole every time we see him. Instead of apologizing or anything, he flips out about us all attacking him and cheating on him. We drop the subject. Later that night, Jake, me, and our closest guy friends are all sitting around a campfire smoking a little pot. Jake gets up and goes back in the house. I figure he's going to bed and we are soon to follow anyways. Only we can't find Jake when we go to our room where he is sleeping as well. My friend and I think he might have drunkenly tried to go to the beach for a night swim or something. So we stay up looking for him, worried he might accidentally drown himself or some sheet until about 5am. We can't find him and have nowhere else to look, so we go to bed. We are awoken to him walking into our room with a slightly jolly smile on his face and we ask him where the fuck were you? And he responds oh I had sex with Melissa. Melissa is another childhood best friend of ours and we've all known each other for a decade. So we are a bit surprised to hear this, but we figure hey whatever, I guess they might have been a little flirty last night I don't remember. Later that day I learned the truth. Jake went into Melissa's room and took all his clothes off and got into bed with her while she was sleeping and began trying to have sex with her. We don't know any details further than that because we didn't ask. Jake lost all of his childhood friends that day and none of us have spoken to him since. He's offered meager apologies but I don't think there's anything he can do to make it right. The saddest part of the story is that Melissa said well, I've dealt with far worse than that so I'll be okay. None of us thought that Jake would ever have it in him to do something like that and it really made me think about how you can't know what people are capable of. Best friend growing up was a math and science whiz kid. Perfect math and science on the act slash sat and scholarship offers to many great technical schools, MIT, Berkeley, Texas, Purdue, etc. 
But, where we went to high school we had some really over the top liberal art programs. It is worth noting too, that he is mildly autistic, and has zero interpersonal skills. Long story short, he got sucked into liberal arts, thumbed his nose at the tech offers, and went into a dual English slash film major. He barely graduated, had a hard time finding a job, and now 12 years later he has bounced between a few camera companies, been fired from all but the most recent, and continually is trying to get someone to take notice of the play and movie scripts he writes, which are uniformly terrible. He's tried killing himself twice now from the stress and constant failure. It's sad because he could have been a great engineer, physicist, chemist, or any other type of technical researcher. I hazard to say he was a genius in that field. He was, in my opinion, led astray by some very manipulative teachers and didn't have the ability to know when people were probably not giving him good advice point his life isn't completely ruined, but it would be terribly difficult at this point for him to start over. <laughs> Neighbor and one of best friends of my childhood. We were three, A, B and me, very good friends and neighbors, since kindergarten and up until college where we all three split for good, but I've stayed in contact with friend B mother of a friend A was a history teacher, child services helper and more, hard working woman, father was a slacker, had a nice job as programmer, lost job because he was lazy, drank nearly for a year, lost his teeth because of an accident while being drunk, drank even more, began to hit his wife, never got back into his type of job, got into construction team, drank more, lost the job, drank more, repeat. After something like 8 years he got a job as a park guard and stopped drinking, because his wife divorced, but stayed in the same house for the sake of kids, they had nowhere to go, since the house was father's, when beating of B friend's mother became more brutal, we've noticed changes on his mother clothing style, or how should I say that, she dressed differently. She was my history teacher in primary school always happy and smiling, even during the crisis. Beating became more regular, and she couldn't hide all the bruises, so we were guessing that's why she is wearing long sleeves and skirt at summer 30 deg point C. This is the backstory a lot of sad things going on back then. You could clearly see that this family problems impacted on my friend over the years. At age of 8 to 14 he was slowly growing into one of the best basketball players in the youngster rankings in Slovenia. I remember if we did something wrong, while playing he was punished with one hour of solo throws on basket, and for every miss, his father would shout at him, but wouldn't hit him. At around 14 to 16 he became involved into listening a lot of rap music and later joined into small gang that was smoking weed and drinking while skipping the high school. He was doing high school for optician, 4 years program, he failed each year at least 1x, wasting 8 years. I haven't heard of him. Since we were 18, I did ask my parents where and how is he doing, and they've told me that he ran away from home, found a job picking fruits in Argentina, he's from Slovenia, as I've heard he earned quite a decent sum of money. Few years forward, he was still picking fruits in many different countries, since that was seasonal job, and he was free the rest of the time, and wasting it all on alcohol. I don't know where he's right now point I and my friend feel very guilty for this, because we didn't tell people when we could. It's kind of sad too, because that was his wish, because he thought father would beat him, and his mother even more, if we tell someone. It feels painful to remember this kind of stuff, and how can a happy child be destroyed just like that without even knowing how badly that influenced him. I'm not sure if this should count since I found it all out on Facebook well after the fact, but, my best friend, when I was a kid I stopped talking to in high school. We just sort of drifted apart where I was hanging out with the counterculture kids and going to Hot Topic, don't judge me, he was in marching band and shopping at a Abercrombie. Well I find this kid on Facebook after we finished college and old boy done snapped when he moved out of his parents house. I'm not sure why, because his parents weren't super strict, and I'm certain there was drinking, and such in the circles he moved in, but he got to a dorm and dove into a pile of drugs like the bastard child of Hunter S. Thompson and Scrooge McDuck. I facebook stalked him all the way back to the beginning and you can see his initial facebook where it's basically him and HS. Then suddenly the posts are juvenile drug references, think t-shirts available at Spencer's. Then he's going to festivals. Then he's following fish for a summer. 
now he turned into a total burnout cliche living in his parents house, unemployed, dressed like a caricature of a hippie. I think he might be one of those people you meet that's permanently stoned. I literally know people who sold their bodies for meth that have turned their lives around better than he has. He just happened to have a golden parachute of semi-loaded parents TLDR, drugs, out of the faking blue. TLDR, successful 50 plus year old man gets mailed with guns and drugs on federal land, goes to prison, loses everything, dies alone with one foot point so, my uncle. He was former Navy and had worked as a civilian employee of the Navy as a master electrician, former nuke tech, for nearly 30 years. Consummate bachelor, rode his bicycle to work on base every day, avid skier, lived frugally but was always awesome to my sister and I, his nieces, and lived a good life. He was nearing retirement with like 300 days of bank sick time and significant amount of saved up vacation they would buy him out of and a healthy pension. He liked to smoke pot and collect guns eccentric California libertarian point so one weekend he's out camping near Death Valley with friends and they are shooting guns. A BLM patrol just happened to be in the area and his friend panics, tosses one of the guns into the brush instead of stowing it away out of sight. BLM then has cause. Search his uncle's new, 100% paid for Toyota FJ Cruiser and discovers the rest of the guns and the weed point unfortunately the guns in the truck were modified for full auto. Turns out that if they'd been camping at their usual place which was under as or NV jurisdiction the initial search wouldn't have happened. Originally he was facing 25 to life on federal weapons drug charges. His attorney was found for him by the buddy, who was a big NRA conspiracy nut, and originally wanted to force a trial. At the end he got 5 years, and loses his job, and car, etc. Whilst he's in prison, his buddy robs his storage unit and stops paying the bill. When he's released after 2.5 years, his parole requires he live with my parents 9 hours away from where he'd been living for 20 years. He had cholesterol issues from the prison food and lifestyle, was depressed, having lost his life and independence. He had his savings to carry him for a while, but that was depleted, and he kept hitting dead ends attempting to get his pension released. After becoming estranged from my mom and getting fleeced by roommates he was destitute and a shadow of his former self. He moved in with a kind friend from the navy back where he used to live and was trying to get his pension released through his old job connections, but his health had suffered so badly he was I'm kidney and heart failure and needed a bypass he designated me as his medical proxy, he didn't tolerate the open heart surgery well, and I flew down to spend 11 days at his bedside in the IQ. His medical condition continued to collapse, and he was kept unconscious whilst I had to give permission for a tracheostomy to amputate his foot which was going gangrenous from clots, etc. 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 I had to return home or lose my job, but neither my retired mother nor my sister were available to go fill in for me. In fact my mom was like oh, so when are you going to go back, you can't leave him alone he crashed repeatedly the next night, after I'd return home, with nurses calling me asking what to do. He died alone in the small hours of the morning after never regaining consciousness. There was this one girl in the dorms freshman year, she was known for being somewhat dramatic, but we almostly liked her. One night she in particular was far too drunk. There were a group of four of us dudes who were super tight, we'd hang out with other people of course, but often together. So the drunk girl has friends from her hometown, and there's some drama, because one of them has guys literally swarming her every time she comes. Anyway, three of us live on the same floor as this girl and we're there trying to like chill out and see what's up with people, while the fourth guy agrees to babysit her in his room one floor up. About 15 minutes later he comes down clearly stressed the fuck out and says she was being a handful or something point we had all been partying, so I can't remember too much other than that because I had later tried to piece it all together myself. Because a few days later he was formally notified that she had accused him of rapping her. He was never found guilty but had to move across campus. There was a lot more drama that ensued and the girl also had to leave our dorms. People hated her for a lot of the later stuff, and she never said anything about her accusation to any of us, before or after, just stopped talking to us entirely point anyway, the guy was living across campus now, and couldn't visit us, so we visited him pretty regularly. 
but his mental health was clearly spiraling down pretty fast. He left the school not long after, although I still had him on Facebook for a while, and it looked like he was doing well in a completely new life. I have a recent one that would terrify any males living in this country. This guy I used to go to school with was really good at his job, had just gotten promoted to manager of a new branch of the call center he worked at, was making something like $1,300 a month, which is a big deal if you work in CS over here. He started spending a little money trading in his 2008 car for a new 2014 and buying new clothes. Also paying for 5 courses at the school instead of his usual 2 or 3. He said he wanted to finish his degree quicker so he could get an even higher raise. Well this one girl notices and starts hanging with him. They start dating and a few months later well she's pregnant. They were together for a bit, but they eventually break up maybe 6 to 7 months into the pregnancy. Well one day he's in school last week of the semester, this is probably 6 months after they had broken up, so the kid is probably 3 or 4 months old, and he says he is not taking any classes this semester, and is withdrawing the ones he paid for to try and get his money back. I was a bit shocked, but I guess maybe he has things to pay for. Cause well he just had a kid 5 ish months later they found him hanged in his apartment. He left a note and it was the saddest thing ever. Turns out the amount of child support he was being forced to pay was somewhere near $900. His current debt payments for the car, insurance and other things like small loans for school pretty much covered the rest of his paycheck. It looks like he tried to fight it and that the judge just didn't care. And apparently the girl played victim saying that he was abusive and would beat her. He couldn't even withhold payment cause in our faked up child support system it's taken directly out of your paycheck before you even get it and taxes are taken out of the full amount. So every 15 days he was staring down a piece of paper that basically was telling him that for the next 18 years at least he was worth less than $200. In a single day he was told he was being evicted, his car was being repossessed, that he was denied a further raise at his job, the child support was not being lowered, and that he was not being granted visitation rights of the kid. He had enough and just ended it. So yeah, don't have kids in this country with random girls that you don't even know, they could be doing it to take your money. I watched someone I'd grown up with since the 4th grade start delving into drugs and alcohol during high school. My class was immensely small and incredibly competitive, and we were both in the top 20% of the class. Teachers thought she was kind and brilliant. She had competed at state level band competitions, and was incredibly talented with music. However, we lived in one of those rural hell holes where there really wasn't much to do, except sports and drugs. And if you weren't good at sports, you were essentially an outcast, leading lots of kids down a dark path. During our senior year both of us got in with a bad crowd. I was naive, but eventually recognized they were bad people and were using me, so I got out. She said she wasn't going to be my friend anymore and continued to hang out with people infamous for tripping acid and snorting pills on top of her already drinking and smoking spliffs. She declined all the universities she was accepted to and stayed in that town with no career plans or future goals. She's working at a corner store now making pocket change to fuel her drug habits and was recently under investigation for physically assaulting someone point I moved and haven't seen her since, but I'm not sure I want to. Not my friend, but me. Second marriage to a very nice woman. Smart. Fun cute, own my business, with a partner, active in my temple, etc. Point friend's son calls with a business opportunity, an opportunity to earn passive income with ATM machines. He told me he would give me two machines for free if I would become a reference account for him. I agree. I signed the agreements and am waiting for the machines to arrive. He would find locations for them. After about three to four weeks, he calls and tells me the machines have arrived, and he thinks he's got locations lined up. But in the meantime, would I talk to a potential customer of his and tell him how good the business is working point like an idiot, I agree. I spoke to his prospect and told them the things he suggested. I wound up doing that two more times and then decided that enough was enough. If he had these real customers, he could use them, and in the meantime, I didn't get my machines. I blow it off and don't hear anything for 4 years. 
Then I get a call from the FBI. They are investigating point long story short. I get an attorney and meet with the FBI. Turns out this guy sold over 4 million dollars worth of ATMs using burner cell phones as the phone number of different funny customers. Most of the customers got burned point I had to plead to a single count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. No time, but 2 year probation with 6 months home confinement point the result. My business partner wants me out, but I refuse to leave. My wife loses her job for unrelated reasons, and then she gets cancer. A few days before her surgery, my business partner locks me out. I now have no income at all. We sell the business at a fire sale price, but I cannot afford our $2,500 a month mortgage. We move into an apartment, but still have financial pressure, hard to get a job as a felon. My wife leaves me, and we get a divorce. I went from a really nice life to losing my wife, my house, and my business. This was 10 years ago, and I'm still struggling financially. Every time I meet a woman, when I explain what happened, or they find out on their own, they bolt. My life sucks, but I keep putting one foot in front of the other edit. Friend's son got 144 months is still serving. He went to trial and I testified against him. If he took a plea he would have been out after 48 months. Didn't speak to my friend for 4 years, but I finally realized it wasn't his fault. We have had a few good cries over this whole mess. A friend of mine went to the strip club one night with a few other friends. I wasn't 21, yet or may have been there myself. He ends up meeting a nice young dancer there by the name of Phoenix, and is in love at first sight. He ends up paying hundreds of dollars to get her to keep giving him private dances all night, then ends up leaving his number on a cocktail napkin for her. She ends up calling him the next day and agrees to a date when asked. She ends up quitting the club, which was her dad's club, and no I'm not joking, to move in with him. The fuck up comes in the fact that he has always believed himself to sterile, so he didn't bother to wear condoms with a faking ex-stripper who admits to having a body count in the 30 apostrophe -ish. Luckily this isn't a story of a crippling STD, but rather of crippling debt. Before carrying on with the incredible love story unfolding you must know, my friend had in the months prior flooded the engine of not one, but two brand new cars within the same week. My friend ends up getting Phoenix pregnant a few months into their relationship, which began soon after the cars being totaled. Now with huge debt seeing as he didn't ever see the point of gap insurance, even after the first car he totaled that fateful week, he had a child on the way. They could have played in safe and lived a little cramped in their small apartment they were barely able to afford as is, but instead decided to double their rent by moving into a beautiful two-story home with three bedrooms and two living areas among other unnecessary amenities. They ended up having to take out loans simply to afford a few weeks of groceries, and this was before the kid came. They continued to live a life way beyond their means going on multiple dates a week and continuing to drive new cars off the lot as well as buying all the new gaming consoles. Fast forward 2 years and they now have 2 kids and more debt than I can even imagine. Phoenix is now a stay at home mom, while he is a security guard at a very low end casino. My time to shine. I have been waiting a while for this one. Met my friend on the school bus freshman year of high school. He had just moved here, and we became friends very fast. He became my best friend in the world. I became very close with his family, and they seemed very fond of me. Every day we would hang out after school, and on the weekends, and once I started to drive, we would even blaze up, and have campfires before school started point fast forward 4 years. It is now my freshman year of college, and he was a year behind me, so he was a senior in high school. LSD was our favorite drug, and we were amazing about dosing, testing, and creating a positive environment to do it in. We dropped acid around 30 times without a problem point I came home from college during winter break for a few weeks, and we linked up to hang out like old times. We went to this party at a friend of ours, and decided to each take a tab and a half of LSD. On the way back from the party, my friend snapped into a trance and would look straight forward, not turning his head for anything. He would continue walking almost like a robot. A friend of mine who was with us kept trying to talk to him and to get him to snap out of it because it was obvious that he was having a bad trip, which he has never had before pointed his December in Ohio, so we were freezing. 
the friend that was with me turned around to go back to the party we were at in order to grab his sweatshirt 30 seconds after our friend left us he stopped dead in his tracks turned towards me and with the most rage i have ever seen in any body's face he said wrecking you faked my mom shocked and confused i laughed his mom was pretty attractive so our buddies and i would always bust his balls about how hot his mom is and it never bothered him i said what and he said yeah dude i know you faking did it you faked my mom there was pure age in his eyes and i thought he was going to kill me after a few minutes of banter our friend came back and he went back to his drone like state he wouldn't look around and continued to walk like a robot we got back to my friend's house and he curled up in the fetal position on the floor with all of his clothes on and no blanket and went to sleep point the next morning his mom picked us up from our friend's house which was extremely awkward i was staying at his house for the next three days as we had planned when we got to his house i asked him if he remembered what he had said the previous night to which he said yes i asked him if he truly believed those things and he said i know they are true there started the downward spiral for months after that when i would try to talk to him he would text me death threats and say that i ruined his life i should mention that i did not fuck his mom fast forward one year a friend of mine told me that he saw him try crack once at a party he started drinking and driving and abusing xanux point until last year he was driving at 4 a.m nobody knows if he was drunk or high but being a close friend of his it was assumed he was he veered into oncoming traffic flipped his car and hit a 74 year old man who then later died in the hospital he got out of his car and ran home the cops didn't show up there for two days but when they did they found him point he tweeted for months during the trial that they can't touch him and that he is above all other humans point he received a four-year prison sentence for involuntary manslaughter he is a skinny decently attractive boy and i have a feeling he will not come out of prison even a spitting resemblance of the kid i once knew my college ex damnia killed herself with alcohol a couple years ago we were living together broke up but continued to cohabit it due to unfortunate circumstances we eventually got over the initial post breakup anger and actually became good friends we lived as roommates for another six months or so until it began to negatively affect both of our personal lives and she informed me that she had found somewhere to live and was moving out to be with her new boyfriend cool best of luck to you genuinely she moves in with jude stops working and proceeds to start drinking all day every day for about a year in that year she basically killed her liver to the point that she went to check into detox and they rushed her to the hospital because her liver was flat out not working at all anymore several surgeries and a few months later she's stable but will likely never live a normal life ever again can't travel due to her medical issues can't ever touch alcohol ever again and will likely die very young so so sad because she was genuinely a good person who just had some demons i last spoke with her about six or so months ago and we sort of mutually agreed to cut contact i miss her from time to time still and hope she is doing okay a very talented and bright girl i used to support at a disabilities center took an overdose after breaking up with her girlfriend she survived but suffered massive brain damage. The worst thing was she is aware of what she did to herself and so lives in a perpetual state of devastation and rage, all whilst being left totally non-verbal and with extremely limited physical movement. One of my partner's friends decided to be a complete idiot and race with someone down a main road in a car he'd spent the last 10 years rebuilding. He lost control and crashed, killing his best friend instantly and losing most of the use of one of his legs. My partner was the first person on the scene on his way to work as a collision investigator as the crash happened about 100 meters from their main base. The driver got 7 years in prison and lost his best mate. He had so much going for him, brilliantly successful family business he would inherit, he'd finally completed his masterpiece of a car and he'd just lost half his body weight through dieting. One really silly decision. My partner sees a lot of cases like that in his job, but this one was hard, it being a friend. Not a friend but my ex. She's 17 and saying the guy that sold her for meth when she was like 14. 
she was a straight A student, never missed a day of school, was even taking college classes after normal school. I was helping her quit cigarettes and all the bad shit too. Then she lied to me about doing cocaine. We broke up a week or two after that, and after about a month she got caught with drugs at school. The teacher overheard her asking where she could buy meth. Got suspended for 10 days, had to go to court. I don't even know if she still goes to the college classes anymore. I don't talk to her. I avoid her at school, but last I heard she was trying to find a sugar daddy, wanted to be a suicide girl, and kept asking everyone to come over and get high. She was also bragging about the five dudes she was seeing and the poem offers she was getting, but we all think she was making that sheet up to piss me off. She also got an at home tattoo with an expired needle in the back of her neck, and it's so faked up, matches the giant AK-47 tattoo she has that is covering her faking forearm, goes nice with her newly drawn on eyebrows. She may just take after her biological meth cook of a father and end up in prison for 20 years with how she's going, or maybe she will join her stepdad in selling drugs. Oh yay, during the summer, before we started dating she also got drunk at a party and faked three strangers at once in the back of a pickup truck while shocked party goers watched, so I think that could be related to faking up your life too, since it gave her a pretty sheet reputation. Probably wouldn't have dated her if I had known about that beforehand too. This is way late, but here it goes. I grew up next to a kid we'll call Cory. Cory was a good kid. Decently smart. Could repair a PS3 or Xbox without a problem. Basically any electronic system. He was really good with it. We would hang out and catch crayfish in the creek down on the old railroad tracks, and when we got older, 19 and he was 17, we started drinking and warping it, nothing too crazy. But then his neighbor got involved and introduced Cory to meth. It completely took over him. Our neighbor never amounted to anything in life, multiple felonies, misdemeanors etc. I think he even hid in the attic of his house once from the cops anyway. I told Cory that this dude was nothing but trouble. Sheet the whole family was, but he didn't want to listen. So finally I separated myself from him, because I want nothing to do with it. Fast forward to years later I'm now 30, and he's 29 or 28. The best job he's had was working at Burger King. Has lived in halfway houses, missions, a tent in his dad's lawn, because he didn't even want him inside. Always begging for help on Facebook for whatever. I've tried to get him to give me a resume, because I could probably get him a job where I work. He says he will, but never does also I should mention that he has four kids now from two different moms. They all belong to the state because of his and their prior record and failure to be a contributing member to society. It pisses me off that I've tried to go out of my way to help this kid, and he wants nothing to do with it. Pointy. This is the constant begging I was taking about. HTTPS. Slash slash .com slash a slash vljrt. I had some friends in high school who were a bit older than me. So they are like 19 when this happened. And I had moved to a new state. But I was 17. They decided to drop acid with this guy. The guy made a pass on a girl in the group. Her boyfriend flipped out. The two guys wrestle a bit. Supposedly the guy claims he's going to go kill himself and this is a bit serious because it's winter and cliffs are within walking distance. All the guys dog pile on him to keep him from leaving. The guy has an asthma attack and dies. So what do the people on acid do? They put him in the trunk, drive out into the desert and dump his body in a shallow grave and put battery acid on his body. Then they bounced to Vegas of course they got caught, but most of them went to jail for a year or so for tampering with evidence slash desecration of a body type thing. The boyfriend went away for 5 years. I'm still friends with two of them, and they're doing alright. No clue about the boyfriend point I partied with these people a ton in high school, and I was really surprised. Everyone was always nurturing and made sure you were safe, but the boyfriend definitely had an anger problem. He was a huge dude and he was crazy about his girlfriend back then. And apparently the guy who died had a tendency to freak out on psychedelics. So no clue if they dogpiled due to trying to keep him safe or due to a fight, but they proved he died from asthma. My best friend growing up got into drugs and bad association in his 20s, so we drifted apart. The last time I saw him was 2007 point in 2009. 
he ended up murdering a family of three, just as a favor for some sleaze a bag friend of his who was in a custody dispute with his ex-girlfriend. The ex-girlfriend was the intended target, but she escaped by hiding in a closet. The rest of her family was murdered in cold blood. Point the cops immediately suspected the sleaze of bag friend, since the ex-girlfriend told the cops he was most likely behind the hit. The cops picked him up immediately to interrogate him. While this guy was in police custody, my friend, the murderer, called him on the phone to let him know the murder was complete, but now he thinks someone might be following him. Point the sleaze of bag friend was pissed and threatened my friend's family, so my friend, the murderer, immediately drove all the way to Florida from Chicago and slept in his car outside his family's house in order to protect them. He was arrested the following morning in his pajamas. He cooperated with the lead prosecutor and flipped on his now ex sleazer bag friend. They are both currently serving life in prison. Point this was my best friend who first introduced me to back quote Pokemon Red back in 1998. We used to ride bikes and play Super Smash Brothers 64. Point now he's more concerned with not getting a staph infection or dropping the soap. Half sister, not friend point she married a rich doctor, as was her goal in life, and things were great. She didn't have to work at all, and had a nice easy life. The guy, however, was a pretty big piece of crap and eventually they got divorced point she could have gotten a nice amount of money in the settlement and moved on, but she was a greedy as whole. She demanded way too much money to the point where the judge was completely against her. To make matters worse. Her ex basically stopped seeing patients for a while to drop his income almost to zero so he could get away with barely paying her anything. I'm not really sure why this worked, but probably due to her extreme greed and unsympathetic behavior, it did. She got practically nothing from the settlement point to make things even worse. Her ex, who, in part of the proceedings, said that he never wanted their three kids anyway and she pressured him into having children. One joint custody, I think just to spite her. Because he had to have access to the kids, she couldn't move away, like she had planned, and was forced to stay in the area point in the end, she got very little in terms of money or child support, and had basically no skills. I believe she went to nursing school for the sole purpose of finding a doctor to marry, and did manage to get a job, but got fired quickly point there's a reason why I don't really talk to my half-sisters. My best friend gave a boy who I was once friends with a second chance. They broke up due to differences, but they were drawn to each other like moths to a flame months later. I wasn't happy with it, as they both seemed toxic, but she wanted this relationship and I didn't want to overstep my boundaries. She was happy, her first real solid relationship after never having one before, and I didn't want to be the overprotective beach saying yeah fuck that guy. My gut is telling he's all types of wrong. So I just remained supportive of her, and not much to him, as many of our friends did. They had that dark, weird feeling about him, that no one could place point a month after dating again. He was caught for murder alongside his friend. He attempted to rid himself of evidence and to give himself an alibi, went on a faking date with her in the same car he had carried the murder weapons and evidence. He's currently in jail, and I believe he's attending his latest trial very soon. He killed his entire family, including his little brother, by shooting them and then burning their bodies in their cabin, leaving it to crumble to ashes. My best friend was devastated. This happened years ago, and it has come back to haunt her sometimes, but we all ensure we support her through her moments of grief and confusion and to never let her blame herself. Point my ex-friend is going to be locked away for a long time and must live with the fact that they tied up his kid brother, shot him, and then burned him. I can't quite move past that image in my head as that little boy made my ex-friend so happy in his darkest moments. I'm really hoping this gets noticed by someone, because this is a huge story in my otherwise uneventful, plain Jane life point my best friend in high school was super pretty and popular. She, unfortunately, had the worst luck when it came to boys. I think that set her up for a lot of failed relationships later on in her life, but that's beside the point. Anyway, when she graduated high school, she was accepted into one of the top ucks in the state of California. I remember being extremely jealous of her at the time, 
since I was accepted into a state school, and I remembered her having her whole life ahead of her, and how many wonderful opportunities she would have point she joined a sorority during her first year of college, and became super popular there as well. But it was more, like she became infamous. She ended up being a topic of discussion on one of those college gossip websites. There was a forum titled, why is best friend's first name last name such a sludged? Or something to that degree point she eventually became hardcore into drugs. It started off with weed, and ventured into Xanax and Arxy, and finally heroin. She was dating this guy at the time, and he was the one that got her into abusing heroin. But they were in love, and the only ones who understood each other. They made their money dealing to others. One night, they were high on heroin and some other drug, and he started freaking out. He threatened to shoot himself with his gun. She was too out of it to talk him down. So she watched him shoot his brains out point her parents pulled her out of school and put her into rehab. Supposedly, she could return at any time, which may be true due to the traumatic events. But instead she chose to stay at home, back in our hometown. She enrolled at our local junior college and even found a job as a waitress. I honestly thought this could be a great opportunity for her to have a fresh start. But then she relapsed and wound up with a DUI. And back into rehab she went. The second time she came out, she tried really hard to make amends and gain back the trust of those in her life. This included her parents and the rest of her family, and this somehow also included me. We tried to re-establish our friendship. I later learned she was just trying to use me to make herself look good in front of her parents she started a new job at our local Dave and Busters. Her coworkers there were extremely toxic and just the worst influence. There were many nights that she would work while high on cocaine that she got from her work friends. I stopped trying to help her at this point point a year has passed. One night, she got off a shift from work and hung out with a coworker. She ends up getting drunk and high on cocaine. She leaves the next day to go home and wounds up getting into a car accident on the freeway. She called her mother, who brought her a different car, so that she can continue home while her mom waits by the damaged car for a tow truck. She continues her drive down the freeway on her way home. An hour later, she runs two people over, killing one of them point up ahead on the freeway. A car had a flat tire. Inside the vehicle contained a driver and passenger. A tow truck managed to stop to help these guys out. The passenger was outside of the vehicle, along with the truck driver. They were both struck down. The tow truck driver sustained injuries to his leg. The passenger was not so lucky. It was said that his body was nearly cut in half point she admitted to having a cocktail of drugs in her system, cocaine, Adderall, marijuana, Xanax, and some other medication. But somehow a blood test was never administered the day of the accident. This part was key point she got out on bail and continued with her life for an entire year before her trial. For an entire year, no one was under the impression anything was going on in her life other than her family and the victims of the terrible accident. My other friends and I didn't know this had happened. It wasn't until her actual trial and sentencing that I saw it in the news. She was sentenced to 6 years and 8 months for vehicular manslaughter and gross negligence. Since her blood was never tested the day of the accident, it could not be proved that she was under the influence of all those drugs when she ran them over it's been a year now since her trial. I'm still shocked that this had happened because I was honestly so surprised at how much she had fallen. She had so many good things going for her, but she chose to squander it over, what, a few moments of ecstasy? I still run into her mom sometimes and it's so hard to look her in the eyes and ask her how things are. Sometimes I wish I had stepped in when I could to try to save her, but could she have been saved? Did she even want to be saved? Would I have even made a difference? If anyone wants, I can post news links that detailed her trial and the accident. My friend got himself put on the Setch Offender Registry for life. I want to stress that he is not a bidophile, child molester, or any other sort of pervert. What he was, was a blackout drinker. Because of his work situation, he was living with a friend in another state while his wife was back home. This last detail will become important in a bit point his friend had a teenage daughter with behavior problems. I don't know much of the details since I'm only relaying this second hand. But it suffices to say she had a crush on my friend. She sent letters to his wife saying they were having an affair, which was ridiculous. 
He said she reminded him of his little sister, who he was very protective of. He would sooner have had an affair with his friend's wife than someone he saw as a child point anyway. The way he told it, he was passed out on the couch. Someone starts kissing him, and he starts kissing back. There was some groping too. The next thing he knows, his friend is screaming at him, and he realizes the person he's kissing is the girl point now. Here's why you never talk to cops. While talking to the cops, he admitted that he missed his wife. So based on that, they got him for contact with a minor for sexual purposes or something like that point he has since sobered up, but he hasn't been on the internet, ever, because he'd have to tell everyone he talked to that he was on the such offender list. My friend loves attention and wanted to be cool. At least that's as far as I can tell what was happening. We were having one of the first parties he's been to, and he was drinking too much. It ended up being well over a fifth of whiskey, or maybe it was rum, to himself. He ended up blacking out and continued to drink throughout the night. I woke up the next morning, and I found him on the couch passed out. I thought he was just drunk, hungover, and sleeping it off. I went to work, and I got home about 7 hours later, and he was in the exact same position. I got to admit at first I thought it was funny how drunk he was, but after a moment I thought about how long he had been sleeping and the fact that he hadn't moved one inch and thought it might be a bit odd. So I went to wake him up, I did everything I could, I was currently enrolled in an EMT certification course, so I did know a good amount about the human body. After a few attempts of yelling at him, slapping him, and throwing water at him, I checked his vitals and I couldn't find a pulse. His eyes reacted to light, though point I freaked out and called his dad, who is a doctor. He told me to do basically the same things I had already done, but then also to take something very hard and push it into his sternum and watch for a reaction of any kind. Nothing happened. I can tell how concerned he was in his voice. He told me to call the paramedics, and he was on his way over. The paramedics came, at that time, because I had tried moving him so much he started vomiting, and was suffocating on his own vomit, the paramedics vacuumed out his mouth, took him to the hospital and pumped his stomach. He was in a coma for a few days, he had so much alcohol in his system, that his body shut down, so it wouldn't digest anymore. I believe his blood alcohol percentage was over 1%, or I do not remember the exact amount, though it was enough to put him in a coma. To this day he has liver problems, arthritis, a hard time drinking alcohol of any kind, and many other issues with his body. It faked him up really bad, and doctors basically told him recently, if he doesn't get his act together and start exercising way more and lose a lot of weight he will probably die within a few years TLDR but he drank too much and ended up in a coma with many health problems and a likely short end life. Same way I did, addiction point we both started using it about the same time in college, which is where we met. I actually introduced our original doc to him which I'll always feel damn guilty about. We lived together for about 2 years after college and both of us got much worse. We surrounded ourselves with others who were in the same throes of addiction, and cut ties with those who were doing well, or trying to get sober. Misery definitely loves company. Lost jobs, dropped out of school, cut ourselves off from family and good friends, all downhill. However, he decided to promote himself from a very addictive doc to an extremely addictive, however cheaper, doc that ended up tearing his life and his health, mental and physical, to absolute pieces. Those of you who have struggled with certain substances probably know what we started with and what he graduated to at this point. I've never seen someone decay so quickly. After I saw that happen at the end of those two years and tried desperately to convince him to come get help with me, I had enough and moved out, headed straight for a hab. We didn't keep in contact or have any interaction whatsoever for about four years following me leaving, and I have her to admit that didn't go out of my way at all to check on him. Not a peep, and no one I did talk to once I got out of rehab knew where he was or if he was still struggling point I got clean, slowly. There were plenty of ups and downs, mistakes and relapses, but eventually I got it right. As of right now today I have a little over 2 full years sober. I often wondered if he managed to get sober as well, or went to prison, or worse 4 years is a long time to hear absolutely nothing from or about a friend. Well as a matter of fact, 
he's sitting right next to me playing PlayStation, and also has about 2 years clean. Just shy of it point I came to Florida for an internship last year, and remembered that his parents lived here. So I was able to get in touch with them after some detective work, to see how he was, wherever he was. I found out he had been living with them and was sober, working, back in school, and had completed several recovery programs over the course of the time we had stopped talking. He was studying sociology with the goal of becoming an addiction specialist of some sort. Basically, the best possible outcome of the entire dilemma point rented a place together and now we've put our completely faked up lives of substance abuse behind us. It's an amazing thing to experience through all of these years and once again be sitting in the same house. Either one of us could have easily ended up like some of our other friends who struggled with addiction, dead or in prison. But somehow, we both went on our own journeys through recovery and made our commitments to sobriety without having any idea we were fighting the good fight simultaneously. Some might say it's dangerous to live together again, and I completely understand where they would be coming from. However in our case, we are extremely tough on each other as accountability sources. I don't think anyone else in my life right now can relate, give advice, or know when to be a little hard on me better. Having friends that have been through addiction struggles is essential for maintaining sobriety and continuing recovery, at least in my experience, so there, got one with a happy ending for you folks. My friend completely faked his life up and then completely unfaked it. Hooray. We never hung out or anything, more friends in passing, because she was a high school senior, and I was a guy who took a few years before college so there was an age gap. But she was in my mid-level math class. She didn't pay attention. She would do things like bring in a tub of ice cream and focus on that instead of the lecture, though she never was obnoxious and bothered other people around her. The thing is she was incredibly intelligent. Despite not paying attention she had the highest score in the class, would fly through exams, etc. Point as the year progressed I noticed her coming, hung over to class, other times looking like she's coming down from drug use. I didn't think too much of it, because many of us went through the phase of getting some freedom and going pretty hard. I tried to look out for her a bit, take her to get food from the cafeteria at times and such, but not get too involved point eventually the year ended and was parted ways. She was off to college and had been accepted into a prestigious program that she was super excited about. Eventually she faded away until one day a friend of mine that also knew her came up to me and asked if had heard about her. I was confused, but then he told me that she had overdosed, alone, in her dorm room at her college. I went to one more class after the news, but I couldn't concentrate. I went home and cried a bit after hearing that. Not only was she incredible intelligent, but so nice and caring. I mentioned in passing that I was doing a big presentation and she went off on her own and looked up when slash where it was and came to see me and show support point she's by far the stupidest intelligent person I've ever met. I'll never forget her. One of my best friends who was like the older brother I never had really faked up his life. We were both like to party from time to time but he was a drug dealer and he had zero facts about it. After catching a case that ended with him winning a decent settlement from the police office as he sued for excess of force, I thought he was out the game for good. I live in CA and him in so when I go back home to visit my parents we catch up, he calls me one day and tells me to meet up with him at a hotel to smoke. I thought it was so odd he was telling me to meet him there, when I arrive I can tell he's been through something traumatic. We smoke and he tells me how someone attempted to rob him at his crib the night before for money and drugs which ends with my friend shooting the guy in the back and him running out of the house to escape. My friend took his guns, money, and drugs and left the house immediately to the hotel, didn't report the shooting and none of his neighbors even called the cops. He has no idea if he killed the man and I haven't seen my friend since that day at the hotel on the 22nd of December 2016. The sad part was, when I left the hotel I knew I was never going to see him again after that day. We took a photo together, and he has never reached out to me since then, or returns any of my texts or calls. I have no idea if he's alive, or where he is at in life. Okay so long story time, so I've known this kid since freshman year. We both attended a private catholic high school in the suburbs together. 
while growing up he probably only smoked weed twice and rarely went to parties. We were both more of outsiders and stayed in our smaller friend group most of the time. I feel like he was always unsure of himself and what he was supposed to do, but I was excited for him when he was accepted into a pretty prestigious university in our city. After we graduated high school he started to drink more often with people who I could see were using him for his money, car, and house. He slowly but surely alienated everyone around him once he started getting closer to someone I'll call Steve. Steve has already been in jail and in trouble with the law multiple and was only 19. Steve convinced my friend to try all these drugs and start to sell drugs with him too. Now I understand completely that everyone only controls themselves and their own actions, but Steve definitely saw my friend as someone easily influenced. Once my friend started doing drugs heavily he dropped out of the university, quit his job, and turned to drug dealing as a full-time job while still using himself. Once everyone we hung out with realized what was happening we told his parents, which did nothing but enable him since they were older and couldn't really control him. Now let's skip forward to present time. My friend is only 22 and is spending life in jail for attempted murder and huge drug charges. Edit. Sorry for errors typing on mobile. Last year when I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, I moved in with my friend and his husband. They rented me their spare bedroom in their new house. They ended up using the money to fund their pill addiction. Adderall. It got so out of hand that the breadwinner ended up taking FMLA time off under the guise of back pain because they were too faked up on withdrawals to work. After about 3 months all of their credit cards were maximumed out they tried to extort money out of me. When it didn't work, they started a smear campaign against me to guilt me into paying. When that didn't work, they changed the locks on the house while I was at work and tried to hold my personal belongings. Since I live in Arizona and didn't have a written lease agreement, legally I was considered a guest and there was nothing the police could do. After accusing them publicly of stealing my belongings they finally let me pick up my sheet. A few months later their house was foreclosed on because they had no income. Turns out his employer saw right through the bullshit and didn't honor the FMLA leave. They ended up stealing a metric sheet ton of money from their closest friends and dealers right before disappearing. I have heard they can be found on Craigslist and dating apps like Grinder, Growler, and Scruff looking strung out as fag. However, nobody knows where they actually are. Old friend went to work at a youth summer camp over the summer. Ended up coming back married 3 months later. I don't know all the details, but he met a girl who was apparently on some kind of work visa from Europe, who he says was his soulmate. She was obviously in it for the green card, although neither of them actually knew how that works, because after the camp is over, she goes back to the east coast to wrap up stuff with her family and basically never comes back. She constantly emailed him, she told him she had no phone, with excuses of why she couldn't come back just yet, but she kept wanting him to sign up for paperwork, credit cards, phone plans, utilities etc. in both their names so that they would have a paper trail of being married. Two years later he finally accepts she isn't coming back and files for an annulment seeing as they had never even consummated. Wink wink nudge nudge. The marriage. I'd lost most all contact with him by this point, so I assume he was able to get it done. This was about 10 years ago. Cut to November 2017, and I get a text from my friend, who still sometimes talks to the guy. Turns out he is about to get married to some girl he met while on holiday in Vietnam. He brought her back to the US to get hitched, and he plans to live in the studio he built in his parents' backyard while working for Uber in his parents' spare car. As far as I know, he went from hello kind stranger to marry me, soulmate both times in about a three week period. My best friend was 16 when he got his girlfriend pregnant. He was arguably the most attractive high school aged guy in our entire county, was an A and B grade student, was very good at football, and was getting checked out by colleges as a sophomore. He was very personable slash charismatic, pretty much a all American boy with a great future ahead of him point. After he got his girlfriend pregnant he felt like his life was over. He lost his motivation, started hanging out with the wrong crowd, got involved with drugs, ruined his GPA, and never did anything with football. 
Now he works enough to fuel his drug addictions, has ruined relationships with much of his immediate family, he looks like a worn down version of himself, and left his long term girlfriend to raise their two kids by herself. He's just not him anymore. Point it's painful, because he was my best friend for all of childhood. It was always him and me against the world. I've never loved someone in a non romantic fashion the way I love, d. him and I hate seeing him with her away. Some people are ignorant to their vices, but not him. He's smart and he knows what he's done, he just doesn't have it in him, or doesn't want to do the things he needs to do, in order to be happy. He's always had these issues with depending on women to make him happy. If he's not in a relationship his life is seemingly over, and he mopes around for months at a time. The same patterns would occur. A girl would date him, get weirded out by how clingy and desperate he was, and dump him. He had been engaged three times, or lending with the women fleeing. Now to the part where he faked up his life. He met a girl on a vampire forum and immediately they huked up. He wasn't even interested in vampires or a vampire lifestyle, so your guess is as good as mine as to how that ended up happening. The woman was a real train wreck of a person and immediately latched onto my friend. She was about 5 years older, and had previously been married with a young children. She abandoned her kid citing that the man she married was abusive and continued to take her prescription pills. So what was the logic in leaving her child with him? Oh, his mom was better at caring for her than she was. Okay then. So friend and her get together and of course immediately she becomes the love of his life. They ended up putting a series of nearly pornographic trashy photos of themselves in lingerie all over Facebook for everyone to see during one of their love making sessions. He was also looking for a job at that point, and wondered why no one would hire him. HMM. After that, about two weeks into their relationship, she ended up moving in. He was living with his dad at the time, and wanted no part of that, since two months prior this friend's former fiancé had just moved out. Dad thought he was moving too quickly. This friend freaked out, had a mental episode and ultimately a huge physical fight with his father, which led to him being kicked out, with vampire girlfriend. At that point in time they moved into his grandmother's basement and a month later I was told that his new girlfriend was pregnant. At the time we were in our early 20s and due to the circumstances of their very short relationship I wasn't sure how to react to the news, so I made the mistake of assuming it was bad news and asked what they were going to do. His response? They had intentionally tried to get pregnant, and it was fabulous news. Oh. Okay, then. From that point on they expected every single person to bear the weight of the expenses for their kid. Most people avoided them, and they were left with a new baby to care for. Friend secured a job working behind the deli, and ended up there for about 10 years making just over minimum wage. His girlfriend refused to get a job due to multiple reasons citing various invisible pain conditions, which may or may not be true, though these days she is doing incredibly well physically. The grandma kicked them out when the baby was, was 3 months old, and they ended up getting government housing in a not so great area. They were so struck by poverty and delusion that their youngest ended up severely malnourished due to the mom refusing to feed her anything but breeze milk and watered down formula or an actual bottle of water. His girlfriend was delusional about having low milk supply and claimed she was a lactation consultant in earlier years. Child services were called, but ultimately dismissed it. The child is still extremely small, though thankfully healthy looking enough. A year later they end up having another kid. The kid was born with webbed toes, which they refused to get surgery on citing that it made him unique. They struggle for years and still rely on everyone around them for help and assistance, but obviously everyone is annoyed by their bad choices in life and pretty soon they have no one point now fast forward to years later. Over the years the girlfriend puts her needs first, puts him in high amounts of debt and legal battles due to unpaid loans, and always insists he keep her furnished in clothes. High tech gadgets, high end macup, etc. before even buying their kids clothes on necessities. Their kids are wearing clothes 2 to 3 sizes too small, he's wearing socks with holes big enough for his heel to fall through. She's perfectly comfortable. And then. She announces that she'd like to be in a poly relationship with him. He goes along with it, but ultimately nothing happens, and she just flat out admits that she doesn't want to be with him anymore, and that she has a boyfriend who will be moving in. 
Friend lets her boyfriend move in. Her new boyfriend has no job. Neither of them are contributing and are relying on friend's daily counter income. He just lets it all happen. The kids are now at an age where they are beginning to understand and are super confused about having two dads. Eventually they get a warning that they'll be evicted due to the extreme filth they are living in because during all of this, no one has cleaned either. There are cockroaches, filth smeared all over the walls, a smell of rotten food, everything you can imagine. And so on the verge of being kicked out, my friend finally seems to get his act together and forces the two out. He cleans up the apartment and is able to keep living there, except she takes custody of the kids and convinces them that they don't have to go to court over anything. Now she still calls the shots and any time that she doesn't want the kids, which is often, she has him drive two hours out of his way to pick up the kids and take them for days on end. He is fine with this because he loves his kids and if we are being honest, he's the best for them in this circumstance point now for the closer. Friend finds a new job that pays well. He gets a newer, cleaner apartment in a better part of town. He furnishes it for the kids, buys them all new things, and while he still refuses to try to get full custody of the kids, he does seem to have everything else in order. And then something just snapped in him. One day he started to address himself in a female's name eerily similar to his ex-girlfriend's name. Almost exact. He seems to forget who he really is and starts to dress in women's clothes that are left behind from the ex. He still takes good care of the kids, but they are now confused as to why they suddenly have two moms and why daddy isn't, well, daddy. Because he starts to show up at work dressed like this, he works in a factory setting, he gets warned multiple times, wearing wigs and long males are obviously hazardous, as well as skirts, and eventually loses his job. Because he loses his job he ends up going back to his daily job and is now barely able to afford his apartment. On top of everything else, because he is having to work extra hours, he can't take the kids as much and his ex ends up living in an RV with them because her boyfriend can't hold a job or keep them in an apartment. Now the kids are again getting checked in on by child services for multiple reasons. It's continually ongoing, but one can say that his bad choices and meeting this girl have seemingly faked up his life. I'm late to the party, but my friend is still making these bad decisions my buddy started this whole mess like many of the problems guys like him face. He was thinking with a blinking lizard. He used a dating site and met a few girls. One I particularly hated, cause she was so rude and nasty. He started dating loose term they did the nasty several times, while he lived under my care, lived with me for a few years. While she said she had her implant for birth control. About a month after they broke up. She was pregnant, and she screamed up and down it was his. I was sure it wasn't, but I didn't care for her, so I was just being a dick. So my friend with his gullible heart took her back. That was very short lived, after she gave him not one or two, but three different sexually transmitted diseases. Lord have mercy on him. Living with him, I got the full scoop of that fight. After he confronted her about it she screamed, and threw a fit hitting him, then me, then breaking my drywall in several spots. Well I was able to remove her from my home with less than the required amount of force. I left it at that as my friend asked I don't call the cops or report her. I left it at that point intermission of a few months while she came back on her full level of sheet from the last time. Wanting to get him to pay child support and everything under the sun sideways and then some. At this point he was with a different female I was good friends with at the time. She didn't even see him that day I made her leave. Something was still up though cause he was acting very weird the whole next day or so. As it turns out she tried to kill herself and blamed him left and right. This somehow someway lead to his next big fuck up that pretty much ruined his life, or at least made it a lot worse point somehow someway I never really tired to clear it up. He was able to get one of my close female friends into his room. Got her drunk. Did all sorts of things to her. I wasn't really around to see the previous part. I was at the house the next morning and found her crying in my room with the door locked. I do have a key lock on my door. She broke down what happened. I wasn't happy as a person and she want a mess. I took her home and told her to call me if she needed anything. Well, she didn't call me. She called her mom, dad, and the cops at this point it wasn't anything good for anyone. 
Lots of questions were asked by me, and lots of questions were asked by the police. Point well, my friend here is also a black male with no record and poor. She was a not so bad off, upper class white girl. Point they ruled in her favor. He also admitted to having sex with her, said she had sex with him before, so it wasn't rap point he moved out, and a few weeks later, after everything happened my understanding was he was put on probation and under house arrest, living at his baby mama's house point one call from her, and he's going to jail. That's the last I heard from him point it's been a while. I know this seems like the typical don't drop out of college story, and that's not what I'm trying to prove here at all. But, I had a very good friend who willingly dropped out of college her junior year, no actual reason other than the fact that she wasn't applying herself. Point college isn't for everyone, that's all fine and dandy when you have a backup plan or have a skill or interest you'd like to cultivate, but she didn't have any of that and no drive to make it happen. A high school diploma and, now, crippling debt from a degree she didn't even finish. At the time, we all tried to tell her it was a bad idea. We all knew the type of person she was and knew what would happen if she didn't have something productive to keep her moving point unfortunately, we were right. It's been about 6 or 7 years since she made that decision. In that time, she's managed to rack up 2 DUIs, there may be 3, had more jobs than I can count, addicted to cocaine, constantly drunk or high. Essie hasn't managed to live in the same place for more than 6 months, she's constantly moving around. I hate to say it, but she used to be such a pretty girl, but now you'd barely recognize her. She's always pale, always has bags under her eyes and she's thinner than a rail point we've honestly become pretty distant in our friendship because of her life choices. I hate to say it, but those bad choices all pretty much started with her dropping out. I have a friend who, since junior high school, always wanted to settle down and have a nice stable job with a big family. His own family background was a bit dysfunctional. He graduates high school with a great GPA, aircraft maintenance license, and enlists in the Navy to make his girlfriend happy. He comes back from basic training, co-signs for all her student loans, which she defaults on years later, and proposed to his then girlfriend, which all his friends said was a horrible idea since she cheated on him in high school. They get married in a small ceremony, most of his family didn't attend since they knew she was trouble and moved to Virginia. While he is deployed, she had an affair, a pregnancy, an abortion, spent all his money, and he discovered all of it when he came back. He divorced her, he re-enlisted in the Navy, ignoring our pleas to just stay at home and think it through, got sent to the West Coast, and got arrested for drunk and disorderly behavior, bar fight, and assault. He got dishonorably discharged. He has turned his life around recently in the past couple of years, remarried to a great girl, and has a baby, but the divorce and her student loans make his financial life difficult. Girl I knew from high school. She was very pretty and hilarious, but for whatever reasons had very little self-worth. Got married around 20, moved to Colorado, and lived as a ski bum for a decade, including all the drugs and alcohol that went along with her version of being a ski bum. Her husband made enough from his job and inheritance, trust fund, I do believe. She was somewhat promiscuous in high school, and she ended up sleeping with several of her husband's friends. Eventually they divorce, but she has zero work experience, credit history, etc, and is a raging alcoholic. Moves back home, meets a guy with a cocaine problem and they both become heavily addicted to coke. He dies in a shootout with police, she moves back into her parents house, again, aged 40 ish and now cleans homes for a living, off the books. Still a raging alcoholic, such a shame, because when she's sober, she's still fun to be around, though she has some odd personality traits now and always seems nervous. But she really screwed up her life with alcohol and some hard drugs. I've tried to help, but quickly realized her life is constant drama, and to care about her in any way is to be sucked into that drama. So blocked her from FB and my phone due to the all hours texts and calls that were nearly unintelligible due to her being sloshed. It's very a personal story, so I'll try to leave out most of the details, but she was a young woman with some mental health issues who was one semester away from graduating college with a double major in a foreign language and international business. 
Her boyfriend at the time was a heroin addict, and she apparently thought she could try heroin without becoming an addict. She did have a few less significant substance abuse problems, so that probably played a role in her thought process. Anyway, she decided to try heroin, so she could understand him better. She instantly became an addict, dropped out of college, and ended up homeless for a few months. She started to get her life back to together, and actually ended up being clean for an entire year. To everyone on the outside it looked like a poster child recovery story, but her mental health issues remained. Ultimately she wrote a suicide note and killed herself by injecting a massive amount of heroin in a parking lot across from a local air. She basically euthanized herself. She said she would never be happy and doing it this way meant she could die without suffering. She was in her early 20s and her death had profound impact on her friends and family. Apparently, she was really important to a lot of people. He was my best friend in middle school. He was the most popular guy and had a 4.0 always. All the girls liked him, especially when we got to high school. Sometime around sophomore year I had started dating someone and so we didn't hang out as much as we used to. He started going to parties and doing any and every drug. I think his biggest downfall was ecstasy. I remember him telling me about being at home at his parents just rollin' in his room master, baiting. Get to junior year, and he starts acting really weird, saying weird shit that push the boundaries of bizarreness. For example, today I took a pup, and looked inside the toilet and the pup tried to mad dog me, so I snatched it out of the toilet, and smeared it under my eyes as war paint to show him who's boss we all thought it was a joke, but with how often he said weird shit like that, everyone started to sway away from him. He was one of the first in our grade to start driving, and the first to get a DUI in the middle of the day driving past our old middle school. He lost his popularity and his grades were sheet. His parents tried their best to restrict him, but he rebelled and didn't give a fuck what they said. Senior year he was a fucking mess and he started hanging out with special needs kids. He started reading a book called A Purpose Driven Life and he took it to the extreme. I haven't talked to him in over 10 years now, I still dream about the good old days though. I have a good one for this, best friend in high school. We roomed together freshman year in college. One night we were out bowling, and her brother and some of his friends were there. They were a few years older, and one of the guys took a fancy to her. I hadn't interacted with him too much, but I knew he was bad news. Slept with half the school, into drugs and just an all around jackass she fell for him pretty quickly, and I tried to convince her to leave him, because he was a horrible influence. She was a good person, and he was just doing everything in his power to corrupt her. When they started sleeping together, I told her she really needed to use protection. She ignored my request, her aunts offered to purchase her birth control, and the many condoms I left on her bed. She told her family that she had stopped seeing him, which was a lie, because they hated him too. A few months later, no surprise, she was pregnant, dropped out of school after our freshman year, and moved back home. She broke up with him shortly before their daughter was born, but got back with him not too long after my disdain for him ultimately ended our friendship. We were friends on Facebook, so I could keep up with her life a little. They ended up getting married and have four kids now. Point well on I this year, I was a little drunk, and one of our mutual friends that I introduced her to was over at my house. We got to talking about her, and, because I was drunk, I sent her a message about how I missed her, and hadn't talked to her in ages, 4 to 5 years, not expecting to actually get together so soon, but we ended up having dinner the next week. That's when I found out how much this asshole really destroyed their life point I found out that he was arrested for drug dealing. I always wondered how they could afford their lifestyle with 4 kids and her not working, and I knew he was never able to hold a job. But he was arrested, and a few days later she had to turn herself in, while 8 months pregnant. She's on probation, and he is probably going to end up in jail. She'll be lucky if she doesn't end up in jail as well. All of their assets were seized, and they're living with his mom. Both of them, their 4 kids, one is a newborn, and their dog point she was always an intelligent person, and it just breaks my heart to see that this is what happened to her life, because of one person, that everyone warned her to stay away from. 
video game addiction point one that I graduated high school with in particular comes to mind. We all played video games back then. Half-Life, Goldeney, Starcraft, EverQuest, etc. He was a smart guy, driven, usually made better grades than me, I was lazy in high school. Took a job at a medical supply company, after graduating from high school and tending to work for a few months before starting college. Well, when it came time to start school, he tried to balance work, school and an ever increasing amount of time in front of the TV or computer playing games, and failed. Dropped out of school after one semester. Got an apartment with a couple of his cowhawkers, where they would mostly play games, when they weren't working. I went over a few times. It was depressing to watch. You really want to say, dude, is this really what you want to do, spent. Seven years working that same job stocking shelves and spent the rest of the time drinking and playing whatever the newest game was that month. He'd message me at like 12am asking if I was playing anything, and I'd be like, nope, studying. He'd type lol back in the aim days, when World of Warcraft came out, he was instantly drawn into the WoW universe. He'd stay up all night playing. Broke up with his girlfriend, because he was playing WoW literally every waking moment. Started being late to work, eventually lost his job, and lost his apartment. I'm guessing his cowhawkers asked him to leave when he couldn't pay rent. Moved back in with his parents and still, just, gaming. All the time. He'd just spend whole days sitting in front of WoW or some other video game. For three years, that was all he did point eventually. His parents had to shut off their internet and have an intervention to reach him. Obviously I don't know the full story of what happened, but after that he did start to pull it together got back into school at 29 and just recently graduated with a business degree. He's managed to stay clean from games his exact words, by the way, for the last 7 years. I can't imagine what an immense struggle that must be considering how ubiquitous they are now point so, while it's not a totally fuck up, and he did pull it together, all told he lost more than 10 years of his life. He's in his mid-thirties and just now in that first entry-level professional job. My former best friend, XBFF, met this guy on kick. They started a weird internet chat site dating thing, and eventually he told her he was married, and all she would ever be in the other woman. She kept the relationship going. She flew to see him a few times, and eventually, when she was picking her college to get her degree, she picked one in his city. Go figure. The guy figured out a way to stage my ex BFF meeting his wife and guiding his wife into being friends with her and eventually coercing the wife into asking ex BFF to be a third party in their marriage. This went on for 5 or so years. I go up to visit her and to see the city with her and after a horrendous trip which is too much to type in one comment, ex BFF dumps me. Fast forward about a year, and she calls me at midnight on Thanksgiving crying about how lonely she is, and how she hates her life there, and that her and her. I shudder as I type this following word, daddy are finished. I take her back, telling myself to prepare to be dumped again. She moves back to our home city, and as soon as she's back, she picks it back up with him, flying to see him every month or so, crying about how she misses him, blah blah blah. Dumps me again, and ghosts me, because I broke up with my boyfriend, and she disagrees with that life decision of mine. Also probably because her daye, typing it out once was gross enough, her psychotic cop married boyfriend manipulates her, and her opinions on everything all the time. He stalks where she is, he goes through her phone, he demands all of her passwords for every app that has one, he calls her vile names, and he constantly reminds her, that she's just his side piece. They have talked about how he hates his wife, but he won't get a divorce, because his life would be ruined oh no. Not your life. So of course, the right thing to do, is to ruin someone else's. Slash s, she has been to therapists and psychiatrists who have told her the same thing I have for years. You do not need to be with this man, and by being with him, you are only hurting yourself further. She's like a controlled, battered housewife, without the housewife part. She has told me before how she doesn't think she can love anyone else, and how no other man will be enough to satisfy her. Aha, uh -huh, sure, but hey, you'll never know, until you actually get rid of him, and eight other people, that do not fuck with your head. She always whines how she's such a bad person for ruining a marriage, but does she actually stop it? Does she actually feel bad? 
No. She doesn't feel one ounce of remorse because she's so weak-willed and selfish. As I stated earlier, she's been ghosting me for about three months now, and I'm done. I'm done trying to help her see her way out. She can keep going down this path, and she can keep drowning herself in this twisted, vile man's life. She's already ruined her life by not being able to tell him no point TLDR my ex-best friend faked up her life by falling in love with a married, manipulative man, keeps going back to him, and will not listen to anyone when they tell her to get rid of him. I had a roommate who had everything, was younger than me, and was always a go-getter. He would always be up for any challenge. When I bought a beat up car he helped me do body work and fix it up. Spending hours and days helping me. That is just the kind of person he was. Always was there as a friend. He worked his way from a delivery driver at Papa John's to a manager and he was only 19. He had one of the most beautiful girlfriends I have ever seen too. She was one of those good girls that don't cheat and stay with you. He got her pregnant and planned the world for his child. He had it all. I was 24 at the time and didn't have half as much potential as he had. But then he started taking Roxes. With his attitude, he always wanted to be the one who did the most. After his child was born, he went even further into his habit. He stole money from work and got caught got fired. He neglected his girl and now all of this is gone point everything. His woman left him and took the child. Last I heard he got in a motorcycle wreck and broke almost every bone in his body. I know tons of people who screwed up their life. But he was always the one that stays with me the most. To me he was the coolest guy in the world. Then he turned into the biggest pose in the world. It terrifies me honestly. I was always trying to help him. But anyone who knows someone with a Roxy addiction it gets old fast. He asked me for a ride once and then I found out it was to a drug lord's house. Had shotguns and everything. Guess what? He stole from that guy shortly after. So I was done after that. It pains me inside, but I had my own life issues to deal with at that age. Guy I was good friends with in middle school and part of high school had a hell of an up and down life, all of which he did to himself. After high school he meets a girl, they are both very happy. They get engaged and then soon after they decide to have a child. Fast forward 2 years and they are getting ready to get married when friend decides to cheat on his fiancé with a few girls over a month. Then gets caught buying booze for an underage girl with the intent to probably sleep with her. She was 16 I believe and he was 25. He gets arrested, gets fined and put in jail. His fiancé leaves him. After jail time he gets out. The fiancé won't let him see his kid until he gets himself a job and clean up his act. So friend goes and gets a job. Posts depressing sheet on Facebook blah 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 point friend meets new girl. Is very happy. They get together after a few weeks, and soon about 6 months later she is preg, not on purpose this time. Friend has a job, but then stops going to said job, making excuses to why he can't find another job after he isn't actually applying anywhere. Friend's previous girlfriend still won't let him see his kid. Friend is still depressed. Friend has new baby girl, talks about how he is going to be the best father to his kids, still won't get a job. Still posting about super depressing and super terrible sheet about his ex-girlfriend on Facebook. Friend isn't paying his fines because he doesn't have a job and won't get one. Ends up going to court. His current girlfriend leaves him because he was caught cheating on her with another girl. He then posts all his now ex-girlfriend's dirty laundry all over Facebook. Goes to court again and then gets arrested for not paying fines fast forward 18 months. Friend is out of prison. Friend decides to turn his life around and get a job. He works at KFC. Friend is finally working on turning his life around. Friend starts talking to a new girl and begins posting very similar sheet to what he did before. So I'm waiting for the fall back to where he was. My cousins is someone that we always knew probably won't do much with life, but we didn't think she would mess up this bad. So by the age of 16 she already had two abortions and still wasn't having safe sex. I once asked her if she used condoms and she looked at me like I kicked her dog. She dropped out of high school by 17 so she could party every day. At this point I was college and everyone was trying to convince her to get her jed and go to college. 
I even offered to let her stay with me for a week so she could see how fun college was and how she could party and get a degree point then she ended up pregnant and for some reason decided to keep it. Nobody but her knows who the real father is. After a few weeks of playing mom she disappeared to party. Showed up about 3 months later to play mom and then leave again point when she off partying she gets pregnant again by someone who again she won't name. Keeps this one too since being a mom is so easy. Being a mom is easy when you don't actually have to do it. She is now 21 with two kids and no dad to help with either I feel bad for her because she was always the scapegoat kid in her family and I think having kids is the only reason her mom started to treat her better. I still hope that she will get a life together but for right now I don't think that is happening. A buddy of mine was living in a two bedroom apartment with his mom, two little brothers and the mom's boyfriend. The mom was in a really abusive relationship. One day my friend heard his mom screaming for help and he ran into the bedroom with his pistol in hand. He aimed it at the boyfriend. The boyfriend in retrospect probably regrets that he said what are you going to do with that little man because he stopped breathing after the question was uttered. My friend went on the run for a short time but it was post 9 over 11, couldn't just hop on a plane and didn't have a car etc. etc. He eventually turned himself in and bail was set at $1 million. Judge sentenced him to 23 years in prison. Wold have gotten much less time had it been the first time he had shot this man, but it wasn't. He had shot him before for the same reason, but the gun jammed when he pulled the trigger the second time. The guy didn't press charges and kept staying in the same apartment. To say it was a tense atmosphere there doesn't do it justice. The judge wasn't so lenient under the circumstances. Although the guy hasn't pressed charges the first time, he still knew of the first shooting. In retrospect it was really only a matter of time with that violent relationship the mom was in and everyone being crammed together in that tiny apartment. Judge said it best that it would have never happened had the mom gotten rid of the scumbag at least after he was shot the first time. Not a friend, but my roommate in college. This story happened literally a couple months ago point the minute he entered college he met this girl and they clicked immediately. They started dating within the first week of college their freshman year. They spent all of their time together. By the end of the semester I would come in from a night of drinking or hanging out with my friends to see her sleeping in his bed every night. It got so crazy that I had to say something and tell him she can't be here every day. He listened, but they were still inseparable. She worked at the residence hall's front desk and he would sit outside the front desk and do his homework, so they weren't separated even at work. He didn't really have many friends at college and you could always tell there was something off about him. He didn't socialize much and he would get stressed or angry about stuff that wasn't that serious. Anyway, he was always trying to get a place off campus with his girlfriend but was never able to do it until recently. They had been together for a couple years and were now living together so one day I get a text from my friend, yo you'll never believe this, but was arrested for attempted murder. I didn't believe him at first because he was different but never seemed violent until he showed me a link to a news article. I still never found out what the motive was for it, but he grabbed a kitchen knife and stabbed her in the cheek, face and slit her wrists. The police said she was at great risk of dying from blood loss. The police said he muttered I tried to kill her when they searched him. It's so crazy because this was a kid that was head over heels for this girl when I knew them. He was arrested and is now waiting trial, but his life is definitely faked forever now. TLDR, rumored in college, fell in love with a girl days into college, then tried murdering her. Late to the party, but this kid was on the right path. Senior in a good college, several extra circulars, and generally a decent guy beloved by all. Q entrance of online girlfriend who lives across the country. Shortly after they start dating, he gets really drunk and sleeps with this hoe. Immediately cowled his girlfriend and tells her she forgives him. Point a few months later, he brings her to campus. But not just a visit, she stays for months. They are living in on-campus housing together, and she does not go to our college. She gets way too rowdy at a party and campus security discovers she was living there. She is removed from campus and not allowed back. He doesn't listen and stills brings her to campus for parties and other things. 
she is now living with his parents nearby point, so she has been here a few months and he, girlfriend and another friend are going to a party at a neighboring college two hours away. At the party they find the hoe he slept with, and hoe's sister. Other friend insists that he drive hoe and sister hoe back to campus, since they are very drunk. He agrees but girlfriend is very unhappy point driving back, girlfriend waits until everyone's phones are dead, grabs the wheel of the car, punches her in the face, and threatens to wreck the car if her boyfriend, who was driving, doesn't kick everyone else out of the car. So he leaves his friend, her and sister her on the side of the highway, at 2am, in minus 8 degree weather, drunk. Her somehow manages to get her phone turned on and calls the cops. Girlfriend is charged with assault and attempted manslaughter. He is charged as an accessory to attempted manslaughter and a few other things. He is expelled from college in April of his senior year. He moved to Cali with girlfriend and is now an alcoholic with a low-end job. I would like some opinions on this my friend. We'll call him Joe Point. He didn't entirely fuck his life up. However, he was having difficulties finding a job when he lived up in Tennessee, so I offered him a place to stay with me in Georgia and told him I could get him a job through a temp agency. He has no car, so I drive out of state to pick him up and bring him back. Point we head to the temp agency and we both are offered a job as a press helper at a floor mat company. The pay is pretty decent, especially compared to our previous jobs. We have the exact same shift and hours. We are there for say, two weeks and Joe gets fired for shitty performance on the job point he's been chilling at home ever since he got fired. One day I got off work and I walked in the living room of the house and he asked me, hey man, I bought us some concert tickets, these. Two concert tickets cost $350, which was all the money he had. To top it all off, neither of us really knew the group. Celtic woman for those interested, so Joe is hanging out with our military friend while I'm working one day. Our mutual military friend lives in Washington, but flew down to Georgia to see us and his family. Joe and military pal had decided to move in together. Joe begs me to purchase him a plane ticket to Washington. So I make a deal with him. Point I told him, if he gives me the title to his car, he recently bought a cheap 1993 Gia Tracker for $1,200 that I'll buy him a $400 next day plane ticket for Washington. He even throws in his PlayStation 4. He is wanting to move to Washington with no money, but he doesn't seem to care. Deal. I buy him the plane ticket. His plane is to depart at 3.55 the next day point I'm at work. It's 1pm and I send Joe a message. Hey man, you at the airport yet? Nah, long. Story short he changed his mind about going to Washington because he didn't want to be alone. Our military pal had to do some military work for 3 months and would be away from home and would be forced to leave Joe alone and because his daddy didn't want him to fly. Uh, not only is he now completely broke due to concert tickets, but he's now living with his dad and grandmother, no job, he has applied for Hoodie's fast food restaurant to make minimum wage and he has no car or playstation point I told him he has 2 months to pay me back $400 and he can have his stuff back. Otherwise, I sell his car opinions? Shoot. One of my best friends through high school lived with me for about 6 months when he hit rough times at home with his stepmom. He was an incredibly smart guy and made great grades. And then, didn't. He lost interest, got into small time drugs and dealing. Still one of the smartest people I knew, but just made bad decisions he blew a mutual friend's head off over an $800 drug deal gone wrong. Other guy said he got robbed, but long story short the cash was gone. My friend pulled a loaded gun, they wrestled over it, and it turned into a shoot or get shot situation. So he blew the other guy's brains out. He's still in jail. It gets to me point he was so book smart that I was envious. He could break out advanced math to make anything at all make sense. When you almost had something, but it just wasn't working out right, you could call him and he could tell you the answer in minutes. He just had a whole different perspective, like he saw everything in this life that none of us could see. He was the kind of guy that could learn something new, then find ways apply that new concept to everything else he already knew, and tied in. His brain was a web of knowledge and he retained everything. It was incredible. And all of that gone. Bang. Just like that. 
he and his wife adopted a kid, great, his wife quit her job, making twice what he did, not great or smart, to stay home with the kid, started money problems getting behind on car payments and mortgage, loses his truck, eventually they get divorced, and they lose their house too. So now he's paying child support, living in a sheety rent house, and then develops an alcohol problem. Gets three separate DUIs. The last totaled his car with his kid in the car with him. Goes to jail for a few weeks, lost his car, lost his license, somehow gets off with three years probation. Gets worse and worse, showing up late, drinking at work, becoming belligerent to other employees at a place where he had it made. Finally comes in drunk one day and sexually harasses a female co-worker and gets fired. Been unemployed for over a year now with no prospects in sight. Still driving illegally and probably drunk point also forgot this. During those years after the divorce he kept getting in relationships with girls he met over the internet in different states. And sending them what little money he had. Got scammed several times. Eventually married one. And was divorced like two months after the honeymoon. Alright late to this one point I knew someone who I was friends with since late elementary slash early middle school, but we had pretty much stopped talking by the end of high school because of what happened. I'll keep it fairly vague just for anonymity purposes, but anyone who knows the story and my name can connect the dots fairly easily point now this guy, unlike many of the stories here, wasn't the brightest. I'd peg him somewhere between completely average and absolutely average. He wasn't the brightest star in the school, most athletic or anything. Passed some classes, had to retake others, you get the idea I hope point most of this began in high school, probably about middle of sophomore year. He started smoking weed, drinking, all the normal hey I turned 16, and can drive and get out all the time on my own now. Type stuff. Unfortunately it began to take over his life, where he'd come to school high, show up to football games, band kids completely wasted and barely able to stand, let alone make coherent sentences. By the end of junior year he had total two different cars, barked at me, and tried to start a fight with me, while totally sheet faced point every year for band, we'd head down to another city in the state for performances. This kid brings a bottle of alcohol, vodka I think, and a gallon bag of pot brownies, to indulge in with a few of his closer friends. Side note, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm indulging in the herb I get thirsty as fuck. On the way home from this trip, our bus ended up breaking down on the side of the highway and we are stranded for hours. Maybe around the hour 3 mark or so, he passes out and his friend, also completely stoned out of their mind, just loses it. She screams, starts crying, and completely freaking out that he up, and decided to take a little nap. So an ambulance was called, he gets taken away to a hospital, and the bus company kicks it up a gear, to get us a new bus within the next hour, because apparently we are now dropping like flies after that little incident, things kind of calmed down until our graduation with a few occasions of him being drunk again but only at parties like the rest of us in or just leaving high school. I had already cut the majority of contact by this point, but was kept in the loop, just because we were in such close proximity point finally in the years after high school, we separated and went on our own paths. We'd see each other every once in a while and exchange pleasantries as acquaintances do, but not much else. He seemed okay, working a few retail jobs here and there but otherwise doesn't seem to have much motivation from the outside looking in point this all culminated in a newspaper report and facebook essentially going nuts sometime last year. Apparently over the years, since high school he had picked up a DUI, suspended license, maybe spent a few nights in a cell, never confirmed yet or disproven. Now coming to last year, in the wee hours of some odd bull morning he gets into a nasty crash, where someone else we had been in high school with passed away. They were riding in the car with him, when he ran a red light, and collided with another car. He was booked for DUI, and driving with a suspended license. The last I heard through another paper following up on the story, was that he was released from jail pending a court date. Since then I haven't heard anything, and as far as I know he's fallen off the earth never to be seen again point sure, there's much worse falls from other people in this thread. He wasn't a valedictorian, or going to some prestigious college, but would have likely had a comfortable life eventually. I've never hated the guy, but I've always felt sorry for him. 
I tried to be there for him, but saw where things were going, and the relationship was devolving down to toxicity, and I had to cut ties for my own sake. Part of me regrets not trying to be there more for him, but there's nothing I could have done. Point TLDR. Drugs and alcohol in high school, vehicular manslaughter charges, before we turn 24. Weed, glue, solvents, ecstasy, cocaine, steroids, Xanax he was my best friend. I tried to convince him that selling ecstasy, at age 15, was a bad idea. He soon became an established drug dealer then moved on to cocaine. A few years later he's the go-to person for almost anything. He starts working out and abusing steroids and I kind of drifted away from him after dropping him off at his mum's house in a pool of his own blood because he got beaten the sheet out of 5 years after that with no contact. My girlfriend of 6 years cheats on me with him. After a lot of drama my ex then runs off with him to Thailand out of the blue. She phoned me from Bangkok hospital. He'd beaten the sheet out of her and trashed the hotel room. Obviously I was concerned for her, so I booked her flight home as soon as possible. The day after she got home he turns up at her house with a big bag of coke and knife and kicks down her door, and is chasing her around the house. Cue another call from my ex. I phoned the police, and arrived on the scene, to see him being tackled by the police, screaming and shouting. He went to prison for just over a year got an update on him from a friend a few weeks ago. He got out, cheated with another one of our friend's girlfriends. He has two kids with her now, and also a nasty Xanix addiction. He was in hospital after an odd recently. Apparently he sells that sheet now point he had so much ahead of him. His parents are wonderful people, his dad world have had him running his family business with him. It's been a conflict of emotions watching it all go down. Part of me hates his guts, but another part of me wishes he didn't fat me over so much so we could at least talk. I'd always been there for him and could offer him support and advice, considering I battled a nasty benzo addiction myself. Point he could just be a cunt though. He's done some pretty cunty things. My neighbor Dove balls first into conspiracy theories. Now, that's not what ruined his life, and I've enjoyed the odd conspiracy here and there for the entertainment value. But it led him into a hole he couldn't dig his way out of point he wholesale bought into lizard people from outer space running world governments, the new world order, and just about everything on the periphery. The natural progression for him was to delve into homeopathy and spiritualism, think racky healing type stuff. Now, I'm not one to yuck someone else's yum so to speak, but he's spent thousands of dollars on what amounts to scams. From healing crystals to ionized silver solution to over the phone, guided astral projection point he also ran an at home business, and this started to interfere with his overhead. On top of that he'd rant and rave about this stuff to anyone who would listen, including customers. Eventually, his business had gotten screwed over by a parts distributor by the tune of 9 grand, and he needed to sue. Problem was that he would open just about every scam email sent to him, and ended up with crypto wall 2.0 for two months, without informing anyone. Everything he'd needed was encrypted and behind a three grand paywall. He lost his business, foreclosed his house, lost thousands in tools, lost his dog, and is now living in a small flat over a pub point he refuses to get a 925, but also won't sign a contract with local businesses for work and does everything under the table. The eyes is now after him, he's alienated all his family and friends who've helped him, and just hung himself out to dry point oh, and he's bought into another scam, that is a Chinese mail order bride website that claims to be an online dating service, and spends all his money on that and hookers. Alcoholic. Seemed like someone with a good heart, but was corrupted by the wrong crowd, and no ability to make his own decisions. I tried to help him by getting him into activities that didn't deal with drinking or activities that didn't have to deal with the bar. I tried to get him to step away from that lifestyle, that not everyone is his friend and to focus on himself. Eventually I was dismissed because I wasn't hip enough for him or I wasn't in that crowd and I was trying to change him too much. He was so wrapped in being cool and sociable and known by everyone that he became addicted. Addicted to the point that he had his first DUI and his license revoked. He was babied and still drove drunk without his license to parties slash bars. He knew he had a problem with drinking, but I don't think he knew how to start to get help. 
I didn't really find any resources to help him because I was shocked as well. After that he continued to drink and drive and ran someone over. He left the scene and then came back. Thank goodness the other person didn't die and is okay. Now the friend is rotting in jail for 3 counts. DUI within the same year, fleeing the scene and almost killing someone. It's sad that trying to live the party lifestyle and be cool eventually got him into jail. He wasn't the greatest friend, but hopefully this will open his eyes. I wish I cold helped him out more, but he dug his own grave. My buddy was the most popular guy in high school. Amazing athlete, great singer, funny, and the friendliest person around. Our entire town knew him and thought he was going to make it to the NFL someday. Point in 2013, he got himself in a bad situation at a motel in Massachusetts and ended up driving over a woman who was managing the motel he was staying at. To make matters worse, he drove away from the scene and dragged her under the truck for over 3 miles. Evidently, she died and it was a gruesome scene. He argues that he didn't know she was trapped under the vehicle and escaped the motel because he was in danger there is some controversy in the soft punishment he received because his family member is a high ranking official in Boston Police Department. After he served his short sentence in jail, some citizens of the town have seen him gallivanting and partying as if everything was normal point it's hard to swallow the fact that his punishment wasn't more severe. But it is also hard to believe that my friend intentionally took the life of the innocent woman point his life will never be normal. He got into a high level high school, got bullied and had anger issues that meant he'd often be in fights. Dropped out of school after 2 years, went to the lowest level of high school, stabbed someone about a year later, and spent some time in a youth prison. Got out, got some basic jobs, but also into the hardcore music scene, including the myriad of drugs that come with it. Managed to mostly kick that, got a job in a restaurant. A couple of years later he runs into a young girl, 15, at night, she ran away from home, he offered her a bed for the night, yes, very ify, he was in his 20s then, but he was very friendly when not angry, ended up stabbing her several dozen times. Last I heard he's still in prison point I was only really friends with him in high school, but I ended up meeting him a couple of times by chance. Especially since his restaurant job was near where I worked at the time, so I saw him before and after work once every couple of months. He really seemed to have turned his life around, he was on his way to his psychiatrist the last time I met him, a month or so before the murder. It was quite chilling to read the news reports that mentioned he met with his psych a month earlier and had mentioned that he was afraid he would hurt someone. I have this friend, we'll call him Ben Point Ben, and I met in college, freshman year, thick as thieves, still love him to death, and keep up with him. Point Ben dated this girl, Tiffany, starting in his late freshman year. They get married over the summer, no ceremony, no pregnancy involved, no warning, completely unforeseen by his buddies, and, as I learned the following year, he'd gotten married for tax reasons. This seemed out of character, as Ben wasn't dumb, and Tiffany was not attractive at all, and a bit of a narcissist and a beach point only then did his friends and I start to see how crazy Tiffany really was. She, unbeknownst to us, raised wolves, as a hobby. I learned a lot about raising wolves, according to her, you have to basically beat them every so often, or they might kill you. Dunno if that's true or not, but I have no idea why any own choose to raise animals for fun, that they had to beat every day or two point she apparently berated Ben frequently over mild things, some of which were completely beyond his control, to the point where the stress started to cause him heart problems. Ben went to a doc who advised that he cut some of the stress out of his life, or he might literally die. He's in his late teens by this point. So, Ben drops out of college come C program to work full time at his it job at Walmart. Things do not get better. Dude gets super depressed, but starts actually fighting back against Tiffany's emotional abuse. They've since separated, and are in the process of a divorce point unfortunately, he's been out of school for so long that he's gotten stuck in the sheety parts of adulthood to the point where he can't go back to get a higher education without either going community, he's mulling it over, or going in the debt hole. Best friend at the time. We grew up together. Went to high school together. Started at the same college together. 
Always hung out. He always had a passion for music. Never really had trouble with the ladies. He just never really dated much. He was always looking for someone really special. Understandable. Unfortunately, the special person he went for was a girl who already had a poor reputation. She would spend all her boyfriend's money and then blame them for not being able to support her. She would go out dancing, very sexually, with other men, and then get upset when her boyfriend would call her out on it. She broke up with her ex when she said she wanted to go dancing with some guys. It was a very 21 plus rave, minimal clothing, and he said no. We were all friends and knew of her behavior. In comes my best friend that hasn't met her before. He thinks she's amazing and unique and all kinds of special. We warned him that she's not faithful, possessive, and demanding. He ignored us. Slowly she started making up lies. She told my best friend that I was hitting on her and trying to sleep with her. She was really not my type and had a repulsive behavior that I would never want to be with. He took her side and cut ties with me. Later he cut ties with the rest of his friends as she pointed them out, one by one, saying they were hitting on her. Her father bought her a house at some point and convinced my friend to move in with her. She started complaining that he was always out and not with her. So he stopped going to out. Eventually, he stopped going to college because she wanted him home. After that, she made him quit working because work was taking up too much of their time together. She convinced him to stop playing instruments because they were too noisy. Eventually, he just fell the face of the planet and no one heard from him for months. One day he showed up at my house and asked to hang out. I said sure and invited him in. He said that his girlfriend was out shopping and he only had 30 minutes or so to talk before she got back and he had to be home before then. She doesn't know I'm out. I knew I had to be honest and I told him that she was really bad for him. She was controlling him and ruining his life. He didn't seem to think so. He was saving up to move to LA and get into music. It was his dream. His girlfriend wanted a nice car though, so that's where his savings went. He dropped like dollar sign 20k savings into a Mustang. I told him it's not healthy and I can't support it. One day he told her that he really wanted to move to LA and start a career and wanted her to join him. She told him that she was bored of him and that he could leave whenever he wanted. He moved with a friend to LA and is stuck working at multiple diners. He doesn't have any of his instruments anymore, dropped out of college, can't afford to visit or get back into college, burned all his savings, lost most of his friends. I've tried reaching out to him a couple times, but he can't afford a phone anymore, and he doesn't check his media accounts that often. Facebook, ECT. I got a hold of him on Facebook a year back or so. Says he's working almost 100 hours a week to just make rent. Says he wishes he stuck with college and earned a degree when he had the chance. He's stuck with a mountain of debt from the car and is barely getting by. Joining the army point I'm not saying joining the army is automatically a bad thing, but I don't think my buddy realized that his friends probably aren't going to be waiting when he gets back. He enlisted right out of high school and somehow thought all his friends would still be there when he got back. Thing is, we lived in a small town where career opportunities were next to nothing outside of hospital or factory work point so yeah, sure enough he gets back two years later and tries calling up everybody to get together again. Some of us, myself included, had already moved out of town and even without that, none of us really talked or hung out anymore after high school. So all of us answered with oh yeah, maybe when I'm back in town I guess, he ends up marrying this girl that he had met four months prior and having two kids with her and talking like she's the love of his life and how hard he's worked for the family he's got and all this stuff but you could tell that he was trying to put on a brave face and had no idea what he was doing with his life point I don't talk to the guy anymore. I actually blocked him when he asked for my phone number because I believe he really would be the kind of guy to look up where I live and come to my house uninvited. One of my closest friends had broken up with his crazy girlfriend and was moving out of their apartment. He was staying in my basement during the move until he found a new place. We got to talking one morning about how, while he was moving stuff out the night before his ex was trying to convince him to stay. 
She kept telling him how she would do anything to make him stay, even joked about how when things first started getting bad she had considered going off her birth control so she could get pregnant and then he would have to stay with her. I immediately think, that's not a red flag, that's a giant neon red sign. Hell, that's like the goddamn Vegas strip flashing at you. So I say, do not, under any circumstances, sleep with her. Her train has officially left for crazy town. Do not put your dick in crazy. We laugh it off and later that day he goes to move the last couple of boxes out of their apartment. The next morning, we get to talking over a cup of coffee. Turns out he went over to the apartment to move out the last of his stuff and she met him at the door in lingerie. Needless to say, he decided to hit that one last time. I recall sitting there, mouth agape, trying to wrap my head around his unbelievable stupidity. I asked, for fact's sake, why on earth would you put your dick into crazy? She warned you. She told you that she was going to try to get pregnant to make you stay. What possessed you to do this? His response was, I've put my dick into a lot of crazy over the years and it's always turned out okay. What's the big deal? A month later, a mutual friend, and I sat with him around a fire pit laughing hysterically while he drank himself into a stupor. She was pregnant. Fast forward about 5 years, he's not allowed to hang out with any of us anymore. She put a stop to that within the first 2 months. She threw out any baby gift that came from any of his friends that she didn't approve of. He's not allowed to be on Facebook unless it's a joint account. I'm still friends with his folks, they're happy to have another grandkid, but they always talk about how she doesn't let him or the child visit them alone very often. She controls every aspect of his life. Every time I see a picture of him or bump into him out in public, he looks miserable. In the last 5 years, he looks like he has aged at least 10. It's sad and really unfortunate. A lot of us miss him. Honestly, I think the only reason he hasn't killed himself out of depression is because he doesn't want to leave his daughter with her. Not quite a friend, a civil acquaintance from high school, I'd say point he was average intelligence I'd say, but made a few incredibly dumb decisions. One incident like freshman year was he tried snowboarding off the roof of his garage during a snowstorm, but the snow was not compacted enough, went right through it, and broke his leg. This was around the time the CKY tapes, the precursor for what became Jackass, were an underground phenomenon, so that may have contributed to the stunt. Anyways, we both end up going to the same state school, but never really socialized. If we saw each other it was a nod or a hey, what's up? And that was it point the guy gets wrapped up in what can be best described as a uncharted fraternity. All of the fun parts of frat life parties, women, giant house, etc., with none of the community service, actual Greek life stuff. The school was mixed in with a mid-sized city in the state, and the frat house was on the same main street as most of the campus. Well, this frat had a number of run-ins with the law, the most recent to this time was that a girl was wasted drunk and fell down the stairs in the back of the house and got badly injured. People there called 911. The people running the party and the front door are unaware of this and standard operating procedure for them when the cops show up was lock the doors, cover the windows and act like no one was there. Well, cops and ambulance show up, they get stonewalled when knocking at the door. Since they know someone inside is badly injured, they kick the door down and their attempts to help the girl are slowed by the chaos that's ensuing from a party being raided, frat guys trying to block them saying they can't just bust in, etc. Girl ends up with major semi-permanent injuries because care was delayed and attempts to sue the bejesus out of the guys living there. Since there is no official organization to the place, it makes it difficult. That wasn't the main event, just some background on the frat and a general idea of the shadiness of this place. Point well, another aging party is happening and a guy who has been suspended from the school multiple times. He was also captain of the college wrestling team I believe. For violence rolls up to the party with his friends. Now, I have zero knowledge of frats in other schools, but here, if guys show up without at least a 2 colon 1 ratio of women to men, you're not getting in. HS acquaintance is operating the door that night, he turns them away for ratio. Wrestling gentleman threatens him. Trash is talked. Wrestling guy comes back with a baseball bat and gets in his face. More trash is talked. 
until he is beaten near death with a bat. Wrestling guy gets expelled, arrested for attempted murder, the works. HS guy is in a medically induced coma for months. His skull was fully open to the air when the medics arrived, apparently point when he woke up. He had no recollection of the last year and is found to have almost zero short term memory point last I heard. He moved home and is pretty much unable to work for the rest of his life as the dude cannot put anything into long term memory without excessive steps this all went down about 15 plus years ago. Honestly, having a trust fund and not needing to work for a living. One dude I know just got out of 6 months in jail for his XDHDUI, who the hell knows, at this point. And, bonus, same dude just had, or soon will have, a hip replacement due to vascular necrosis. Translation, sitting on his is so much that part of his pelvis is literally withering away. Dude just turned 30 point other dude this applies to is super smart, well educated, and, last I heard, had traded in law tabs for shooting heroin on the streets of Austin. Hope he's okay. Hope they're both okay. But both have endlessly accommodating parents who've always stepped in and paid to fix whatever problems came along. X. Dude one totaled a car two weeks after his family bought it for him. Literally flipped it. Called me that night, from the scene, saying, Hey man, can you come get me? I'm an hour and a half away in the country, and I've got axes on me, so I don't wanna call the police. Again, he had that car for two weeks. Edit. That said, I have another friend with a trust fund who's used the opportunities not having to work for a living afforded him to do amazing things. So not knocking all trust fund babies, just, I guess, directionless trust fund babies. White skater kid. Small time weed dealer. No ambition to go to school or anything after high school. Gets kicked out of house. Moves to my apartment complex above me. So we chill every now and then. More loose friends than drug dealer. Like I said, small time point fast forward a couple years. He makes increasingly shady friends. Gets caught with Molly in the car. And gets two years. Gets out in three to six months because overcrowded. Now has record, but he found his calling being a mechanic. Good for him. Meets this toxic black girl who was ghetto as hell, and gets him to try heroin. One day my buddy is high as fuck, and on his motorcycle racing someone. The guy cuts my friend off or something like that, and my friend hits the pavement going like 120 point goes into coma for weeks. Wakes up but has brain damage. Moves in with parents out of state for half a year or so. Decides to move out to live alone, because he can't handle it. He ends up having an aneurysm or stroke, and died not long after I knew this kid before the fall. This is one of the saddest downward spirals I've seen in my life. We weren't super close, but the guy was always solid with me. He just had the worst judgment of friends. We used to always watch our sheet when he brought his shady friends around cause we'd be afraid they'd steal something. When I think of him, I think of the long-haired skater kid who was full of life that I first met. Mostly by always putting off getting his jed. Neither of us finished high school. He dropped out after 11th grade, and I was home shulled after 8th. I got my jed the same year I would have graduated, but he, being about the same age as me always had something come up. Whenever I'd ask him about it, he said he had to go back to the adult learning center for a pre-test and to work on some things, or he hadn't had a chance to get there. I always offered to help him out, give him a ride if he needed, work on things with him, but nothing panned out point we are both now in our early 30s, and while I've had pretty steady employment now for the last 8 years, and am now making about 40, 45k a year, he seems to have a different job every year, which is usually something like fast food or sales associate. Somewhere, or he's between jobs doing odd jobs like hauling used tires, or at one point selling pills. I won't hazard a guess at what he makes he's lived in the same small ish town all his life, I moved a couple of towns over, so we don't hang out nearly as much as we used to, but still stay in contact. He's never really gone far career wise, and I honestly believe the biggest thing holding him back is just his lack of having a jed. It never made much sense to me, since he always seemed to have a good work ethic, but never really tried to improve his chances. 
I had a childhood friend, we are both female, who always had great grades in school, was talented in music, really charming and funny and just a great girl all around. My older brother was a senior when we were freshmen in high school, and we had crushes on a few of his friends and loved hanging around them, but almost all of them were podheads. I managed to stay cool with them without going to that side, but my friend wanted so much to be accepted by them that she started smoking pot before school, cutting class to smoke, after school, all night, driving and smoking, just high all day every day point the guys all graduated and she kept on that habit, not that I believe it's actually addictive in the true sense of the word. She was just never ever not high on weed. Our friendship drifted, and she became friends only with people who lived the same life she did, so there was nobody to really talk sense into her. She ended up not going to college, not being able to hold down even the simplest of jobs, and just kind of lows it out all around. She got married, and has a couple of kids now, but whenever I run into her, we are friendly but she seems kind of brain dead, all that former sparkle and shine is gone, and she's just kind of, dull. She's even kind of monotone and just sounds lifeless I don't think pot is evil at all, but I think pot plus the wrong kind of personality can be very damaging. I started smoking in college, but it took a backseat to other things. I still do, but never before work or in any place where I could get in trouble. For her personality and for how young she started before having any real responsibilities besides showing up at high school and for how cool I think she thinks it made her look, it totally ruined her. She could have really been something. He dated and married a third wave feminist from college. It's pretty sad looking at a cowed man. Terrified to leave because his wife would get his kids. Only one of his three children are actually normal. The oldest girl acts like Wednesday Adams and the oldest son talks about his trust fund, peasants, and privilege this and privilege that. It's like I'm looking at a male Anita Sarkeesian who wears a better dress, yup he was raised gender neutral, so he likes nylon slash dresses, while talking about the evils of patriarchy core. His mom is a Jewish princess worth 64 million dollars and his trust fund is from those evil patriarchy core. The boy in a dress is now halfway through college. Has never held a job in his life, and he thinks he'll get hired acting and looking the way he does. He's unemployable short of working for the communist crossdressers of America party at this point. I don't think even Bioware would hire someone talking about the evils of the corporation. It would be like a butcher hiring a Peter activist, it won't happen for the kid and he's toothed in the head to realize his speech matters in the hiring process. His wife uses terms like simper times. Whenever anyone talks about current events I talked to him about how he doesn't seem happy and he wouldn't reply back in chat. It turns out he was afraid his wife was able to monitor his chats. Back at a reunion he said he faked up but he's staying to ensure he can at least give his one kid a chance at the type of life he had growing up. He said as soon as his youngest is out of the house, he's divorcing the cunt. My best friend from high school got an academic scholarship to attend a prestigious college on the other side of the country. First member of his family to ever attend college. Discovers Coke and Xenix his first year in the dorms. Fails the majority of his classes doesn't have a high enough GPA to remain an engineering major. Ends up transferring to a less prestigious party school where I went. Immediately buys roughly 1000 Xenix bars from a guy he meets at a pool with the intention of selling so he doesn't have to live completely off student loans. Ends up doing the majority of them, and blacks out regularly. Nearly burned his own place down several times from falling asleep with lit cigarettes. Realizes he can make more money selling coke. Two week later he gets robbed at his own place by two dudes dual wielding pistols. His roommate calls the cops. Cops find his entire stash. He goes to jail for a while. Has to drop of out school, returns home to his parents house to try and sort his sheet out. Gets introduced to heroin and crack. Starts doing both and slinging on the side. Gets caught selling to an undercover, spends some more time in jail. Hoping he ends the cycle soon. Brilliant guy, just too many demons I suppose. Ah, this is long. Sorry, girl and I were best friends around the time that I was 19, legal drinking age in my area, and when she was about 22, she'd been with her boyfriend for 5 years, living with 4-3, at the point we met, and immediately became friends. 
so she started taking me to the bars and stuff and her boyfriend was fine with it, trusted her, trusted me, all good, right? No point turns out she had met a guy at the bar one night and started huking up with him almost immediately behind her boyfriend's back and mine. I started drinking less because I had better things to do. So finally a couple weeks later she tells me she's been sleeping with this guy and that she has been using cocaine lately with this guy and his buddies. So my 20th birthday night we go out to the bar and her new friends show up. Now, if you wanna snort blow up your nose, be my guest, but I'm not keeping myself in an uncomfortable situation, so I left. She kept partying and doing coke and such with new guy, new guy's best friend and new guy's best friend's baby mama. Wow. So the next day at work my friend's mom calls me saying she's passed out unconscious, hit her head, and is now in the IQ. So we go, and we wait to find out what's going on. And finally the doctors confirm flesh eating virus, never was confirmed, but rumors and speculation around the city was that the cocaine was being cut with something that could cause this. I can't remember what it was as this was about 7 years ago. She spent about 3 months in hospital, multiple surgeries and skin grafts. A very long road of recovery point however. While she was in the hospital, her boyfriend found out absolutely everything. She'd been cheating for 8 months at this point, while living with him still. Her fat buddy found someone new and her fat buddy's best friend and baby mama came to visit in the hospital lots. Well, in a shocking twist, she's got feelings for the best friend. So in typical her manner, 2 months out of hospital she starts sleeping with him, behind baby mama's back. At 3 months out of the hospital, still recovering. She's pregnant with his kid, and at 3 months out of the hospital she was now stepmommy to his other two kids. It was about at this point I removed myself from her life. I found a guy I really liked, now Fian K, and I had seen how she worked point this girl had so much going for her before this all happened. She's now got 3 kids with him, and I haven't talked to her in years. Okay, long story sort of but here goes. Friend from elementary school, we'll call him Scott, starts doing drugs in junior high, what they now call middle school, and, of course, it started with just the weed. I smoked some too but it just didn't do much for me point fast forward a bit, and he moves on the lewd speed, I don't. We still remain friends, but he starts hanging with these other losers, both, funny enough, named Steve. Total scumbags. F time skip more to high school, we still hang out catch movies and whatnot, but he is hanging out more with the shit he steps, and I've started working after school, looking towards college, and have a steady girlfriend point every year, our family always took a vacation the same weekend. It was a three day weekend anyway and we would bookend it, by taking the day before, and after off too, so we would have five days to ski. My 11th grade year, just before the trip, I just had a bad feeling, that something was amiss but I just could not put my finger on it. We go on the trip, and while we are away, it hit me, I should call the house, and talk to the answering machine, I bet Scott is there, I did not say anything to the folks, but, we come home, and walk in the front door, boom. The house had been ransacked point at least that is what it appeared to be, but the reality was, that drawers had just been dumped out randomly and other drawers were specifically targeted. I had a collection of mint set, uncirculated, silver coins hidden in a drawer, gone. Cameras in a boy scout foot locker, gone. Other family items of value were also taken point I knew immediately that it was the three S's as I had taken to calling them point go to school the next day, say nothing to anyone about it, and, around lunch, Scott asks how our trip was, and I said good but nothing else point he asks me to pick up a package of cigarettes for him at lunch and hands me a handful of mint, uncirculated silver coins. I didn't even look at them, you don't have to, silver coins sound different than regular coins. I put them right into my left pocket where they would not mix with the others and said, sure, I get his smokes with my own money, give them to him, and say nothing else about it. Go home that night, and lay the coins out on the dining room table and say, it was the S's, folks tell the cops, cops arrested them all, found all the other stuff, and charged them point my folks felt bad for my friend and his family. We struck a deal, to not press charges against him only. 
In exchange, we went to a military academy for his senior year and then went into the navy for 6 years never saw or spoke to him or his family again. This will most likely get buried, but I'll share either way. My best friend was madly in love with this guy. She had been going out with him for about a year, she's 20 at the time, and was telling me how she really felt he was the one, and since she loves children, she really wanted to get pregnant by him. I told her to wait a couple more years and to feel him out better and that there was no rush. She said that there was no need, and that this guy loved her like no other guy has loved her before. She goes to the gynecologist, and they tell her she can't get pregnant. She's devastated but he's very supportive while she's going through this difficult time. Fast forward a year, she gets pregnant by him, and he breaks up with her. He completely shuts her out and tells her he wants nothing to do with the baby. He tells her that he doesn't want the new baby to get in the way of the relationship he has with his daughter, who he had with his ex. He also tells her the only reason he was telling her he did want a baby and the only reason he was coming inside of her was because he thought she couldn't get pregnant, but that he never actually wanted to have a child with her. She's 8 months pregnant, and he has completely shut her off. I'm there for her as much as I can be, but she's a complete wreck about it. Freshman year of college, I had this friend who lived in my dorm. He was a nice guy, and seemed super chill. He started selling marijuana for some extra cash and things went fine for a while, until his life changed forever. Heading to a transaction accompanied by another friend, he felt a little nervous that these costumers would cause some trouble. He and his friend decided to bring a gun just case worst decision ever. They pulled up to the costumers and stayed in the car. My friend was driving and his friend was in the passenger seat. Due to a disagreement with the price or something, my friend's friend drew his gun and somehow the costumers got possession of the gun and shot my friend's friend in the head. My friend then grabbed the gun back and sped off. Freaking out obviously, my friend, covered in the brain guts and blood of his friend, drove to the nearest hospital and dropped his friend off by the front door and sped away. He frantically drove home, showered, threw his bloody clothes in the nearest dumpster and threw the gun into the river. Now, this was a huge mistake, because he was now tampering with the evidence, but he couldn't think clearly in that moment. His friend died in the emergency room, and he was later arrested for possession and intent to distribute marijuana, and also felony murder of his friend, although that charge was later dropped after his attorney argued that he was not legally responsible for his friend's death. Thank goodness for him. He is now doing a 10 year sentence. You can read more about it here if you're interested. When I was getting my PhD, my roommate was a medical school student at the same university. She liked to party really hard. She went out 3 to 4 nights a week, drinking and doing coke. Now I did the occasional bump myself, but this was on occasion. She did it multiple times a week, sometimes even a little before exams. Somehow despite all the partying she still passed her classes. In her third year, one of her professors gets her and a couple other students to volunteer to take an MRI for a search he was doing. She takes it. He pulls her aside one day after class and shows her her scan. Her nasal septum is almost completely perforated, a big hole in the wall that divides your nostrils, which can happen from snorting cocaine too frequently. He tells her he knows what she's doing and that she needs to stop immediately or she's going to get kicked out. She stops doing it for all of two weeks and then she's back at it. The medical school had a strict no drugs policy, and they surprise people with a test if they suspect you're using drugs. She gets pulled aside for testing at the end of the semester, tests positive for coke, and gets kicked out of medical school 3 years of her life, and 100 g down the drain. Last I heard she was working as a clinical researcher for a company that runs clinical trials, so I guess she eventually got her sheet together. Oh boy. Story time, I've had this friend, since we were in 7th grade, he used to be slightly annoying, but he was a great liar slash storyteller, and I learned early on to take what he said with a grain of salt, because most of the stories are made up, but his parents were loaded did not find this out until much later we hung out quite frequently blowing up things with firecrackers, or lighting swords in fire, or killing birds with a BB gun or playing video games together. He was pretty good at games and always had coins on him, 
so we would go to the mall and play DDR with zero shame. Anyway enough backstory about my bro point we were potheads for quite a while until he made a few new friends. This escalated into pills which eventually turned into meth. One day he and some girls decide it's a good idea to rob a gas station. Another friend gave me a call and told me about this and I was just sad for him. Feeling like I lost a true friend. He was on house arrest but still smoked meth, eventually fled the state and was on the run for about a year, got caught and went to jail point last August he came back out and I suspect he is still doing hard drugs. His loaded parents enable him by giving him all the funds he could want to fuel his addiction and it's just pretty damn sad to see a friend you grow up with to go down that road and I wish there was something that I could have done back then to sway him to a better path. He was my best friend for a long time and incredibly bright, but lived in a rather authoritarian house. Dad was like 15 to 20 years older than his mom and his mom was somewhat emotionally unavailable. My friend had a disability that I'm air quoting because it never held him back from doing what he wanted to do. Just gave him a huge chip on his shoulder. He was born without a left thumb and his pinkies were more nubs than anything. But again it never stopped him from sports or any extracurricular activities. From senior year of high school he started hanging with the baseball guys more since he was on the team and they liked to party. Well my friends and I had just started going to raves because we loved the atmosphere, music and talking to girls, haha, <laughs> but we were sober PPL, mostly. Well we eventually ran into my buddy there and he started coming with us since the baseball crew weren't about it. Cue the spiral. He started drinking heavily then moved up to pills. Molly didn't exist back then. Ecstasy was usually cut with caffeine or meth those days. And it was up to you to know where your connect sourced his pills. So he started by taking a pill or two then would ramp up after a while. Well a couple years of this later. And he was keistering and snorting pills. Then moved on to coke. And you get the picture. A couple years later. And we have all left the scene but not him. He was doing blow, drinking a lot and I'm sure he was still taking pills. So a few years later, maybe four, my friends and I are at the local park playing soccer, as we did multiple times a week and here he comes. He knew my schedule fairly well. He dropped his RX-8 around a pole while driving drunk, and somehow fled the scene I think. What was left of his hands was a mangled mess, and he was avoiding going home. I told him he had to go to the hospital or risk losing what mobility he has left in his hands. That was really the last time I was around in point 10 years later, and he seems to have straightened up his act. He met a girl and she pulled him back from the brink. I talked to him very occasionally, and he seems to be doing okay, but you can tell he's dulled his edge so to speak. Thanks to years of hard use he'll never fully be recovered from it. I'm just glad he's not dead. Background. He had to drop out of college halfway through his first semester because he knocked up his girlfriend. They moved in together and he was sole provider living paycheck to paycheck. The mistake. He needed to go to the doctor slash dentist when he was 19. I can't remember which. At the end of the session, he asked the lady at the counter the cost. She said that she would file a claim with his insurance but that there was no cost at that time. He took that to mean he didn't have to pay at all. I should mention that he's the type that is never wrong. He gets a bill. I don't know the amount, but it's not anything to write home about. He's so upset that he refuses to pay the bill at all on principle. Fallout. Fianke leaves him after a while and he's a single dad that moved back in with his parents at 20 with his daughter. He continues to live paycheck to paycheck with his parents. His credit is screwed. He can't even qualify for the riskier credit cards. This dude trashed his credit and waited for the charge to eventually fall off after being in collections for however long it takes. He continues to struggle because he refuses to pay that bill on principle. Turn around. I haven't really spoken to him in about 3 years due to life causing us to drift. I did my annual lodge into FB and see that he now posts a lot about financial security and has finally improved his credit. He apparently did get credit and then ruined it again by running up cards like crazy. But according to those posts, his latest credit score is over 800. Not bad for a guy that couldn't get a $500 limit card a decade ago point. If those posts are true then I'm really proud of that dude. 
friend in high school was adopted, along with his sister, by a wealthy intelligent family, dad ran a tech company, non-adopted daughter went to Yale at 16, etc. Graduates high school. Joins the army. NBD. Works for a lot of people. During basic training. Decides to go a wall. Absent without leave. Akagon when you're not allowed to be, to go to Mardi Gras. Gets arrested. Spends some time in jail, other than honorable discharge. Gets into drugs and waits tables. A little faked up but fairly functional. Gets into heavier drugs. Has a couple of kids. Fast forward years later, and he's living in section 8 housing and stealing things. Gets arrested for trying to steal a motorcycle, and kicking the chihuahua of the bike's owner faked up. More faked up was, when he was out on bail awaiting the trial, he sleeps with his girlfriend's daughter. The 13 year old kind of daughter. At least 10 times. Girlfriend finds out. Boom. 10 felony such offender charges now added to the felony B. Last I heard he's in prison and everybody knows what he's in for. And he routinely calls his mom crying from prison. Rich athletic kid to such offender prison repeat in record time. Back in the 90s I had a friend who graduated from a prestigious art institute and was working a pretty decent job in an advertising agency doing designs for local events like sports tournaments sponsored by major corporations, t-shirt designs for festivals and even doing designs for McDonald's new deluxe sandwiches. He was on the fast track to being pretty successful at a time where all of our other friends were just barely getting by. He and I once formed a band and actually lived together a few times over the years I knew him, when we both needed roommates. We stopped being in regular contact after the last time we lived together, but we still had mutual friends, and would often run into each other at parties, bars, and clubs. It's also around this time, that he got involved with heroin. I'm not exactly sure how he got into the scene, our group could certainly be labeled podheads and we dropped the occasional hit of acid and did shrooms when we could find them but it never got any harder than the typical hippie drugs. I heard he was uking up with a girl who turned him on to smack, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway we drifted apart and I left town and joined the army. I came home on leave and met up with a group of mutual friends and we met up at our favorite bar. And my old buddy heard I was in town and came over. Man, he was strung out and looked completely different. When I last hung out with him, he was still working as a graphic designer and lived in a high-rise apartment downtown. And when he came up to me he informed me, in a slurred voice, that he was currently working as a doorman checking IDs at a punk dive bar we used to play at when we were in a band. He literally said yeah, I'm really coming up now. Holy shit dude, if that's coming up in the world I can't imagine how low you faking sunk while I was gone. Friend slash business partners installing carpet slash linoleum. Got a sweet deal with property management company where we could pick any apartment from any of their properties to live. I picked a high rise apt on 10th floor, had to be put on waiting list and got a really nice place at one of their other properties in the meantime point dumber's partner didn't take the deal. Because he was afraid that, if he lived in too nice a place, his fiancé slash future wife would be hanging at the bars, meeting rich guys while he's working. I know. Anyone reading this is thinking the same thing. Why get married, if she is so quickly willing to drop you for someone better? And that doesn't even touch the surface as to how toxic their relationship was around same time. He does a small installation for a celebrity, and steals a nice ring and some other jewelry from celebrity. He offers the ring to his girl and proposes. They drive to Vegas and get married. So he declines our deal which means we are no longer partners. The police contact me and one year later he's divorced and asking me if he can stay one night at my place or at least use my shower. Shortly after that he is in jail awaiting trial on the stolen jewelry. I don't know what happened but years later I saw him outside of a library looking broken homeless. I didn't bother going up to him. I spent weekends at my grandparents house, and she was what I thought of as a weekend friend. She was bright, funny, just a little wild, and incredibly beautiful. Men paid her a lot of attention, even as a little kid. Her parents were alcoholics so visiting her house was always a bit of a horror show. It smelled awful, there was filth everywhere, and her siblings ran absolutely wild. I think she had three or four, and they were all a year or two apart. 
they always had dirty faces. My friend took care of them as best she could, but she wasn't equipped to be their mother despite all of it. My friend had the best grades in her class, year after year. I said she was bright, but that doesn't really do her justice. She had plans back then. She wanted to be a teacher, or a lawyer, or a politician. She wanted to do something big with her life. She talked about helping people. Changing things. Not being like her parents then she started dating the town drug dealer when she was 14 or so. It was a very very small town and he wasn't a dealer on purpose as much as he was always holding and didn't mind selling a little here and there to his friends. We all thought he was a nice enough guy until he started beating on her. She acted like she hated it but she always went back and she was always eager to show us her newest bruises. I think her dad beat her mom and this was her twisted idea of love. She started smoking a lot of weed and drinking all of the time. I saw her less and less we stayed friends until some time in high school. I don't remember what happened or why we stopped hanging out. Just time passing, I suppose. I heard from a mutual friend a couple of years ago that she married some guy and spit out a bunch of kids. Our friend said it was the saddest thing she'd ever seen. They're always drunk and their kids always have dirty faces 30 years. That's what it took her to go from a smart hopeful child to a clone of her mother. I had a friend in high school that was a generally good kid. We hung out all the time, smoked and drank in amounts typical of HSH kids. He was a year older than me, but a really good friend. He graduates, can't afford college at the moment so gets a job at Subway. We still hang out all the time, playing guitar and video games and whatnot, smoking out of his bedroom window good times were had, the next year I go to college in the next town over. I still see him fairly often, but it seems like every time I see him, he is either drunk, or working towards it. Whatever, we were all in college, so we all drank a ton. But we also went to our jobs and classes sober, whereas he would slam a quarter of a bottle of vodka right before work, saying that the job isn't worth doing sober it's around this time we all start feeling concerned for our friend, just wanting him to be the punk rock lead singer slash guitar player we all knew, was still somewhere inside of him. We try to talk to him, but he just gets belligerent, and doesn't want to talk about it point he stopped brushing his teeth. Stop taking showers, and just generally don't take care of himself. This is when we get really worried, and call his parents, whom he still lived with at 25. We stage a full on intervention, which he doesn't want any part of, of course. He ignores us, and continues on his way, drunk as hell the whole time. We then decide we can't take care of him anymore and his violent drunken outbursts. So we stop calling him to come hang out point then one day I get a call from another of my friends. He says that a, that's what I'll call him, has died in the hospital. I'm blown away. At this point, I had moved out of state for a job after college, hadn't seen him in a couple years. Turns out he started hanging out with a new crowd, and one guy took him to go rob a liquor store, with A as the lookout. They get caught, end up in jail then gets so depressed and sick in jail that they transfer him to a hospital to try to save his life. He was in the hospital for about a month when his liver finally gave out points so this is what I have to say. Fuck you, alcohol, you faking beach. You destroyed my best friend, slowly over a decade. By the end half of his teeth had fallen out, he was constantly sick, and he was wrought with depression point I feel terrible, maybe I could have helped him, maybe I could have told him to slow his roll earlier, but I also realize it wouldn't have mattered. He simply gave up point I faking miss you, a you will always be the lead singer to me. I knew this guy and in high school. He was a year older than I was. We weren't close friends, but we played sports together since the third grade. So we were friendly with one another. Dude was so smart, it was insane 4.0 without even trying, and that's not an exaggeration point I was smarter than most of the kids in my class, but he made me look like I ate Play-Doh. He picked up things so fast, it was almost unbelievable. I remember having shop with him, and he was producing these detailed drawings like a faking architect on the first try. The teacher for real framed one of his drawings like a work of art. He'd help me with math and somehow know it better than teacher, even though he literally just learned it. This was all while he'd take puffs from a one-hitter before class. 
It was an canny point first semester in his freshman year of college. He knocked up his girlfriend, dropped out to get a job, and never went back. They had another kid shortly after, and apparently they have four now. A friend of mine knows his brother. I guess they live out in the middle of nowhere, and he works at a greenhouse or something. He doesn't own it, he just prunes trees, or whatever. If that's what he wants, more power to him. It's just kinda crazy to think about a guy who could have probably skipped high school altogether spreading mulch now. He wasn't like Rain Man or anything either. Just a regular dude, who happened to be a genius. She went on vacation in another country with her husband and teen kids. They, as a family, met a guy that worked at the resort and became friendly with him. She began texting with him. She ends up going back to vacation again, this time with a single friend of hers, and has an affair. She decides she loves this guy, who is already married to another woman in our home country, that he met in her vacation, but she has cut all ties and won't sponsor him to move to our country. He is obviously looking for a green card entry and tells her husband and asks for a quick divorce so she can sponsor her boyfriend into our country. Point two years later, she's divorced her husband of 20 plus years. He has custody of their kids because they don't want to live with her. She pays child support on a crappy job and rents a room in someone else's house. She doesn't see her kids. She signed off on a separation agreement without talking to a lawyer and basically gave up her rights to all the dollar signs she was entitled to. So she can't financially qualify to sponsor boyfriend to move to our country point she's lost most of her friends. I'm still in some contact with her, but she is completely delusional. She's sure that this new boyfriend is the best thing ever, even though anyone with any kind of sense can see he's a faking scam artist point, and she still tells me how she loves her ex-husband, but she needed to get divorced. Because her new boyfriend is so wonderful, and he's still living in another country, so she flies back and forth to see him point smh. Wife's friend was unhappily married with one kid. Started an affair with another married man 20 plus years older. Lots of red flags including him letting his wife call and harass her, and him having no money and two kids who hate him leaves husband and moves in with married man. She pays for everything and turns over her life savings for his business venture point does not get a separation agreement and when she decides to finally hire a lawyer, hires one recommended by her boyfriend. In the interim, her family basically disowns her for taking up with this guy, gets pregnant, decides to keep the baby as a symbol of their love. Guy spends less time with her as he hates her existing kid. In the interim, she finds evidence the boyfriend is cheating and that he has legal issues related to securities fraud into countries. Has baby, boyfriend doesn't show up. Relationship ends with abuse, stalking and online abuse. Baby turns out to be severely autistic. Divorce from first husband comes through. She gets half of the family house and is penalized for turning over other assets to her ex-boyfriend, who has since vanished with the money and is wanted by the police. Now lives in semi hiding in a sheety apartment either working or looking after her first child and her severely disabled child. This story is condensed a lot, but I do not think she could have consciously made it worse if she tried. My best friend from grade school point had a baby at 15. Got her life together and grew up eventually. Had two more at 21 and 22, against her will, because her boyfriend sabotaged the BC, she's never wanted children, and did not have role models so can't parent well, but does her best and loves her kids, breaks up w him cause has abusive, and gets her own home w the kids, and is doing good. Falls into drugs, and has a mental breakdown, CSS took the kids temporarily, while she was in the hospital point, when she got out she got back w her ex and now her kids still haven't been returned, 6 months later, because her social worker doesn't trust the guy, and to be honest has maniac and dangerous right now, I'm glad they're gone, because he needs serious help. But I've helped the social worker and told her she needs to get out so like any victim of domestic abuse she blames me and has cut me off. I miss my best friend and my nieces and nephew. I helped raise and birth those babies, but it's not completely. She still has a chance point at it 5 months after original comment. She left the man child, had the babies back and is trying to sort sheet out. Decided she doesn't need a boyfriend because they try to control her and is holding her own. 
I have my friend back. Fell in love in high school with someone from their class, and after fighting with her mom, ending up on her boyfriend's doorstep with nothing but a trash bag of clothes and a pillow fast forward several years. Nothing changes. Still with his parents, and now with a kid on the way. Flash forward several more years. Now moving from the south of the U.S. to the very northern end of the U.S. near Canada. Boyfriend got a new job there. Girlfriend and kid in tow she takes a break. For a while. Comes back and boom second kid on the way in a now defunct relationship with essentially two roommates. All she does now is play video games. And babysit her kids and mentally handicapped brother of her ex-boyfriend. Meets someone online who shows no signs of being serious, but keeps her on some weird emotional abuse leash that keeps her coming back despite her admitting she's nothing more than entertainment for him. She makes friends, and gets in touch with old friends who help her out with various troubles she runs into, much to the displeasure of her internet boyfriend. Eventually he gets her to cut all ties to her old RL friends she does, and is now lonely with no one to talk to during the day until RLX comes home to berate her, and her internet boyfriend comes home, to abuse her more points it consider, that pretty faked up, but it's W slashy. Great football player and good friend born into the wrong family. Parents were alcoholics, they divorced and one drank themselves to death. Heavy smokers and just damaged goods. Kids started smoking before their 9th or 10th birthday and drinking at around the same time. His sister did well in school, but quickly became an alcoholic, just like her brother. He was loyal to his friends and football team, one for all, all for one attitude. Just a guy you could count on on the pitch. Saw him one last time, before leaving the country, and, just like always, I tried my best to convince him that drinking, drugs and smoking, would destroy his life, and that he still, had a chance at becoming something, if he quit doing bullshit. He definitely had talent point lost contact, and returned a few years later, to find out he had murdered somebody in a drunken stupor at beer festival. No idea what came of his sister he's one big reason I don't believe in a benevolent, higher power, if any such thing exists. Just good kids born into a really sheety family. His sponsor said my family had a good influence on him, and asked if there was any possibility we could adopt him and his sister. Sadly, my parents wouldn't have been able to support that many kids life isn't fair, and he got the faking brunt of it point I need a drink. My ex-friend. She got pregnant in high school. No big deal. She graduated on time, started college, worked part time. Then she got into party mode. Quit her job and school. Spent her weekends either drunk or high from medication. Decides she doesn't want to work, but hey kids cost money. Works at a strip club to buy her kid food. Decides she doesn't want to work. Moves into her aunt's house, her parents are dead, and it's their fault for how she turned out, and starts hanging out in the town army base. Finds a rich officer, has unprotected sech. Wow. Pregnant again. Dumped him to go, have sex with another soldier, while demanding child support. Demands her and the soldier get married after 3 months, but don't tell baby daddy or he won't send any more money. Welcome to the army wife life. Still lives in her aunt's house, treats her family like crap, lives off hubby's income and baby daddy's child support, which goes to shopping at the Disney store. No friends. Enter me. Forms friendship. Introduces her to boyfriend and group of friends. She fits in, and for a while she was a regular member of our family. Then she begins picking at members in the group. Yells at them, gets mad at them, pits us against each other, accuses my boyfriend of sexual assault, nearly breaks him and I up. Group finds out it's all a lie, we start comparing notes, we realize she needs to go, everyone apologizes to each other, but we cut off contact with her last I heard, she was out having affairs with multiple guys, while her husband was deployed. Her baby daddy found out who she truly was, and hasn't contacted her. More than half her family doesn't talk to her. Her in-laws are fading away, and I'm pretty sure I heard her husband was threatening divorce. My best friend from 6th grade, until I graduated high school as serving time for running a meth lab point it wasn't a surprise. He didn't have the best home life. The first time I met his mother, she was drunk, high and walking around top, less. I sometimes wonder if those saggy boobs are what made me gay point in high school, he became the drug dealer. We smoked and we drank, 
Typical teenage bullshit. But, I had a stable home life and this helped me to know I couldn't do this forever. He didn't. He dropped out junior year. I graduated. The summer after graduation, he comes to my house asking for help moving because he was being evicted. I took him to his grandmother's, the only stable family member he had. He calls me a day later saying he can't take it anymore. Ends up leaving his grandmother's for parts unknown. At that moment, I swear I will have nothing to do with him again. Point I go to college, graduate and get a job with the local newspaper. He sees my byline and wants to know if I want to do lunch. We do. He fills me in on what happened since we last spoke. He got addicted to coke and heroin, did some time, odd a bunch, and has no job. He says he's become a man of God. I'm skeptical, but good for him that he's seemingly turned things around point yeah, that didn't happen. He ended up relapsing, leaving his grandmother's, again, moving in with another drug addict, getting arrested for beating her, going to rehab, getting back together with her, etc. Point he moved back up this way for a little bit. The last time I saw him was at a nearby bar. I saw track marks on his arms as he beached and moaned that our other friends and I had turned our backs on him. I wished him well. After that, he got back together with a girl, continued getting high, knocking her up, having a daughter and seemingly was back on track. She was pregnant with their second child when she was killed in a car accident point that caused him to relapse. Drugs led to car theft and robberies and doing time. He gets out and he was back in a short time later for running a meth lab point my only hope is that his daughter was far away from all this and is being raised in a stable environment. I wouldn't say she's completely faked her life up yet, but she's come pretty close point a little backstory first, she's severely bipolar. I've known it since we were about 14, I'm no psychiatrist, but being mentally ill myself, I know it when I see it, but she vehemently denied treatment, or even to admit she was sick point in high school, she dated one of my exes, even though he technically dated her first, whatever, small town dynamics, everybody's dated everybody. I already didn't like him because he was a manipulative douchebag and I tried to tell her as much. I found out he was cheating on me with a middle schooler when he was 18 but she defended him saying they never had such and that relationship was over so it didn't matter. Whatever, guess I can't stop her and she'll learn eventually point she did not learn. She stayed with this guy for 3 slash 4 years well into her freshman year of college I Ike. I told her the first four times I caught him cheating, she'd scream at him, ask why he lied to her, said she's leaving him, he'd cry and show her he hurt himself, she'd feel bad, get back together with him. It wasn't until I told her he tried to force himself on me, and a bunch of our other girlfriends came forward to say the same. She also found him emailing a bunch of girls from Craigslist, minus 19 women in total, that she finally left him for good point unfortunately, all of that faked her up even worse than she already was, severe depression, trust issues, anger management problems, basically everything she already had but worsened. She met a new guy, and from what I'd seen, he was pretty good to her. He was a pretty intense alcoholic, though, which worried me. She seemed happy, though, and finally agreed to get psychiatric help. And then I got a call from her mother about a month later saying she'd tried to kill herself. Her neighbors found her unconscious in her bathroom after taking all of her antidepressants and some muscle relaxers. She made it, but she was in a coma for a day or two point remember how I said new guy was an alcoholic? Yeah, her father used to be a pretty bad one too, so she was already genetically predisposed to alcoholism. He knew this and bought her alcohol anyway. Add that, some friends of his that had cocaine, and the fact that bipolar patients tend to stop their meds pretty frequently, and you've got a pretty volatile combination point she tried to kill herself again, after stopping her meds this time she told me what she was planning, and I called 911, and they found her, before she went unconscious. She was put in a psych ward for a couple of weeks after, that point that was a few months ago. To this day she's still with this new guy, not exclusively I guess, although she keeps jumping back and forth between wanting to be official, and I don't really care, I don't think either of us are ready for a relationship. 
she banged a few other guys she worked with, stopped talking to one because he wanted more than sech. She stopped going to therapy and stopped her meds for good, claims they messed with her head and kept her from seeing the world the way it actually is. Pretty common amongst bipolars, but kind of dangerous nonetheless. I think she still does coke once in a while, but I'm not certain point she's still my best friend, has been since we were kids, but lately I've just been constantly checking up on her, comforting her when she calls me drunk, and crying saying she and her guy got into a fight and she doesn't know where she is. She's still here, at least, but I'm worried that she's gonna really go off the deep end one of these days edit. Forgot a couple words. Friend got engaged in a relationship with a pretty girl. They end up starting to fight every week after the first month, but kept staying together and tried to have children. Lost two but and broke up. Met for a quickie once. Got pregnant. Or maybe she already was, since she contacted him strictly for sech and carried on the pregnancy during which they fought as usual until once he grabbed her by the wrist. No further violence. Just grabbed her to talks while angry. Police showed up after neighbors called, and he was reported, after they saw the marks. After that they carried on together and often she asked him if he was recording their daily life without explaining why she wanted to know. I advised him to do so, so that he could show it was a one-time episode. He didn't do sheet, let the situation roll, and just recently found out the police report was made by her, and she also kept reporting him for violence to the police every month since the episode. Even when she was in hospital for the childbirth, it was all fake and she admitted it even on the phone, but the dumb has never recorded sheet, even if he had a 64GB high-end phone, he now faces court hearing and can only see his child one hour per week with surveillance. Moral of the story, if you fuck up, act right away don't faking, let the situation cool down, while others can fuck you hard. I'm no longer friends with this guy point he has an amputated leg and a faked home life. He gets disability and a settlement for his leg. He basically lives on that point junior year of high school, he goes to camp with our school. He comes back dating one of the new freshman girls. It's whatever. She's cool but not that cute, but you do you dude point senior year, they've been dating for a year or so now. We just graduated high school and we want ice cream, so we and some older alums go to McDonald's. We order and all sit at this round table. He sits next to his girlfriend. Well I wanted to tell a story about our senior trip. We were at the pool and this girl comes in that's flat as a board and her bathing suit top is basically a sports bra. We were bantering about her looking like a Jude, but what his girlfriend heard was that he was ogling some other girl, so in response she punched him in the dick point freshman year of college. He's in university on full ride because his mom works there. One of all mutual friends were associating with him because he was mean to him. Like super faking mean. Him and I played Minecraft together a lot. Well, he did nothing but play Minecraft. By the end of the semester he was kicked out point end of the sophomore year rolls around and he breaks up with his crazy girlfriend. She then tells him she had gotten pregnant with his child and had a miscarriage. Well sheet. We think it was a cry for attention, but he believed her. He still broke up with her though point he then gets a second chance at college and gets his full ride back citing home problems is what caused him to flunk out. He then proceeds to not do his work, again, effectively lying to the administration and now being both kicked out and banned from attending the university point fast forward to our junior year. He's been on and off with his girlfriend who allegedly had the miscarriage. He makes a group chat and adds me and the friend who doesn't wanna talk to him. That other friend mutes it. Trigger warning. This is where I quit talking to him. If you're squeamish, skip this paragraph. Well, he makes all kinds of jokes. One he makes us wards 8 inches long and makes my girlfriend scream when I shove it down her throat. I reluctantly ask what? Her miscarriage. I was faking done with him. That was it. We are not friends anymore. It's not even that it was that bad in and of itself. We make awful jokes all the time. But after all the sheet has pulled, being racist, being mean to my other friend, and choosing his manipulative, needy, and downright beachy girlfriend over us more than I or my other friend can count, I was done point yet another trigger warning, this time for attempted molestation. Skip this if that bothers you. So he's hanging out with the last of us who still talk to him. 
we graduated with a class of four, him, me, and two other guys. The first one stopped talking to him after graduation, the other still does at this point. He's broken up with his girlfriend at this point. He's also come out as B. Whatever, you do you. Well, has staying at our mutual friend's house. Has the youngest of us so has the only one still under 21. The friend who he was staying with was 22 at the time. He bought some bourbon, and they got pretty drunk. Well, around 2 in the morning, my friend realizes the guy is now unzipping his pants. My friend goes what the fuck, and kicks him off. The guy curls up on the couch and passes out. When my friend woke up he was already gone. Fast forward to the end of junior year and it's summer now. I'm home. I'm out with a friend who quit on him first. We're at Barnes and Noble. We see him, and are like sheet we gotta go. I stop for a minute, to look at the tech books, and he notices us. My friend literally runs out. I just stand there, and continue looking for a minute, before leaving as I leave he says some friends you are. Yay fuck you dude. Then he flips us off point tldr. He gets kicked out of college, twice, on full ride, he makes a horrible joke at his girlfriend's expense, then attempts to molest the last friend out of our group that tolerates him. Still a gold Rolex point he was hanging out with his girlfriend at a house she was house sitting at. After said house sitting was done and the family returned, some stuff was missing, the Rolex being the biggest item point didn't really take that long to figure out where it went, since the time it disappeared was rather specific point he might have avoided most of the jail time, or maybe any of it, if he had been able to recover it, but he sold it to someone in China, and wasn't able to get it back point committed suicide once it was clear he was going to jail. Not sure if it was before the sentencing, and it was clear what the result was, or if it was after the sentencing, and he just hadn't reported to jail yet. His grandma, who he lived with, found him in his room point as the entire situation was unfolding. All of us who were friends with him gradually figured out most of his possessions were stolen. He has said a lot of things were just given to him, and had reasonable stories behind them, and he might have been the thief that used his work keys to steal a bunch of laptops a year earlier during a concert. He was a kleptomaniac, at the least point the Rolex was probably what did him in, but he wasn't going to many of his classes anymore even before then, so he might have been kicked out school eventually. TLDR, good friend from middle school murdered his family point I had a friend in middle school named Kyle, and he was always an adrenaline junkie. At least that's what I thought growing up point he started pretty innocently ping houses, doorbell ditching, and vandalizing. Over time he started doing more and more daring and illegal things, like stealing from backyards, street racing and jumping slash robbing people. At one point he asked my best friends and I to rob a bank with him. He insisted he was dead serious he was always really funny and chill to hang out with, but when he got drunk he would brag about all his antics, not sure how much was true, but you can't put anything past this dude. He never had a problem with alcohol or drugs though, he was just naturally wired and intense. He got decent grades, was into sports, and was the best MMA fighter I knew. I bet he could have had a future doing MMA point as you imagine, I lost touch with him after high school. I had heard rumors that he was robbing people at Niffer Point regularly which didn't surprise me. Then I heard his parents sent him away to his extended family in a foreign country hoping a change of scenery would help point quite the opposite, Kyle devised an elaborate plot to murder his extended family, pin it on the mafia, and escape back to the US. I won't get into the details of how he murdered them, but it was gruesome. He was extremely close to getting away with it, but local authorities found the bodies as he was flying back to America. They contacted the police, where he was landing, and they arrested him, when he landed point a trial ensued months later, and I believe Kyle is serving a life sentence in the country he committed the murders. And I used to play basketball with him all the time. My old roommate never could get over the breakup of his girlfriend. However, I didn't find out about this until after I moved in with him. Needless to say, he was an emotional mess and somehow formed this negative image of all women as manipulative thieves. Fast forward 4 months, he huked up with 3 to 4 girls on Tinder. They all ended the same way. He'd get mad over a small issue and all the girls left. However, 
he was so mad at his last Tinder date, he called her a hundred times and mistakenly left a voicemail saying I'm gonna kill you beach, not realizing that he didn't hang up. After the call went to voicemail, the next day, he drove by her apartment and simply texted her that he just passed her apartment, wanting her to respond to him. Fast forward one week, he was arrested on 526 misdemeanors including terroristic threats, domestic violence, expressing intent, not actual physical violence, stalking and a couple other weird ones. The police claimed that he purposely left that voice mail and drove to her house to harass her. Little did he know, the whole court system next to my university is run by women. He got railroaded. Last I heard, he was back in New Jersey living off his rich dad, didn't graduate, and couldn't get a job. I would say that it's sad, but he didn't want to listen to me or accept help when he needed it the most. My best friend of 30 years got engaged, but in reality, he married his monster of a girlfriend, in secret, so she could have medical insurance point I was never a fan of the girlfriend, nor was anyone in his family or anyone who met her, but she met my friend after a former girlfriend had emotionally dropped him on his head. I had problems with him not talking to me prior to getting engaged, but whatever, right, I felt at least I could talk about the situation with him, ask him questions, make sure he was committed, and that he was going into it with eyes open. But no, he had been married almost a year before I found out. I was the best man, even though I told him for years to never make me a co-best man because it's a mess. But fine, even though I was disappointed and felt like he was exhibiting strange signs of abuse, which was verified by family she physically and emotionally abuses him, regardless of all these issues, I resolved to be there for him. I threw him a great bachelor party, home by midnight her orders. The bachelorette party was the same night as the bachelor party and both groups ended up at their home, his home. She lived there with her 13 year old, of whom she didn't even have custody of yes, she, a woman, did not win custody of her own child in 1999. Surprise surprise. The night of the parties, she cheats on him. He finds texts from her to this guy. She refers to all of us, and my friend, as his holes, hoping we would just pass out, so they could bang. I end up having to take my friend in for two nights. His mental abuse manifesting, saying things like, I have to make sure she has food. She won't get by without me. Total Stockholm Syndrome. She didn't even deny it point after the two days and my only request being that he speak with a lawyer, his mother's best friend, who would not charge to hear his situation before he made any contact with her he did not. He found anyone he could who said it was remotely okay to contact her and then he did. I hear from my friend's sister the, sham, wedding is still on point I get nothing from him, except a text that reads, so I guess you're not coming, I did not. Everyone else did point I didn't see going as being there for him, or supporting my friend. I saw it as burying him alive. I couldn't point it doesn't matter if they stay together. It doesn't matter if she never cheats on him again. He's chosen the life of abuse and to throw away 30 years of friendship point I suppose I only did the second half. Not a friend, but a fright of a friend. Let's just call him an acquaintance. Long story short, he ended up giving himself near permanent brain damage from LSD abuse. When I say abuse, I mean extreme abuse. He would sell sheets then use some of the money to buy sheets for himself. He was taking 10 plus tabs almost daily for 3 months. For anyone not accustomed to LSD dosing, a typical recreational dose is 2 tabs. A mind-blowing, completely out of this world psychedelic odyssey is 6 to 8 tabs. You're supposed to only take acid once every few months. This is because it's insanely strong and seriously strains your serotonin receptors. This dude was taking beyond insane trip levels of LSD almost daily. He went into a medically induced coma after taking 20 tabs, got sent to rehab, got out of rehab, and immediately bought more LSD. He can't drive, he can't work, he can't play an instrument anymore, he was a faking prodigy at saxophone, can't talk properly, has lost a lot of motor control, and can't cook, because whenever he does, he can't realize when his food is ready, so he always burns it. The poor kid is only 17. He got kicked out of school for apparently making everyone extremely uncomfortable. 
he has random outbursts of insane laughter, zones off for sometimes hours at a time, and is completely unaware of his surroundings and what's going on around him. Doctors claim he has permanent brain damage and will never fully recover, but I hope that isn't true. I hung out with him a few times, and he was a super chill dude. Really friendly and funny. His parents are devastated, but can't do anything about it. He's a rare case of extreme psychedelic drug abuse and honestly should be studied by psychologists. He's so far gone mentally that it would probably make a good case study. Teammate in junior, Australian, football team is ridiculously talented. As a 14 year old, he's earmarked for the AFL, the top professional league in Australia. He was sent away to play in trials, went to development camps, all on the club's money. In Australia, the system works through tiered leagues. A league with only local teams will often have players drafted to a league with a bigger drawing area and more money. It goes town, region, state, national. Teams are usually independent of schools, though not always. All up, the club invested about $30,000 in him, the club does get some cash payments if he makes it to the big leagues, so it is an investment. At 15, he decides he'd rather drop out of school and get a job once he turns 16. Gets into weed a lot and then switches teams to play with his weed head friends. That club puts him straight into the A grade team, clubs have age ranked teams from under 12 years. 14, 16, 18 and then usually C grade, B grade and A grade, which are not age limited. He was great as a 15 year old with other 15 year olds, but this is country footy, and he had the absolute suitcase knocked out of him every week. He quit after 5 games, knocked up a girl 3 years older, and then got caught trying to steal a local Bucky gang's weed crop growing out in the bush. Ended up with some pretty severe injuries and never played again and was addicted to some sort of opiate painkiller. Might have been able to make a few million as a footy player. Three players in the same regional team went on to play in the AFL. Two only played a few games, but one played over 200. At 15, he was better than all of them. TLDR, talented 15-year-old Australian footballer has talent and opportunity to turn pro. Rather play with stoner friends and turns into junkie after getting beaten up severely. My friend was getting more and more interested in psychedelics. She knew all of the safety precautions to take. She had test kits. We tried some weak stuff locally. Then she bought a pro drug of acid called Old 52, a technically legal research chemical online that were full 100 mcg doses well. Without telling me and without properly preparing me to trips it her, she took three tabs. I eventually caught on, but then she started to have a bad trip. I'll admit I didn't act appropriately, I shouted and shoved and hit her in the arms and legs to try to scare her into complying with letting me take her to the hospital point eventually, I was able to shove her out the front door of her third story apartment. I had her sit down against the wall while I locked her apartment. Before I had a chance to react, she screamed Danny, you're dying, and flung herself over the railing, plummeting to the frozen ground below. She fractured her right elbow, left shin and ankle, and her right femur. She also has a nasty gash on her right eyebrow from where she bounced her head off the ice, but miraculously she only had the most minor concussion. She's about week 3 into recovery now, with her, incredibly wealthy, parents providing the barest minimum of financial support. I'm the emotional support, they faked off. She's still got another 9 weeks before she can even start to walk, and 5 before she can use her arm again. On top of that, she destroyed basically all of the cartilage in her elbow, so she's going to have arthritis. She's right handed too. R.I.P. She's got screws and plates in all of her fractures. She almost had to be transferred to Seattle to have some of her surgeries done, because they thought it might be too complex for any of the surgeons here in Alaska. She's gonna have a fun time once she starts moving around again in the winter months. Friend in HS who had a very well off family, kid drove a new car in HS, had an easy job cleaning his dad's office for money and parents were going to fully fund college and his living expenses. Good looking, fairly athletic guy, not typical sports like football or baseball, but was a surfer slash tennis slash skier, was definitely one of the more admired guys in school. 
he goes away to college early, starts over the summer instead of waiting till the fall, and ends up meeting the wrong crowd. Parties all the time and ends up flunking out before the end of his second year. Goes back home and enrolls in the local community college. Drops out of that too. I lose track of him after that until years later. Finally hear from a mutual friend that by time he hits 30 he's running a lawn maintenance company, not high end but respectable, and married to a lady 14 years older than him who runs a bar and has a teenage kid. It's an rocky on off relationship from everyone's accounts. Not the worst life, but nowhere near what anyone expected in HS and definitely a huge letdown from what his parents had hoped. Still partying way too much, probably out of regret for where he was in life, and before he makes it to his 37th birthday he odds one night and dies. My friend has destroyed his life by not doing anything. Literally. He's turning 30 this year and has managed to make his situation significantly worse by ignoring everything for 12 plus years quit high school to get home shoaled but didn't do the homework so didn't graduate point has tried to get his jet no less than 3 times but will only go if someone gives him a ride because riding 3 miles on a bicycle is apparently too hard. So he just stops going if he can't find a ride with someone with a car. Won't lift a finger to clean up his garbage in dog pup strewn house that he shares with his chronically ill mostly bedridden father, but he'll spend 10 hours a day organizing his settlement in Fallout or building something preposterous in Minecraft. Over the last 10 years the house has literally started falling apart, but he doesn't seem to think it's a problem worth addressing. Has only had one job, a seasonal security job at an outdoor concert venue that only made him enough money to pay for his vices for the next week. During the off-season he asks his dad to buy him cigarettes, weed, and energy drinks every other day. So now, because he's led a life of excessive consumption and infrequent hygiene and exercise his teeth are disintegrating in his face, he weighs about 300 pounds and has apparently developed fibromyalgia. So now he has a rationale for refusing to find a job or do anything around his house. Word is that when his dad passes away his plan is to move in with one of the friends that he's already mooched off of for at least half a decade, but none of us are going to let him because we know that he will not only refuse to contribute to the household, but he'll expect whoever he's staying with to supply him with his various legal addictions and get indignant and angry if they don't want to. A chef I used to work with was a good guy, we were good work friends, until his alcoholism got out of hand and he started drinking at work. This was all due to him knocking up a lady two months into their relationship and then realizing that they were toxic to each other. He kept talking shit at work, begging for sympathy because of what a beach she was, but he was just as manipulative as whole to her. The drinking just kept getting worse, we sent him to rehab for two weeks. He failed. We tried to get his back and let him keep working for us, but his performance in the kitchen was terrible, let alone dangerous as hell. Once the baby arrived it was either drunk and babble about how cute she is or how paying child support is ridiculous and he should just move away. Not even his newborn child was enough to help. In the end the bosses had enough and fired him. He was gone every 10 minutes to go and drink in his car, which he also didn't have a license for. Last I heard he did have a new job, but he had crashed his car into a pole because of a heart attack, but was probably still drunk as well, with broken ribs, and the possibility of going to court due to the no license and being intoxicated. Lots of fines and bills to pay, and no income to pay it with I don't know what he is going to do. Met him, became best friends, dated for almost 3 years. He was sweet and caring until getting fully insane point he lost interest in everything. His future was already planned by his rich parents, so never had to worry about anything. Didn't have to work, didn't even have to study. No goals, no hobbies. Got beyond reckless, couldn't stand people enough to look them in the eyes, would make fun of if someone you care about were dying just in front of you. All the emotions talks, everything social looked stupid to him point soon enough he lost interest in me, cheated on me with some girl who lived very far away, then wanted to get back together but we didn't. We left for the college abroad that we planned long before we broke up. I had to stay with him for a while. He cried for the girl who he cheated with in front of me. 
threatened me to get kicked out of his place when I wanted to cut loose. I left. He thought I was sleeping with his friend and told him lies about me to keep his friend away. A few months later, I heard from my friends that he returned hometown. Found out later that he smoked weed, drank, faked everything he run into. Just after that, he calls me to ask if I had any sexual diseases or if my partners did, which I didn't have any. Conversation goes on. He tells me about the drugs and sleeping around, dropping college, not being qualified to do any work, and getting faked up by the meds, that is psychiatrist prescription. I didn't speak to him ever since. He might have put a sheet together, but I don't actually think he did. I always thought he needed help of affection and love, which I was willing to give. He broke the heart of the only person he cold leaned on. The only thing I was glad to hear that he finally came out as bisexual, accepting himself and getting more confident about it. I have a friend who I just got back in touch with recently, known her for almost 30 years, and had lost touch when we graduated 25 years ago. We were close friends in middle school and high school, but it never occurred to me to ask her out on a date because I was too shy and had no confidence point well. She began dating a guy her senior year, he took her virginity, and after high school, they had planned to marry. He joined the military, and after his first leave, they eloped instead of having the lovely wedding her parents had planned for her. Six months later she came home, after she found out he had a pregnant girlfriend. She had heard from friends in high school that he used to cheat on her regularly, and she just refused to believe it. She then contacts an attorney for divorce and both attorneys she consulted with invited her out to their vacation homes. My friend was under 20 at this point. After her divorce, she meets another guy in the military, and within a month she is flying out to be with him, and is pregnant within the year. They have two kids, but he cheats on her while on deployments, and she settles on raising her two kids. Ten years later she is back in our hometown with her hubby, who has left military, and she gets a job where she meets a guy and has an affair with him. She soon divorces her husband and marries this guy. He was married already, but left his wife to be with her. Her children don't like the new husband for obvious reasons, but they are young and don't know the full story point so it's 13 years later, and we get back in touch after almost 25 years. As she is telling me her life events, she feels embarrassed that I will not want to be her friend since she has done some dumb things. We start to spend time together as friends and on one occasion she got very drunk and revealed even more details she had kept hidden. Most of them involved fights with her in-laws and time she behaved most unpleasantly. Often she was intoxicated and she revealed that she drank a lot because of her marital problems. I will admit we did mess around, but stopped from doing the deed, because she was working on her marriage. A month later her dad was in the hospital, and some of our friends from high school came to offer greetings. So now I find out she is getting a divorce, and has moved in with a guy we went to school with after just two weeks of dating. She says they are taking it slow, but moving in with a guy she had not seen in 25 plus years after such a short time seems crazy. She feels this is true love and they are meant to be together. We also have another guy who was hoping to date her and has for the past month not been aware that she has shacked up with our mutual friend. This was after she told me she had wanted us all to be friends together, so she did not make any of us feel jealous for dating slash sleeping with one and not the others. I'm concerned she is merely jumping from one bad situation to another potential situation, but she wants us to remain friends. What is funny is that a few weeks ago she called me and told me she wished I had asked her out 25 years ago so she could have avoided first bad marriage. I do regret not asking her out and dating her, but given her past, I fear I would have been ex-husband hash one with three kids trying to explain why mommy is living with another man. There's really two people in this situation. We'll call my friend Andrew and the other person Mitchell point when Andrew got into high school, he started to get friends. Not like he didn't have any before, he just never had people to hang out with. But he had friends now, and ended up in a little clique of friends one of these guys was Mitchell. Mitchell's black, within a group of white kids. Everyone else would make casual racist jokes, but he wouldn't care, and everyone else at the school, who had friends of a different race slash religion would generally do the same. 
so Andrew gets the idea of a racist but friendly joke to make point it's worth mentioning at this point that Mitchell actually dislikes Andrew a lot. Never liked the kid. Didn't like his humor. Didn't like his usual attitude. Didn't like, well, anything. Really point but Andrew didn't know this and the joke continued point one day. Mitchell logs onto a computer at the school and sees Andrew's joke. Andrew changed the wallpaper and icons of the programs to racist slurs, something 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 monkey, to be exact. Mitchell knew that it was Andrew, and decided that he should do something. Before deleting the slurs Michael took screenshots as evidence, and reported Andrew to the principal point Andrew was suspended for 10 days and now had racial insensitivity on his permanent record point all of the colleges that accepted him, the ones that required high grades, the ones considered top tier in the state. They denied him afterwards this kid, who had exemplary grades and high GPAs, that got accepted to great colleges, had it all go away in the blink of an eye from what was supposed to be a harmless joke. Point TLDR my friend wanted to play a racist joke for fun to a guy, who he thought, was friends with him. Ended up getting suspended and kicked out from high quality colleges. Ah, my friend. He used to drink, and drive all the time. He was proud of his driving record. No tickets, no accidents. He'd just never been caught, despite driving drunk often for more than six years well. Christmas Eve 2002, that all changed. Him and two friends were in his Mustang convertible with a few other friends following behind driving down a back highway. He's drunk, likely they all are. He's doing 200 km slash h, at least that's what the forensics said, on a fairly straight part of the road. Fairly straight doesn't mean anything when you're going that fast. He lost control and hit a Mercedes going the other way. Point the friend in the back flew from the car, suffered some serious injuries including brain damage. My friend and his other passenger weren't so lucky. The car ended up in the ditch on fire and they both burned to death, while the occupants of the other vehicle and the friends following behind tried to help get them out. He not only ruined his own life, but so many others, that night point the passenger in the back seat ended up dying about 10 years later, after being hit by a car walking down a dark road. I don't know what happened to the occupants in the Mercedes, but I guarantee, that accident will affect them for the rest of their lives TLDR. Friend drinks and drives on Christmas Eve, kills himself and his friend, while other friends stand by helplessly. Antidepressants in sophomore year, we were both more or less in the same situation, bummed and upset that we weren't having luck finding girlfriends and social lives. He went and convinced his dad to take him to a therapist who promptly prescribed antidepressants. They made him wacky, and a month later he actually managed to find a girlfriend. Point it was what he wanted, and it was probably the worst thing that's ever happened to him. They had solved his loneliness and oppressive fear of being forever alone. This instant reward was now seared permanently into his psyche. The antidepressants solved everything. For him, this was complete and total confirmation that there was something wrong with him and that he needed this medicine to be normal and happy. Point the fall wasn't immediate. It took years. His relationship he found eventually failed badly. He would have on and off relationships and interests with this girl or that girl for the next few years. But after we graduated high school, and he had cycled through a number of different antidepressants, things began to get bad point without warning. He stopped talking to me. We had no more gaming sessions, or hangouts. He wouldn't respond to my messages. When I stopped by his place he wouldn't answer the door. Once I came by to return some books to his father. He had me stay for dinner, but my friend never left the other side of the house, and I never saw him. Eventually I gave up and wrote him off. I went away to college point a year or two later the silence was abruptly ended. The haunted, fractured remnants of my friend sent me tortured facebook messages. Convinced everyone was out to get him, he had descended into paranoid delusions. He believed everyone from his parents, to old people from school, to myself was watching his house, trying to get him. He told me he had breakdowns where he punched a wall for hours without stopping. He had begun mixing alcohol with his meds, looking for new sensations, and any change to the paranoia. He claimed that something had revealed to him that I was actually trustworthy, and I was an actual friend. He begged forgiveness for ignoring me years back, all while delivering subtle suggestions that he planned to commit suicide. I forgave him, and did everything I could to work him down. 
I contacted his sister and family, making sure they kept an eye on him. Messages like this went on for weeks eventually, he seemed to come back a little bit. He lost some of the paranoia, managed to get a job, completed a degree, and for a year or two we actually stayed in infrequent contact. He had some promising relationships I completed my degree, and in the couple weeks I had off, spent a few days hanging out with him. He seemed fine. We played some games, and chatted about old times. I moved away again for work, hoping to introduce him to my girlfriend soon, and stay in touch point. That was in 2014. I haven't heard from him since. The communication suddenly went dark, just like before. He doesn't work anymore, still lives with his father into his late twenties, and occasionally posts sad looking selfies or emotional poems just the other day, he was hacked with the Ray-Ban Fassa book crap. I sent him a message trying to inform him of it. He blocked me. I can only assume that he is deep in a paranoid slide, and that his old best friend from high school is out there somewhere, trying to hurt him somehow point all those years ago, when we both felt alone and loveless, I became angsty and insufferable for a few years. Eventually I sorted myself out, I learned from how my relationships failed. I grew up point, but my friend sank into a psychological dependence on medicine. Convinced he couldn't find love and fulfillment without them, they corrupted and twisted his mind, filling him with delusions and ultimately destroying his life point into depressants are no faking joke. They're meant for people who can't feel anything but soul-crushing misery or feel nothing at all. There are very few people whose natural state is so destructive that antidepressants are an actual improvement. Yet for some reason, we constantly prescribe them to people who don't need them. People who are just having a rough go at life or are dealing with painful teenage years don't fuck with antidepressants. My cousin was in the military, he loved his job, made at least 70k plus annually, was set for life. What does he do? Becomes friends with a bunch of people with no job and who play video games all day. What does he do? He realizes that they are living the life, no worries and get to video game all day. Quits his job and never recovers from it. Point another story. Some more of my cousins faked up. Their father died and left them both 20k and 15k respectively. They were in college, one a junior and one a freshman. That money cold easily helped them sail through college with no worries. The girl had a car that was already paid off, so she didn't need to worry about car payments. What does she do? Spends asinine amounts of money on shoes every week, gets her nails done multiple times per week, which doesn't make sense to begin with, nails need to get done at the most every 2 weeks. The boy who was 22, decided to get a new Dodge Charger, paying $400 a month on insurance, and the mom decided to get facial surgery. Let's just say they are not living as comfortably now as they should. I swear one of my biggest fears is working my whole life. So my family doesn't have to, only for my family, to blow that money when I'm gone. I guess it won't really matter, because I'd be dead, but still. So, I grew up fairly sheltered, and while I normally had a decent judge of character, and had one or two really good loyal friends, somehow managed to attach myself to the black sheep who lived down the block point he introduced me to Playboy, before the net was a big thing, and got me to steal cigars for him. He stared calling me Nutga, we are both white, and since I had no idea what it meant, although I was sure it was derogatory I decided it was funny and let him do it. Although my parents never learned of everything we got up to, they put an end to the friendship the instant they learned of my so called friend's pet name for me point he reacted to this, by ping our house multiple times, egging our house, and setting fire to TP on our front porch, then excrement in a back point he got into trouble for that, and I didn't see or hear much about him for a few years. Then I learned he tried to set someone else on fire, and managed to set himself on fire in the process. He was still a juvenile, so he didn't serve much time point the last time I saw him, he walked with a severe limp, and refused to acknowledge my tentative friendly, hello. Unfortunately it barely took any convincing on his part. I inexplicably wanted to be liked by him enough, that I was doing almost any stupid thing he suggested. My friend faked up his life by threatening me, and trying to beat me up, because I told him to calm down, while he was in an argument. 
he used two excuses, which were both bull. When confronted by my school admins one, he was getting annoying. My evidence against that, I had multiple witness that saw that I only told him hey, calm down, it's not worth it once to, I hate him cause he likes my sister. That made me go instantly what the fuck, because his sister is an infant so what the actual hell, that screwed up. I think it's because once I was at his house and his sister watched a science video with me because she was bored and we were just laying down next to each other watching a video, so I don't know why he would think that. It makes me wanna puke thinking about it. And then he started exposing private family info on me. My mom is an alcoholic. My dad is depressed. My family divorced multiple times, etc. And when we confronted him, he said I only told name not to be specified. And when I asked that person, they didn't know about it, so I asked a couple other people, and it turns out he told so many other people that I didn't know. Honestly he just mega boosted my depression. I'm still kinda depressed about it today. Also he's trying to give me a bad reputation, because he claimed I was telling people not to be his friend, which was confirmed as just a rumor, a lie. The only thing the principal of our grade did was put this all on his record and talk to his parents, and his parents are something else. After their talk they said we are gonna ground you for a week on a Friday, and they let him off the hook on Sunday, cause that's a week, and then after they didn't punish him, and my mother went to their home, talked to him for about an hour, and he kept doing it, so my mom talked to him again, to give him another chance and his parents said oh he's in trouble and they didn't do anything. In fact, straight after they spoiled him with gifts for whatever reason, and he still affects my life today. He literally hangs around me and takes away my alone time from my friends on purpose to keep making me depressed. I know he's doing it because he laughs at me in class and makes public displays showing people back quote why I'm retarded so yeah he faked up my life but his is still pretty bad because he's friends with most of my grade but I'm friends with the older kids. They want to beat him up for what he did, but I insisted not to and to only hurt him, if he hurts me or someone else. So I got a little squad to help me, but that still doesn't help the fact that I just sit there sad all day being emotionally abused so, yeah. If you had any advice, that would be great cause I want this stupid kid out of my head. Thanks. She went off the deep end over the death of her baby daddy, who she's been hiding from for months, and taken a restraining order out on a week before his death due to threats on her life. She stopped feeding, changing, or even interacting with her beautiful and brilliant 11 month old daughter, and began to claim that the waste of space who had overdose was back quote her fnk point she put the baby in foster care and took off to a $1000 a day treatment center which she then used as a vacation, rather than a chance to work on her issues for two months. In that time she insulted myself and another friend so badly that we told her we could no longer have her in our lives she transferred to another luxury treatment center that is in our city and now has called up all the people she thinks she can use to bring her things and take her on errands. Each one has quickly caught on to her only wanting to use them for her own needs. Her landlord told her last week that she is not welcome back when she leaves the treatment facility due to her behavior before leaving, including neglect of the baby, and lies since she's returned to town point baby is still in foster care ex-friend told treatment facility staff she was suicidal the night after being told she was not welcome back where she had been living and is now on a locked hospital psych unit. <laughs> Went batshit crazy. Okay, so maybe not, like they chose that. But they did resist any and all attempts of anyone and everyone to have them work to improve their mental health situation. That same friend, now ex-friend, only one to have fully earned that demotion, also quite screwed over any and all support systems they had, notably turning against any and every family member and friend they ever had. What a bloody ugly mess that same ex-friend also did some other things to generally screw up their life. For instance married a highly abusive spouse, didn't even divorce at high levels of physical and sexual abuse, but when spouse sexually cheated and was caught red-handed, then finally divorced. Their spouse was also abusing drugs, lots of other asterisk 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 to in that relationship. They also did a lot of other things to generally screw up their life, but those two would probably top the list point. And, where are they now? Don't know, but probably broke.
homeless, and very crazy. Point delusional disorder, persecutory subtype, very highly a textbook match to descriptor, also probably fair bit of various and somewhat more significant psychotic features, for instance seeing demons slash gremlins. He wasn't a close friend of mine, but there was this kid I met a few times when I was little at functions from church. Even though he lived a town or two away he was a super dumbass and really arrogant and creepy and everyone hated him, rightly so point anyway I ended up going to this small high school, 180 students at its all time high capacity, like 4 or 5 years later and after my first semester I suddenly meet this guy, we'll call him RN, again when he enrolls. The day of his audition he faked up so much, and was awful to the point, that a bunch of us asked the school not to let him in, but it was in danger of being shut down, and they desperately needed to get the enrollment up he ends up getting in, adding a new opportunity to a decent list of opportunities he had, his parents owned two somewhat successful business, and he was pretty much always guaranteed a future working at and then owning one or both of them. The school, despite being an overall joke, afforded us good opportunities to work in our fields of interest, and RN was an aspiring rapper and graphic designer mind you this guy is one of those skeleton looking white boys who is super creepy and super into violence and misogyny point being a small school there were really only so many friend groups and they all overlapped a lot, so my friends and I inevitably worked with him, the stories I could tell, and sometimes hung out with him over the next few years, though it was always awkward cause really no one liked him, not even his equally creepy BFFS. So, a lot of us, at least half the school, were pretty into drugs, some just smoked weed, but all kinds too, but were also really into our artwork some of my classmates were crazy talented, most were at least busy learning. RN over the next 3 years got sheety messed up on drugs and literally learned nothing, and really never did any work and barely graduated he ended up being a pretty scummy drug dealer, and then tried to get out and join the military, but got kicked out of boot camp. When he got back he got into the drug game again even more than before, while also working in his parents businesses at this point things might have been normal, and he cold gotten straightened out I still talk to him sometimes, as he messaged me a lot, and I for a while thought maybe I could help him clear his head up, which I know, was kind of stupid of me, but he had always looked up to my closest friends and I in HS and we weren't really that nice to him cause he was a creep, but I felt bad. Anyway things started going really downhill when he suddenly messaged me one day saying he was heading out to murder some girl who lead him on obviously I had to tell someone and the situation ended up getting diffused but he had already been in trouble with the cops before for lurking near the school we used to go to trying to sell drugs to the kids point after this the police started kinda keeping track of him a bit and a while later they started questioning him about the disappearance of another girl. As far as anyone knows he didn't actually have anything to do with that, but in the process he got busted much more seriously with drugs, and ended up wiggling out of it, by snitching on a bunch of his other dealer friends a few of them went to jail one of them who I knew, got arrested and got out, and then immediately got arrested again for something. I never talked to RN after these events unfolded, but saw a lot of that from the outside for the past few years I haven't heard anything about him, but last I knew he had like no life and no friends, having sold them all out, and the cops were investigating his parents businesses as his dad had a drug charge decades prior and the shops looked kinda sketchy, especially with RN in the picture I heard a rumor last year that he had a girlfriend but... All I know really is he is still just a creepy dude and apparently is not on good terms with his folks. Practically brothers, I was much better off than he was growing up, moved to a new town, he only lived a 10 minutes walk away, was one of my only friends for the first couple years we hatched a plan to steal some computer monitors from our school, by a stroke of whatever you want to call it, I was grounded one weekend, and he ends up doing it with another buddy. They get busted, and one month into our senior year of high school they get kicked out. He barely gets his jed, I manage to go out of state for school. He does end up getting his grandparents to pay his way at Bob Jones University. He's the last guy that should be in a Christian school like that, just looks around and sees ways to game the system slash act out point eventually thanks to his thuggery he gets on pills. 
facts up his pretty solid relationship, booted from his free, albeit faked for him, still Walder had a degree, school. Ends up moving back home working at Denny's and ends up getting busted for going through pilfering cars in a Walmart parking lot and ends up doing a year I get the getting kicked out of high school thing sucked, but he still managed to have life in front of him and threw it all away because of pills he got out, had managed to hold down cook jobs pretty solidly since, knocked up, on purpose, some chicken has living. In a sheet hole apartment. I've gone on to get my masters and just landed a career job point dude was my brother, literally called my mom mom. Now we just cannot connect it pains me so much the potential that kid had, and now we can't even really talk, because of the rift between us, and our differing lives point thanks reddit, this sheet gnaws at me now, and then it's nice to put it in writing. This one gets deep so here goes. I objected to the forced wedding of my lover when I was in Russia and I wound up getting kidnapped and held in captivity for about 12 years in a Russian suburb. TLDR initially when the word got out it became overwhelming. A social services agent set me up with an attorney and a spokes person and basically they would act as a buffer and mouthpiece between me and the media or any outlets for that matter. This way it was less of an emotional toll on me, and I was still able to communicate to the world the struggles I endured. One of the things I did was write, basically a short essay of what had happened to me, and how I made my escape. My fiancé Rodrigo Jev actually rescued me, and being able to lay it out really helps to explain the situation better. Here is what happened. It was an insanely harrowing and testing experience. Something I wouldn't wish upon anyone. Thankfully even though everyone had given up, my love Rodrigo never did, and was searching even 12 years later, I remember I, I remember telling them to stop following me into the bathroom, and closed the door behind me. Boom. The sound scared me, and some more seeped out. I was feeling even more panicked than before so as I started to disrobe I noticed that the strap was tied from the outside. I started screaming knowing that the masked suit would muffle most of the noise. Also considering the door was closed I decided I had free reign now, so I decided to let it go right in the suit. I felt it oozing around as it dribbled down my legs and, right when I was sure I was done I heard Rodrigo knocking at the window above me. Ms. Pukala Loi, I hear for you now oh, such sweet words. I was sure he would come for me and he did. I made the special sound for him of approval, and he broke the window as planned. He threw down the, he threw down the chain he had made out of chicken butt bones. So sweet of him, he even changed his diet, just so we can make our daring escape someday. The witches had tortured me for years. I finally decided it was time to have revenge. Rodrigo was dressed perfectly for the occasion. I remember seeing his sagging skin glistening under the weak fluorescent light. Nice little grey hair adding to the contrast. He climbed down the window and I noticed he didn't have the usual sheet stain on his underwear. I was delighted to see that, since he would have to pull me out of my suit soon. He did it immediately, and the door started to shake from hard knocking. They were mercilessly screaming outside to be let in, but I had to be prepared first. I had to be, and so did Rodrigo. Fact them so I took my time as he practiced poses to flash, when it went down and then, right on cue, point three, point two. They busted the door open, just as I had planned. With not a care in the world I slapped one of them down into my half-ripped, pup-filled, putrid, bowel-juice-filled costume. She screamed as her face melted. Their DNA-altering technique had failed. Failed. My juice was the equivalent of Optimus Prime Royal Purple Nut Juice. The fear with which they stared at me while witnessing this was the most amazing moment of my life. I knew for certain at that point that it was worth it. The entire civilization was going to depend on me soon to have this delivered. I grabbed Rodrigo by his dick, and we ran full speed into the tunnel. Back to from where they had smuggled me. I saw light at the end, but some type of a shade was on the right, and the closer we got, the more it seemed someone was waiting there. Was it Tabitha? Of course it was the one they refer to now as, a Sisu. At some point this guy was someone named Bieber. He was a famed one, but since the great assimilation he's become the leader's bung boy. I remembered the path we were on, and I noticed that every time he looked over at me he chuckled. I asked him why, and to me he replied, you have the most glorious back ticks I've ever seen. My confidence went through the roof. 
Proof here's what I was wearing when it all went down. HTTP imga.com slash 5rv7b.